Hello, I'm Limey, and welcome to my RPG show, I guess. That feels weird to say, but uh, yeah, we have the P's SMB here playing Pokemon Battles for, for a couple hours. We're here to have a good time. Uh, P's, if you would like to introduce yourself. Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. I am P's, and um, good morning to some of you, even myself. Granted, it's 1 p.m. I just woke up. We're going to play some Pokemon. <laughs> Morning's relative. It's fine. Yeah. Um, so basically, a, a quick little intro, a quick little um, intro about this game. Uh, this is Gen 4's Pokemon Stadium. Um, basically, but, you know, without without the mini games, but this game really focuses on using your own Pokemon because you can't use like you know all random Pokemon like you could in, in Stadiums One or Stadium Two. So instead, you basically transfer your Pokemon from. Any of the Gen 4 games like Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver, and you just play the game that way. Um, so basically, this run, we're going to be doing something called Stargazer Round 2, which is unlocked once you beat Star Stargazer for the first time. And think of it as like uh, the Gym Leader Castle or Ore Coliseum, where the battle is just going to be much more difficult. But since we get to use our own Pokemon, that also includes using legendaries. So I, I will be using four different teams and I'll try to explain each of them. And unfortunately my announcement will be off so that it'll be easier for me to explain um, each of my each of my sets and what my intentions are uh, with each decision. So let's go ahead and jump straight into um, into the Stargazers here. So we're gonna go from sets one all the way through set eight in order. So, all right. So would you like to give me a countdown at Lime? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I should not be trusted with a countdown. Uh, but yeah, we'll be starting in five, four, three, two, one, go. All right. Good luck. Thank you, thank you. I will need it because this, this it's Pokemon. You need a lot of luck for this. <laughs> All right. So basically, um, what I'll be doing for the first three fights is choosing the exact same Pokemon. Um, these are all double battles, by the way. And also, and the reason why we're not using rentals is because the fact that some of them have terrible stats and terrible move sets. Um, the AI here would use competitive, uh, co competitive ready stats. So, um, luckily, this Kyogre is one that I caught in Emerald years ago, and uh, with Timid Nature, and I believe I, I, I forget its IVs, but but it's just enough to one shot a lot of teams with uh, Water Spout. So, that, that's that's yeah. You're getting surprise math in your Pokemon speedrun. Mm -hmm. Good luck, everyone. Mm -hmm. that's <laughs> this a, will be on the test. Yeah, that, that's a first. I've never seen Dust Hawks, uh, click protect. So, um, <laughs> I haven't said the thing yet. And so the Wormadam actually has a quick claw, and thankfully that didn't activate. So the reason why I use Follow Me is because Wormadam carries the move Fisher, which is of course a one to KO move. And it it targets Kyogre because it's the only it's the only Pokemon that can hit it reliably. So now I'm gonna use Helping Hand with Togekiss so that um, Water Spout uh, completely one shots Vespaquin. It's actually even though even though under the rain we can use Water Spout and and the move gets a 50% boost. Uh, it's still a range of some Pokemon because of their defensive stats. So. Alright. This game does feel a little bit bland without the announcer. <laughs> uh, he'd be saying some very witty things, but I've heard that having the announcer off makes things a little bit faster. We, and we kinda we kinda do want speed, and at this point I know how like how much damage I'm gonna do. But it's also gonna be really hard to be talking over the the, the guy while I'm trying to explain my things, so <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure in the regular like an eight percent run of this game. Uh, which is like four and a half hours. I think it saves a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. So it's not that bad, but it's like still like a, a substantial amount of time. Right. And yeah, that that's that's pretty much the first fight. Um, oh yeah, I, I completely forgot to mention the you have four battles uh, every uh, so eight sets of uh, four fights. The final fight in each set is against a Coliseum leader that you fought earlier in the game. 
Uh, and unfortunately, we're going to be seeing them twice because uh, Genius Sonority and Game Freak, they're, uh, <laughs> they're, they're, they're pretty cool to not add more flavor to this, in my opinion. But, 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 but to be fair, though, the Pokemon choices are, are, um, they're, they're really cool. You'll, you'll, you'll get to see, like, some of the legendaries that are being used in some of the, the team ideas. And I believe this, this one utilizes flame. So, um, again, this is this, this is a Generation 4, so every Pokemon from Bulbasaur to Arceus, um, well, well, obviously they won't be used, but, but you'll be seeing, like, a lot of them. Yeah, this game has a lot of Pokemon variety. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh... Go on. <laughs> I was just gonna say, uh... Real quick, since we're near the beginning still, and uh, we're just kind of waiting on the battles to happen, I do want to mention uh, the reason for this event, and also an event I want to shout out, is unapolog Unapologetically Black and Fast. It's going to be live from February 16th until February 19th. It's going to be a four-day event from Friday to Monday. It's going to be all black speedruns, and everyone that's on Limey's RPG show, I guess, is going to be there on UBAF. Some running different games, some running the same games. <laughs> um. um, so by the way, that that Quagsire actually has the, the damp ability. So normally you would see it with uh, Water Absorb, but uh, the AI knows you want to use Explosion. So they just decided to put uh, damp on some of the Pokemon so that you just can't use Explosion. Um, fun fact, I do have a run in UBAF which we're after Pokemon XD and with Ori Coliseum, and the main strategy is to just use Explosion. <laughs> but thankfully, uh, we can mix it up a bit uh, in this game and things like that. Um, so this is the third fight, and we're after, uh, yes, yes, I'm trying to wake up. Normally I have my energetic voice, but <laughs> it is the weekend. <laughs> But thankfully, we get to have our uh, have a really chill Pokemon run on the weekend, and I do not like this lead because Pachi Rishu can be very annoying. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is use Extreme Speed on it to break the Focus Ash. Um, but yeah, there's going to be uh, lots of competitive strategies being used here, and the fo of course the Focus Ash is one of them where you can't uh, knock out the Pokemon from full health, so you you basically have to break it. Hit it once so that um, you don't get you don't get the uh, it hung on by using his focus ash, you know. Oh yeah, and the nice thing about Battle Revolution is the trainer customization. I think this is the first Pokemon game to uh, utilize uh, cu trainer customization uh, b before Generation Six, which I think is really cool. Um, there's. There, there's definitely special uh, outfits to be unlocked once you play through the game, and okay, this is this is decent. I believe Driplin can live the Water Spout, but I'm gonna use Follow Me on on Togekiss instead, so so that it doesn't so that Parker doesn't use a Fake Out on Kyogre. Um, and one one important thing to know about Water Spout is that if I take damage, my mo my move becomes weaker. So. Um, the overall damage is based on your uh, overall health, and the reason why my Kyogre is going first all the time is because it I, it is holding the Choice Scarf, which increases its speed by 50%. Or one stage in this case, but you're only allowed to use one move. Alright. So yeah, I think it's really cool in like Pokemon runs seeing like how items come into play, because a lot of like runs just have like really weird strats hmm. but it's always like super interesting <laughs> yeah uh you can also unlock uh shiny costumes but i have like almost 400 hours in this game somehow and i have yet to go for uh shiny costumes Ooh. okay sl slow menuing there because i was trying to remember which pokemon i choose i do have my notes and so um we do have have our first uh, Coliseum Leader match against Joe. You, you can get all the jokes out there. <laughs> all the jokes out there. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's the one you're talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, 
this lead is fine. I do have a flow chart with this. So what, what I'm gonna do is, with the Gengar, I'm gonna use Thunder on Staraptor because it carries a um, Focus Ash as well, and we, and we want to get rid of it. It might click Protect. Okay, it, it didn't. So this is because I'm trying to uh, manipulate the AI to target Gengar um, because uh, Staraptor can knock it close, uh, can knock it out um, with uh, with a Brave Bird, or knock it close down with a Brave Bird. And then Infernate would just click Shadow Claw to finish it off. Also, if I knock out any of your favorite Pokemon, I am sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry. Farm it for content. <laughs> your favorite Pokemon sucks. Do that chat. <laughs> I might, I, I might have to knock out my favorite Pokemon uh, later in the run, which is Lucario, so spoilers. <laughs> oh, wait, this 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 might be a two-turn... Actually, no, it's not, because Pikachu is going to click Protect. So the thing with Joe is that he uses um, basically, like, uh, double strategies, because in Generation 4, Surf now deals damage to, uh, uh, to your partner. So... I, I don't. I kind of. I, I don't. I don't understand why they nerfed it. Um, because in Gen in Gen three, Surf, you know, it just hit two Pokemon, right? But for some reason, they just decided to make it uh, hit everybody on the field. But that it's really no big deal. It's it's just one added extra turn. Um, and yes, in in Battle Revolution, you can get uh, the gifted Pokemon like uh, the Surfing Pikachu, the Electivire and um, Magmortar. Um, I think I still have that surf surfing Pikachu from years ago. <laughs> it's it's crazy that this save file is a little bit over ten years old. Um, like like eleven, twelve, or something like that. I, I've played this game since, since I guess you could say since I was a kid. <laughs> I, I feel really old right now with this. <laughs> You're literally older than me, and I feel fine saying when I was a kid, so I think you have that pass. It's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that is the first set. And if, if you thought if you thought that was easy, I mean, yeah, it was. It's, it's going to get a bit more difficult. <laughs> yeah, it gets a lot harder later. <laughs> yeah. Especially with the um, uh, higher IVs, like... No, they, they don't necessarily scale, they just increase. But the, the good thing is we, we get to use the same team for the first three uh, uh, sets here. Alright, so we get I get to show off more- oh, whoop. Nice menuing me. Well, nice menuing me! <laughs> um, I get to show off a couple of new Pokémon that I've added to my team, and Polyrath is one of them. Um, so, Polyrath, Polyrath is going to be important for um, I believe... Oh, wait, no. Uh, it's set three uh, that it's more important on. <laughs> Look, I'm looking at looking at, uh, at the wrong notes there. So basically, um, this lead is okay. We're just going to use Helping Hand on Blissey to knock it out. And yeah, there are going to be some, some defensive walls, um, but they're usually going to be special walls because um, Water Spout is basically what I'll be using for a lot of these fights, but not for the whole thing. Um, I will be using uh, Explosion Strategies as we as we get into the run. Um, at first, I used to just have my Pokemon explode, but uh, the, the, the main important thing about this game, or at least speedrunning Stadium games, is, is animation time. And because Explosion, you know, Explosion has a long animation, and you also have to watch your Pokemon faint, yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, you're the, better off. Games you can't turn off the battle animations like you yeah. can in the main lines. All right, so I, I'm unfortunately Rose Raid does have a focus sash, but either way, it, it would have lived uh, the water spot anyway. So we're just gonna go for a, a little ice punch on the on, on that little flower here. Oh yeah, I forgot this Rose Raid outspeeds my Polyrap. <laughs> All right. So I, th I think I've covered mostly everything that I need to cover. Oh, I forgot. Um, so I don't know if people know this about double battles, um, but if you in Gen Four and and beyond, if you use like literally any multi-targeting move like Surf, Earthquake, um, the damage 
is knocked down to 70%. It's basically 70% of, of the full power. Unless it's the only Pokemon Pokemon left on the field. Because, you know, it's, it's trying to distribute the damage fairly. Um, I didn't know this until I was wondering why, why, like, you know, my Earthquakes didn't do as much as it usually would. Uh, but that's going to be really important as we, like I said, as we get into the run here. Um... Oh, I should have picked uh, Ludicolo here, but I think I'll be fine. I should be fine. So I don't know your uh, route, but I think you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, I, if, I, if I'm right about the Pokemon that you use, this should be fine. I trust. Okay, this is now. This lead is pretty random. I have to hope for. Tentacruel to not protect, and it's gonna protect. Oh, oh wait, Ambipom went for Fake Out, which is not that great because now my Water Spot is not gonna be, it's not gonna do as much damage. Um, but at least I'm gonna break the Focus Ash on uh, Tentacruel here. So, so basically, this team utilizes uh, Acupressure, and it's gonna use it on okay on itself. If it, if it gets an Evasion Boost, okay, that's perfect. Um, but what you don't want to see is an evasion boost, which is why I carry Thunder on Gengar, because uh, using Thunder in the rain um, basically uh, allows it to, al to always hit. The Water Spot will knock out Ambipom regardless. It, it just won't... It, it, it just I believe it becomes a range on the Drapion. So this is also one of the only uh, fights in the game where there's going to be a dedicated lead and a dedicated pocket. So Tentacool is always the lead, and the AI will always end with Drapion. All right, so give me, give me B Barrel. Okay, okay, Seeking is great because I can just use Thunder on that one and just knock it out. So this and then should you hit the range be and then everything's fine, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it it should be as long as it doesn't click protect. Okay, cool, it didn't protect. So, get the range on Trapion. No, unfortunately. You, you, you can you How can tell was that. Yeah, yeah, because it because that took qu quite quite a bit of damage. Um Water Spell became weaker. And you, you you can also tell like uh, how much damage it takes just by like like how the health bar is moving. But yeah, I don't I'm, I don't carry a focus on Gengar by the way. I believe I'm holding an expert belt for more damage, which is honestly okay. That Gengar's knocked out here. So I'm just gonna send in like Token Chaos. I, I mean I have a Smeargle, um, which is designed um, for the fourth fight, um, as we'll be leading with that one. What, what, yeah, what's, what's the what's the phrase that it says right there? I would like you to repeat it. Uh, what what phrase? When when you sent out the Token Chaos. Oh, uh, I don't even know what I just said. I'm just talking. <laughs> Ugh. It said, please sub to twitch.tv slash Oh, oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, guys, you guys should follow P's SMB on Twitch at twitch.tv slash P's SMB. This guy streams. <laughs> I, I, I forgot about the, uh, the, the custom messages. <laughs> that's how I, much I, I forgot about them too until I saw it and I was like, oh that's hilarious actually. <laughs> <laughs> that that's that shows you how much I'm paying attention right now. I, I I'm just so focused on the game that I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, you guys should you guys should follow twitch.tv slash peace SNB. Or while you're here, if you have any if you have your primes available, if you want to use your prime sub on twitch.tv slash games on quick, it'd be very appreciated. Uh, your, your primes, gift subs, regular like tier ones, through threes, uh, all that helps a lot. If you'd like to subscribe, you can. If you want to, if you're feeling it, if you're feeling up to it. <laughs> so this fight is a little bit annoying because, because of the Pelipper lead. Um, it actually carries the move Tailwind, which doubles your speed. And I believe, like, if it uses Tailwind, uh, it will outspeed my Kyogre. And nice, the Leech Seed missed. Um, well, okay, at least it, it was going for Gengar, not for Kyogre. And How do you also, feel about that Pokemon, the the Cherim. Oh, Cherim. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Durham is uh I I used to I I, I kinda I kinda thought uh, the Pokemon was mid until until I saw its stun form and then I thought it was cool, but then I, I then I realized that the Pokemon is Yeah. It's just mid. It's just there. <laughs> what a controversial take. Yes. Chad, how yes. do you feel about the Pokemon Cherum? Do, do you guys like Cherum or is he just mid? Is, is he is he just one of those plant berry Pokemon that we have like eight million of? Yeah. <laughs> now, now Cherubi, on the other hand, kind of goes hard. I like love Cherubi. Cherubi's so little. <laughs> He's adorable. All right. So that is, that's the that's the third fight, and now we are on to what one of the most difficult uh, fights of the entire run, which is why I'll be using Smeargle here. Chat is saying that Cherim's sun form is cute. But he's just mostly there, okay. which is which is so understandable. Thank you, chat. So this fight is is a little bit interesting. So Sashe likes to use pressure and PP stall. Yes, PP stands for PowerPoint. <laughs> just to put it out there. <laughs> Couldn't mean anything else, right? <laughs> All right, so. Okay, so she's, she's always going to lead with Spirit Tomb and always end with Weavile. And this lead is terrible because uh, Water Sweat is arranged with Vespa Quinn. Um, but I have the move Helping Hand. Oh, actually, wait. Vespa Quinn has to quit Claw, so I'm going to use Follow Me on um, Spirit Go here so that um, in the event that it gets the quick Claw, it does go for the attack order on uh, Spirit Go. Okay, it went for Protect. Which is, which is honestly fine. So, Water Spot is going to be arranged on the Spirit Tomb. It might knock it out. Let's see. And... Oh, wait, then... Okay, that's fine. So, so even though it does it does go for Double Team, I, I have to hope to hit through said Double Team. Um, I didn't go for Helping Hand there, because... Um, Beth, like I said, well, Vesperman does have a Quick Claw, but I also want to make sure that it doesn't click Attack Order on... Um, on Kyogre here. So now I'm just gonna click Destiny Bond. This should Nice. We 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 broke through the double team and I did not click helping hands. Okay. Ky Kyogre is just is just not hitting its ranges today. <laughs> well, in the event that it that it knocks that it hits me with uh attack order. Okay. More double team. It's okay though because I have Gengar with Thunder, so um, I do have a backup in the event that, that I lose all my Water Spile PP. Oh, Miss Magius. Okay, that means there there isn't gonna be. Um, I'm gonna actually I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna switch. Um, that means there, there there isn't going to be um, a Raichu. So th so the Smeargle carries Faint. Um, oh, wow, that's that's actually crazy. So that means I'm not gonna have any more uh, water spot PP, so I'm gonna have to switch. <laughs> this should knock out uh, Miss Magius, though. All right. So you might be wondering, why did I just switch in Ludicolo on a uh, oh, on the Vespa Quinn? So I'm I'm gonna do I'm gonna do uh, two things. So the Weavile is gonna set up a substitute. I I need to switch Kyogre out. Um, we're gonna switch into Gengar here, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna fake out uh, the Vesequin. So e either Weavile is gonna click Protect or it's gonna click Substitute. All right, let's see. So I, I'm I'm gonna have to basically yeah okay click Protect, which is honestly fine because oh wait I, I forgot it had double team, so I should be able to knock it out. Nice. If you kill Sneasel, I will be upset. Oh yeah, I forgot Sneasel is, is your favorite Pokemon, but you're also a Weavile enjoyer. <laughs> I mean, just by it's in the same Evo line, but yeah. Sneasel's so much better. Uh, let's be real. <laughs> oh, 
I, I can actually... Uh, yeah, you know, I'm gonna troll the Weavile in the event that I miss with Hydro Pump here. All right. Do we hit these? We hit these. We've never See you, Weavile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so this... So, so the Weavile actually carries Bright Powder, and my Ludicolo is holding a wide lens. So I believe it, it, it cancels it out, <laughs> to say the least. Um, which means I will I will have my eighty five percent my uh, eighty or eighty five percent accurate uh, hydro pump, which somehow hit because hydro pump always misses. <laughs> At least for me, it always misses, and then the AI just just hits it whenever they needed to. All right, you know, um, I completely forgot about Legends Arceus. Um, I I love the the history and forms. I, th I thought Sneezer was pretty cool when they first designed it. Um, same with the, same same with the uh, other uh, um, split evolutions. They're pretty cool. All right, so this team is a little bit cringe because it's either going to lead with Clefable or Azumarill. Um, I wanted to lead Clefable. Uh, actually, no, I, I, want to, I want for it to lead a zero because it doesn't have the laxant sense. Um, it's a, this this team is basically a belly drum, which uh, which uses uh, which basically maximizes your attack, and I got Clefable. Awesome. All right, it's okay though. Uh, what I will have to do is hopefully get the range on uh, Rose Rain after an extreme speed. Yeah, it does just a little bit over half. So if you're wondering how I have Helping Hand and Follow Me on the Togekiss, um, you can only get that in Pokemon XD Gala Darkness. So b basically what, what you have to do is uh, not give back the Togekiss, or sorry, uh, not give back the Togepi uh, to the trainer. You basically keep it. But unfortunately, if you keep the Togepi, you can't get the um, uh, Ella Kid with the Elemental Punches. Which is what I did on my casual playthrough because I, I wanted an Electabuzz with the uh, elemental punches. Um, so much setup for a two-hour run. For for real. <laughs> All right, so this is Spirit Tomb and Perugly. The Perugly has Fake Out, so we click Follow Me. Yeah. So <laughs> so cool. I think this lead is is just really good because uh, Togepi dodges um, Fisher. It also just, it, it's also like a tank. And the reason why I'm not using Togetic is because it doesn't get extreme speed. Only Togekiss does. Um, so this should yeah knocks knocks both of them out for free. I still can't believe that Perugly is faster than uh, than Gengar. Like. I, I, I never understood um, how it's it's faster than a than a ghost. <laughs> yeah, probably like so fast and for what? <laughs> I, I I feel like I feel like if if anything, Perugly is just discount Garfield, not Meowth. <laughs> Even though Meowth, I is mean true Garfield can multi shine. That's true. Oh shoot! I I forgot to change something on my team, but it shouldn't really matter. Um, but the, the important thing is, I have to lead with Kyogre and Polyrath because this is the first time we get to see the AI try to use um, explosion strats. And good because the Steelix has a um, what is it? It has a quick claw, but the funny thing is, the AI doesn't read your abilities. Uh, it, it 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 only reads your stats. So you you will see the AI click explosion and not realize. Oh wait, I can't use that move. <laughs> so, um, good good thing I good thing I press helping hand because uh, water spot is arranged on on this grip limb. So because we, so it, it always leads with, with Golem or Steelix and it, it'll end with either Octillery or Crobat. 
So we got Miss Maggie. I think we get Corvat. Yeah. All right. That's fine. Uh, we, we we just have to hope to hit uh, the water spell on on the uh, on the Corvat here because it carries. Um, uh, I believe it carries Bright Powder or Last and Sense. Yeah, it carries Last and Sense. So one one thing to also note is that you can't you can't use two of the same species, and you also can't use two of the same items. Which means, like, I can't use two Gengar on one team. I can use a Hauncher and a Gengar because they they technically count as different Pokemon. Um, but I can't have two, uh, like I can't I can't have like a choice specs and and a like two two of the two of the choice specs. Like one has to have an expert belt, and or like the other has to have like a life orb or something. I think I, I think you get the picture. <laughs> yeah, it's just a competitive Pokemon rule that they carried over here so it's, this is kind of in the vein of Pokemon Stadium yes. where it's just all competitive seeing all this water on my screen uh, is a friendly reminder to hydrate <laughs> yes chat you should hydrate right now if you're already hydrating then hydrate a little bit more yes all right so this this team doesn't have a real strategy but we want to use Follow Me because the Bastiodon has a Quick Claw and Chalker, Fisher. <laughs> All right. So we don't want to see that Quick Claw, right? Good. So I guess I could talk a little bit about um, a, a, a little bit about my team. A lot of it was basically having to uh, do Pokemon breeding in, in my Soul Silver because this is where all my Pokemon are, most of my Pokemon are transferred from. And also, um, your uh, Mysterial's team is dependent on which version you transfer Pokemon from. Um, you get a different team if you use um, Pearl, oh, well, Pearl and Heart Gold. But the best, ga the best games to transfer from are Platinum, Soul Silver, and Diamond. Actually, I should be using Trick. So that I don't get the priority move. Nice. When I was a kid, I was I was so worried that I couldn't use my Soul Silver with this game. But but when I randomly found out that I can I can actually like keep, like use my Soul Silver with it, I was so happy. Um, which means you can use the egg moves that are only exclusive to that game. Um, in Battle Revolution. You just can't use um, the Platinum Armor Pokemon like um, the like the appliance forms of Rotom, Giratina Origin, Sky and Skyform Shaman. Alright, so this fight is pretty easy because Kruger is always going to lead with uh, Drapion and Ambipom. And for some reason... Actually, no, 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 no never mind. Yeah. That, that was my old strat. <laughs> it will click fake out, so I will press follow me. Just to make sure it doesn't do that. So the reason why I, I, ha I have it as is, is because um, uh, the the Medicham also carries fake out. And I kind of don't want Kyogre to get hit at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, click follow me here. Uh, I, I think I used follow me twice. Oh yeah, because the Haunt Girl... Uh, in pocket had uh, has sucker punch, and um, this fight is is all about crits. So uh, Drapion has the sniper ability, and and uh, the Hashiko has the, has the super luck ability, um, and we kind of don't want that. <laughs> so we're gonna see Ambipom and Drapion go down, and then we're gonna have. Uh, hopefully Machamp and Skuntank. Hopefully. Let's see, we have... Okay, we have Honchkrow, which means I'm gonna use Follow Me. And Machamp, okay. So Machamp might click Protect because it has the Guts ability. Um... Oh yeah, fun fact. You can roll shiny Pokémon, um... Or, or, or the AI can roll shiny Pokemon, which will, which is a guaranteed time loss. 
Um, I, have a, I have a couple of videos on my YouTube where I encountered um, a shiny Machamp and then I encountered a shiny Heatran um, by Kruger himself. So, um, you, you, you should also totally subscribe to my YouTube. <laughs> totally. I can't imagine like being the luckiest person ever where like most of the Pokemon that get rolled are shinies, but just losing that much time. Yeah. That, that's also personally why I, I stopped caring about shinies, because when, when I started spinning Pokemon, I'm like, wait a minute, I, I don't want to get a shiny, because that's going to lose like a lot of time. <laughs> so nowadays, I just like the I just like the Pokemon like the way it is. Shiny is to me, to me, shinies just don't really matter. And I know that is the most controversial take I've ever said on this stream. <laughs> Every time I like go back to running Pokemon, if I see a shiny Pokemon like as a random encounter, I just kill it like on instinct. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so let's do an early shout out to my amazing girlfriend, Luna, because this we're going to be using this team. <laughs> um, so I, I like this team, too, because we, we get to this is the first time we get to use explosion strategies. Um, this one in particular, we're going to be using a ground on and shift tree. You set up the sun and just spam uh, eruption, or we go for explosion, because Shiftry is uh, because Shiftry has the ability chlorophyll, right? Which means its speed is doubled, um, un doubled under the sun. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the, the beginning battle phrase, the no way, is so funny. <laughs> All right. So my flowchart here is I just go for eruption because. Um, Actually, no, I don't. I go. I, actually, no, no. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm, tr I'm trying to trying to remember, remember my strats here because the Toxicroak has Fake Out. Um, so Shift Tree also uh, has something uh, also uh, causes something called called Kill AI in that because Shift Tree has terrible defenses, the AI will almost always want to go for it. And so the Toxicroak has the um, Dry Skin ability, which means after this turn, it will it will knock itself out due to the sun. So we don't care that Eruption did nothing to Mantine. Um, we can just say goodbye to Toxic Croak, though. So I don't like this lead in particular because uh, it, it guarantees a three-turn fight. I have no way of knocking out um, Mantine for free. Uh, and oh, we got Weavile again. That's crazy. Yippee! All right, so I'm gonna go for I'm gonna explode this turn here um, because we have we have no use for uh, Shift Tree anymore. <laughs> no, I love Shift Tree actually. <laughs> <laughs> Shift Tree is the goat, though. But no, unfortunately, it's actually my favorite gr grass type Pokemon. Uh, wait. Uh, w uh which Pokemon? N uh, Nuzleaf. Oh yeah, <laughs> Nuzleaf does kind of have that uh, sneeze vibe. <laughs> they're just like little guys, and they're like ninja animals. It's awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, one thing about this team is that um, they they hold the super effective berries. Because basically every Pokemon on this on that team ha has a time soul weakness. Like Weavile has, is time soul weak to uh, Electric, Weavile, uh, Fighting, um, Toxic Croak, Psychic, and so on and so forth. And I believe I use Metagross here. Oh, nice, nice Basquiatron. I believe it's only one Pokemon left, so I can just use yeah, I, I can just use um, Earth Power. But more, mainly, I would use a fighting move. I I'm, I'm gonna go for Trick because I believe I outspeed. Yes, I do. So we're gonna use Trick to get rid of the Shuckleberry, and then I can just knock it out for free with uh, Earth Power. So unfortunately, Bastiodon is locked into whatever move it was, it was gonna hit. It, it, it was probably Metal Burst. Oh, I was getting a crit anyway, so it just didn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> I would say we're so back, but like it was never over. True. <laughs> We've never been so here. The nice thing about this game is that there's there's only a few fights where if you make one mistake, it is game over. But for ninety five percent of it, you you will almost always win with this team. Um, speaking of always winning, I I get to use um, another Pokemon transferred from XD, um, which in which this Duskull uh, has the move Helping Hand. Um, which you can only get if you purify it in, in like a, in 
in the aforementioned game, and then you transfer it up um, from, you know, whatever GBA game. Shout out to me getting uh, another DS Lite because my old one broke, and I wanted to use, um, and, it, and, like, and I really wanted this thing to work, so, so I got myself a DS Lite <laughs> just to have that work. All right, so I'm gonna actually, I'm actually gonna click Trick Room because I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a Snorlax in order to um, uh, clean through, like, uh, clean through the rest of the team. And the Bronzong actually has a Quick Claw here, which it, which didn't activate, which is honestly fine. So this, okay, it's actually arranged on Bronzong. So I believe Bronzong clicks a uh, Cosmic Power. And I use explosion to knock out um, uh, the club, the club table there. And so next, I'm gonna send in Snorlax, and then I'm gonna use um, oh, calm mind, not cosmic power. Um, then then I'll, I'll use Trick Room again to uh, to uh, reverse the speeds. Yeah. So basically, what what Trick Room does is that it it um, it switches over of uh, the. Uh, the train order and ooh, I, I get to show this off. Nice. All right, so what I'm gonna do is click Foresight on Rotom here to get rid of its ghost typing, and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to uh, self destruct. So watch this trick. So we we want to get rid of Rotom's ghost typing, and then we can explode. So normally, uh, self destruct would not hit Rotom, but because Foresight removed, well, Foresight and Otis Sleuth remove, um, uh, or basically identify the opponent, uh, identify the, uh, the opponent, we, we, we basically get to hit um, normal types on, on Ghost uh, Ghost types for free, or normal moves on Ghost types for free. So, and also a way to get self destruct on uh, Starlax there is once again Pokemon XD. Okay, nice. Nice that uh, that I have Star Raptor uh, as the pocket because now I can now I can I can just use Helping Hand, uh, Helping Hand, and I believe uh, I think I, I think I have T Bolt here. Let's see. Yep, I have T Bolt, so we're just gonna use that. It's faster than Ice Beam in this game, and I believe Helping Hand T Bolt is gonna knock out the Star Raptor. Well, it, it's gonna click Brave Bird, so either way, Star Raptor goes down. Nice. Yeah, I just love seeing like the silly synergies that you have like set up. You've like mm -hmm. put so much time into like trying to figure it out and stuff. <laughs> yeah, like I was so happy when I found out that Duskull got the move Foresight, and I'm like, okay, you know what? I can just use Trick Room, and then um, have have either Snorlax or actually have Snorlax use Self Disrupt because uh, I, I had to make sure that my Duskull is the slowest Pokemon on the field. <laughs> And speaking of synergy, this this team is a little bit cringe. Um, I have to hope to not get the Luminion lead because it carries um, uh, Lax and Sense or Bright Powder, one of the two. And and the Golem has a Quick Claw, which is also not good. But this is one of the only uh, cringe fights in in this run. If I've already said that, uh, let's see. We have oh yeah, we got the Luminion lead. That's so awesome. All right, what do I do here? Okay, I just I just explode on on uh, I, I just use uh, explosion for shift tree because the Rampardos actually has a choice scarf, but under the sun I'm faster. So hopefully we we hit the Luminion. I mean, if we miss, then that's okay because I do have a backup. Oh, I think I think I missed because I I didn't see a Luminion uh, getting hit. Uh. Or Groudon outspeeds Luminion? I don't remember. Okay, no, I forgot. Groudon outspeeds a Luminion. Whew, okay. Oof, that was close. That scared me for a second. <laughs> Alright, so that's good. We're so bad. I, I think according to my notes, I'm going I I'm supposed to switch in uh I think I'll I think I'll I'll switch in Metagross here, actually. We'll, we'll save Arceus for last. Okay, Probo Pass. Okay, it, it just eats a uh, an Earth Power for free, and I believe Paladin's gonna come in, right? Yep. Uh, if Paladin is kind of bad, though, I will say that. What do I have here? Okay, I have 
Honestly, I'm gonna I'm just Earth Power and then uh, Trick. I could, I, could, I could have actually went. Oh yeah, the Hippomon has a Focus Band, so I will. I'll I'll let it hit me hit me with, with like a yawn or whatever, but I'm gonna lock it into whatever move that it's gonna use. So goodbye to Pro. Oh wait, Pro Bash just lived. Okay. Oh, it, it has yawn. Nice. So we pretty much just just locked the uh, hit pot on into uh, yawn, and now Probovas can't use uh, substitute. So that's nice. So what I'm hearing is we're so fine. Yes, and I and I'm and I'm gonna pull a funny. Actually, wait, I protect. What what am I doing? <laughs> so now I am safe to use explosion because on this turn, uh, Metagross goes to sleep. <laughs> And also, and also, okay, Pano can't protect either, so... So, the reason why I didn't switch either is because... Oh, you know, oh, I know why Pogo Pass loved the Earth Power, because uh, in Gen 4, if you use... Uh, under the Sandstorm, uh, Rock types get a 50% get a special defensive boost, so that's the, only, that's the only reason why it, it lives the Earth Power. And also, my Groudon, uh, I did not use RNG Manipulation, I just caught it um, the way it is <laughs> in my Soul Silver. Um, I think this one is, this one is a quirky nature with bad IVs. And then I have another one, which, which I had for my Ruby. Um, I don't know what, what happened to my, to the one. No, wait, no, no, wait. I'm using the one from, I'm using another one from Emerald. I don't remember. <laughs> There's too, I have too many Pokemon from Gen 3 onward. All right. So we're going to be using Duskull, Metagross, Arceus, Snorlax. So this team is a little bit uh, tricky here. Um, what I have to do is the the same strat as before. I go for I I, I use explosion with Metagross, and then I use Trick Room to have Snorlax go next. Um, let's see, what do we have? Okay, Palkia and uh, Garchomp. That's actually good. So let's go for uh, Trick Room because I, I need the Snorlax to move first. And then we do that. Wait, it, it protected. Oh, okay, that's fine if Garchomp protects because that means either Palkia picks Surf or it picked um, a, a Draco Meteor, which is honestly whatever. That crit doesn't matter. <laughs> oh yeah. So for whatever reason, um, they, they basically made set for like. Mysterial, and which means after this, I'm gonna trigger credits. It's it, it, it won't be the end of the run. Don't worry. All right. So the so the nice thing about this is that because I'm using Soul Silver, I'm, I will get Palkia and um, Palkia and and Yuxi. I forget what the other what the other games use, um, but I would I would I would have to use like a different. Completely different build in the event that I had to use, um, it, it, like in the event that I use like Pearl or something like that. Nice. So Charizard has Bright Powder, and and thankfully I was I was able to able to hit through that. So yeah, you can get a two turn fight out of this. It's just much more difficult um, because if you get like Garchomp. Uh, It'll, if you get Garchomp or Lucario or Charizard as the lead, it, it'll, it'll protect. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, change back uh, the the Twisted Dimensions so I can have Arceus go first, and then I'm gonna go for Helping Hand Judgment so I can knock out uh, Uxie for free. All right. So we so we actually get to see Arceus's uh, signature move, which. Honestly, it's kind of lame because I, I think the developers um, weren't really expecting people uh, to already have an Arceus because, haha, a funny action replay. <laughs> that that ran amok back in the day. <laughs> but yeah. I've never used an action replay. Same. What, what is action replay? <laughs> anyway, yeah, so that sounds scary. I just use my bike very quickly over load lines and then travel for thousands of tiles in the void <laughs> like a normal person. 
But yeah, we are halfway uh, done through uh, the game here. So we, 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 we get to see Luna's character for one last time because according to my notes, we will not be using uh, this team for the, for the rest of the run. So <laughs> it's a pretty good team though. Gotta admit, it's it, it's really fire. So. Yeah, that team is is pretty interesting. All right, so now we go back to using uh, the funny Kyogre team um, for two two more times. Actually, I'm gonna make you this way. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention I, uh, I so I did mention that I have like almost 400 hours in this game. I played so much about Battle Revolution Online before Nintendo got rid of the servers. Oh, 07, by the way. <laughs> All right, so set five is where uh, some, I like to say, Mickey Mouse can happen because uh, Joe here, um, let's just say Bro decides, Bro decides to use legendaries <laughs> as well. So, okay, this lead is fine. I just have to go for follow me on Smeargle. And the reason why I'm using Smeargle instead of uh, Togekiss here is because I have to move Faint. And Ursa Ring tends to use Protect to have that um, quick feat of boost. And so we want to use Faint in order to break the Protect and knock it out with uh, Water Spout. But uh, as long as Fake Out doesn't crit, I should be fine. Nice. Very, very nice. So now we just knock out uh, Absol and Kangaskhan for free. And the Kangaskhan actually has a focus ban, so thankfully uh, it didn't activate. Um, hold on. Give me one second. Alright, speaking of Ursa Ring, oh wait, uh, you know what, we ball, we ball. We're balling, I believe. Oh, okay, cool, it, it, it didn't click protect, dude, not quick claw, it quick clawed. <laughs> oh wait, okay, you know what, that's fine, Th that is perfect. <laughs> it, it, it didn't matter. So soon. <laughs> the, the funny thing is, it, it didn't even matter. <laughs> yeah. Sh uh, shout outs to Kill AI, because, um... I was either I was either gonna, gonna click follow me or I was gonna click faint because Earthspring was gonna was gonna go for go for facade on Spherical anyway, so it didn't matter. <laughs> oh wait, that, that's the end of the battle. I'm I, I'm I'm so not used to having my announcer turned off. By the way, the announcer in this game is comparable to um, the Pokemon. Well, it's not comparable. It, it, it's literally the same uh, guy who who is the narrator in the Pokemon anime up until Gen Four. Kind of cool, right? I didn't realize it was the same guy like until Gen Four, actually. Yeah, like I I had to listen really closely because a couple of years ago I watched um, uh, Gen One's anime. And I was like, I can kind of hear it. <laughs> yeah, it's just like recorded pretty differently. So I like, I didn't realize. Mm -hmm. All right, this one is not so bad. This this team is basically um, uh, evolutions to uh, to pass gen. Um, oh yeah, the magma actually. Magwater actually has a partial berry, uh, it, thankfully. It, it, it doesn't miss. <laughs> I, I don't know why it, it just plays that message. Um, I feel I, I, I feel like, bef be like before the move hits, it, sh it should have just like play, play, played the berry animation and then like, you know, said, Kyogre, use this. But yeah. So fun fact, you can't use Destiny Bond and follow me at the same time. I tried that and I and and I was so sad. But it makes sense. It makes sense, but I didn't think that they would do anything with that. Yeah. Because the way Destiny Bond works, uh, up until Gen 9, is that you can spam it. Um and I'll and, and the effect ends once your Pokemon moves. I also forget the announcer's name. Um, it's, 
I I want to say he is a four kids a uh, legend, but not 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 as much as a not as much as uh, Mike Pollock for sure. <laughs> I want to say Mike Pollock has made an appearance in the Pokemon anime. It might have been like Gen three or Gen four anime because that was like right around Sonic X. <laughs> Oh, I just remembered Sonic X. Oh, that was hype. Yes. Yes. More like Sonic X Shadow Generations, am I right? Ha 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 ha. Boo. Uh. Sonic fan, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, I didn't choose the right Pokemon. Alright, so... Sorry, I was, I was booing too hard. <laughs> it's okay. So, these two fights, I don't like them one little bit. One, because Vaporeon is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time, and it's actually bad for this team because it has Water Absorb, which means I can't use Water Spell on it. And... okay. Glaceon and Flareon is kind of bad, but you know what? Weeball. I'm going to go for Destiny Bond. Let's see. Okay, it, 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 it didn't get the Quick Claw boost. So Glaceon actually has the focus band. Nice. Just had to make sure that uh, it didn't activate. 10% chance, by the way. I I had a practice run yesterday. Well, a little bit of a practice run where um, <clears throat> a Pokemon had the focus band and it activated twice. 10% chance, by the way. <laughs> in a row or? Uh, twice in a row, yes. Oh, jeez. Also, because uh, we mentioned Sonic X, uh, all the Sonic X fans are coming out of the woodworks, I guess. I, I didn't know that there were that many. Oh, this is not good. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm just, I'm just try and knock out uh, Vaporeon and Leafeon from here. Uh, what is... Oh, that's perfect. That is so perfect. So, Thunder is actually a range on Vaporeon. So, Water Spot is probably gonna knock out Leafeon from here. I did not get the range. Okay. So Vaporeon actually clicked Hydro Pump on Gengar. Um, it wasn't going to hit Kyogre anyway. So I should get the range here. No, I did not get the range. That, that's unfortunate. Paralyze? Nope. Can't have anything. It, it picked Ice Beam. Oh, but it does knock me out. Haha. -ha. All right, we're good. So, um,. You might think this play is going to be weird, but this is where I say trust the process because it doesn't matter. <laughs> Alright, so Leafeon gets knocked out. And, they, and Vaporeon is going to heal from the Water Spell, which, again, does not matter. <laughs> doesn't even get that much health from it. And there we go. All right. I understand, like, Vaporeon's supposed to be, like, a water type, but, like, they just make him look so, like, sopping wet in this game. The, the, the Gen 1 models, I, I don't know what they were doing with them. Like, yeah, I don't know what they were doing with them. Um, the Gen 2 models were fine, but nah. The, the Gen 4 models look really good, though. Okay. Yeah, I, I like most of these. Just Vaporeon looks so like wet. <laughs> <laughs> well, water is wet, <laughs> or is water wet? <laughs> Chat is water wet. I've got to know. Debate. Ready? Go. <laughs> All right. So this this is probably um, one of the harder fights this far. Do I get Lapras? Nice. I did not get the Lapras lead. All right, so I'm going to be using a very funny move called Sweet Scent, which lowers the evasiveness of the Pokemon. And the reason why I'm using uh, said move is because Raikou has a Bright Powder, and Raikou is one of the reasons why this fight is terrible. <laughs> so the good thing the good thing about using... Um, uh, Sweet Scent and lowering the evasiveness means that Bright Powder does not matter. So, goodbye, Raikou. Alright, so the next Pokemon could be Lapras, which honestly shouldn't matter because um, Ludicolo covers for uh, Suicune and uh, Lapras, and I got Entei. Alright, that, that's fine. 
All right, so I'm gonna, gonna say, just go like, what are you gonna him? do about about end it? This is scary, and then I like forgot that you have like an entire water type. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that was slow. What a, what is bro cooking? <laughs> it's okay though. Um, uh, that's Pasha Berry, I think. Yes. I forget what item Ente holds, uh, but it, but again, it doesn't really matter. We, we knock both of them out for free. All right, so the last Pokemon is either going to be Electivire, Suicune, or um, Lapras. It's probably going to be Electivire, uh, given that we saw. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. Given given that we saw our uh, our canine and. Um, and Raikou being led. So basically, jo Joe's team. I okay. I forgot I'm faster, but that just works. <laughs> I, I I forgot that Ludicolo outspec Kyogre under the rain because Swift Swim ability. But I mean, we take those. <laughs> Clean fight. Clean fight. But yeah, we are basically over halfway done with this run. We have three three more sets to go. But yeah, uh, since we're like just a little over halfway done, uh, this is a good time for a break. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll be back in a few minutes with more uh, Pokemon Battle Revolution. And then after that, we have a few more runners, a few more games. We're going to be live all day here on GT Graphics with my RPG show, I guess. Yeah, I'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome back to my RPG show, I guess. Uh, all day we're going to be showcasing runners that are in UBAF, and some runs that are actually also in UBAF. It's going to be a great time. Uh, we left off with Peas about halfway through uh, Pokemon Battle Revolution, so we're going to be starting that back up. I heard he has a surprise for you, though. Oh yeah, I, I do have a surprise. And... Before I go even further, I saw I saw a chat message. What is the best flavor of donut? Mine is Donut Plains Three. <laughs> I'm sorry. This guy I'm loves sorry. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. What? Why am I surprised that it was? It was that. <laughs> All right. Um. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> All right. Yes, that is the other game that I speedrun alongside Monkey Ball and Puyo. Of course, Puyo. Of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, a couple months ago, he was actually on a one off that was him doing all the tracks in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, like with all the DLC and everything, and then uh, Mario Kart TS as well. Stargazer Coliseum. And I was on commentary for that because I know so much about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Ooh! The, an the announcer? Where, where did he come from? <laughs> so, for the rest of the run, I'm going to turn on the announcer. <laughs> I, I knew something was missing, and now he's back. <laughs> he's, we're so back. So, fun, so, explosion. <laughs> so, so fun fact, I used to have the announcer on for the run because audio cues like that is very important. Um, so if he doesn't say anything and you, and you use like a multi-hitting move that knocks out every Pokemon, he, he, uh, he won't say anything, right? So like say like annihilated by explosion and then he says nothing. That's that's good. That means you knocked out both the Pokemon. But if, if but if he says like it's down and out, that means uh, either it missed or it, it or it, or didn't knock out any Pokemon at all. Oh great! I I don't I don't like this position, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to protect here and then on I'm, then I'll have to use a Shadow Sneak on Houndoom to break the Focus Sash. You do protect itself. Oh wait, I should I should went for Taunt on uh on a Persian there because Persian is gonna outspeed me. I should wait. No, I, I, I'm holding a Lumberry, so I should be fine. All right. 
So Houndoom is gonna click uh, either Dark Pool. Okay, it, it was it goes to Nasty Plot. It's special attack rose. All right, so now we go for self destruct, and I believe I can just click any move. I was I was Cooper. I was Cooper Thunder Wave. Even though it Chat. shouldn't really matter. Chat just talking about donuts is making me so hungry. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Oh yes, Mewtwo can learn self-destruct. Oh, only only in Pokemon XD though. I, I, I used I, I used to have a Mew with explosion, but um, I needed Mewtwo because uh, it's uh, it outspeeds both Persian and uh, and the Alakazam uh, that, that you'll see two fights from now. So this is the hardest fight. The, this is the hardest set in the game. Um, for that particular reason, and also, well, Sasha's team is free. It's just that fight three is the hardest fight in the game, in my opinion, <clears throat> because of uh, like I, I do I do have it flow charted for the most part. It it just it it, it, just, it just gets really tough. But this fight is not this one's not so bad. So earlier I mentioned about uh, animations, right? Glalie and Mewtwo have. Um, one of the fastest fainting animations in this game, <clears throat> so it's good to have explosion uses like them, so that you use explosion and they go back to the Pokeball, just like that. Okay, so Gengar and Metagross. I don't like this lead, but that is okay because fun fact, Choice Banded Metagross has the strongest explosion in the entire game. Right from the start. <laughs> I, I love the announcer, dude. He's bitten, honestly. All right. So I I would have not picked Earthquake there because, like I said, this Metagross has a choice band and is adamant nature. So I'm going to be slower than literally a lot of their team. <clears throat> and I believe, according to my notes, I send in Glalie because I have a choice scarf. And also that the Glalie has inner focus as opposed to Ice Body because, um, well, because of the first fight, the Paracly has Fake Out. And if I lead Glalie and uh, Bayonet, it will go for Fake Out on Glalie. And, and like I said, the AI uh, does not read abilities. <laughs> Speaking of Glalie, I'm gonna just go for Taunt. It's not gonna matter here. So, Oh, the Electro does have Bright Powder. Yep, there it goes. Oh, I, I didn't even get the range? Okay, that's a first. Oh, no. I didn't even know that was a range. Nah, uh, it's okay. Uh, I believe I, I believe I taunted it, right? And then, okay, it, it went for Substitute. All right, it's okay, because I, I believe I, I knock out Electrode with... Actually, I'm going to go for Aura Sphere instead of Shadow Ball. So, I do have, like I said, I do have Mewtwo in the back. I think I can knock it out with Shadow Sneak. I didn't, I, I didn't get intimidated, so... Yeah, it, 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 should, it should be enough health to knock it out. So then we go for uh, Aura Sphere. I'm not going to go for Self Destruct. It should be just enough. Nice. It couldn't take it. It's We're so back. Alright, so Electro's gonna go for T-Bolt. Yep. Okay, so T-Bolt's gonna be a three hit. Oh no, I got paralyzed. Don't care. <laughs> Let's go, Lumberry. Oh! Nice crit! <laughs> Was that crit needed? Uh, yeah. Um, because Orser Ur would have been a two hit on, on Electrode. Okay. Finally, Chris, that saved time. <laughs> my <laughs> manipulous Pokemon speedrun. For real. Oh my goodness. I, w I went from having fringe luck to having clutch luck right there. All right, so fight number three. This is the heart. This is the heart. This is the fight I was talking about. <clears throat> so. I need to hope to not get Nine Tails lead. If I, if I get the Nine Tails lead, that's not good for me. Um, Alakazam is preferred. Um, but I, like I said, I do have this flow charted, but I, I need to. I, I, I may have a slow decision making here if, if I get the Nine Tails lead. 
Okay, nice, Alakazam is good. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to taunt the Dugong here because it's going to go for Encore. Uh, the Alakazam is going to click Protect because I'm faster than it, for one. And also, it, it wants to uh, disable one of my moves and then use Encore to lock me into said move and just for me to struggle. Oh, that's a good crit. Even I think that crit that crit is a range. Um, so this is good. So now what I'm gonna do, actually, oh wait, no, it, it has a sheer cold, so I am gonna need to go for explosion or self destruct here. So what I'm gonna do is use Shadow Seek on the Alakazam to break the Focus Ash. So we gotta watch the animation. This animation's so funny. So you might you might think that it was pointless to go for self destruct. Um, the reason why I went for it anyway is because I want to force it to be a three versus two match, as opposed to you know having it um, you know go down one by one. So. <clears throat> Alright, so, so now we send in Metagross, actually, because I'm faster than their entire team. Um, and Helping Hand Explosion is a range on Wobbuffet with Glalie. So, do I get... Nice! Like, oh, that's okay. We, we, can do, we can do the Foresight strat again. Nice. That is not Foresight. Oh, yeah, you, you might notice that I'm not using my Sensor Bar. You can actually... You can, just, you can just use the D-pad with this game, so... Um, so, in a way, it does screw up the menuing, but, um, it's all good, though. I'm so glad I get I get to show off really wacky strats, and if you, if you really, like, enjoy what you're seeing, um, definitely follow me. <laughs> definitely. Please, please follow him. Push out TV slash piece SMB. <laughs> All right. So I be well, okay. If I was timing this for real, I would be on record pace right now. <laughs> but um, doesn't really matter. At, 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 at the end of the day, I'm just happy to to show off uh, uh, these strats because Pokemon is just so much fun, and um, not like not not many people like still know of this game's you know existence and, and stuff like that. So it's also really nice to just show that off. Okay, Baynet, Metagross, Licky Licky Mewtwo. So we might be seeing another Foresight strat. Like for, for, for some, like literally every fight with the exception of the first fight has, has a ghost type Pokemon on their team. It, it, it's kind of wild if you ask me. So Sasha, uh PP stalls, but with status moves and Okay, I, I got this lead yesterday, which is really good. Both corners are so full of energy. So what I'm gonna do is go for taunt onto the Oxus so that it can't pick uh, Thunder Wave or Calm Mind in the event that Explosion doesn't knock it out. Um, because this Bayonet gets Foresight as an egg move, which means um, it doesn't naturally learn uh, Foresight by level up. Um, it, it, it would have been really nice though to to have Baynet um, have Helping Hand and Foresight, that, that would've been great, but um, it's okay though. All right. Oh, and the reason why I'm not using Dusk, uh, Duskull there is because Baynet is years faster than uh, uh, Dusk Noir, or, Duskull, or the Duskull line. Oh wait, no, we, we go into Licky Licky here, which for some reason gets Explosion. Like, I never understood why Licky Licky can learn Explosion. Oh, that's perfect. I don't even know that he can learn Explosion yet. So I believe Licky Licky's Explosion. Oh, that's so unlucky. This, this, unless I unless I get a crit on Registeel, this is a three turn five. Um, because I have to go for uh, uh, Foresight on Giratina. And Licky Licky's Explosion is is, is a mid range on Registeel, so um, it does carry the life orb, but it won't be enough. Yeah. So if I if I went for Shadow Sneak, um, it would it would have been close to, to knocking knocking uh, it out. So eh, it's okay. But the 
Um, let's see. Okay, iron defense. Okay, that's fine. So, so the range of steel has iron defense, double team, rest, and uh, charge beam. Char. I don't know why it carries charge beam because, like, literally, literally it, it, if you if you send in a ground type, you you just completely wall this thing. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm not gonna go for uh, shadow sneak because I don't think it's gonna knock it out. I'm gonna just play it safe and go for aura sphere. But yeah, that is Sasha. It couldn't take him. It so now we have two more fights to go. And the only time we get to see uh, um, uh, this team. Wait, really? This is the only time this team comes off? I didn't realize. Mm -hmm. I, I, I built this team specifically for set six um, because I needed a way to get around uh, uh, like the spamming of ghost types <laughs> so <laughs> and it all works out alright so now we, we get to use uh, the, the Kyogre team for one last time that is not Stargazer what is wrong with my menuing today <laughs> I think you should do the other one instead oh, oh, oh you're so real for that one <laughs> totally. surely you all count towards the run <laughs> Okay, so I actually was flow charting this team a bit last night. Um, so Blissey is always led. I kind of want, I do want to see Blissey and Gargavoir, but I do not want Blissey and Dragonite. Um, because Dragonite has no Draco Meteor and Thunder, it will probably Thunder Kyogre. And I, I don't, I don't want the thing to hit, to hit me at all. So we get, yep, we got Dragonite. That's okay. With the appearance of Kyogre, it's now pouring. Uh, you know what? I'm. You know what? Let me cook. Let, literally, let let me cook. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do this. And now the battle begins. Ice beam hits. Taken out already. This is the first time I'm gonna try this, so we're gonna see if this works. I am such a believer. So I'm gonna trick the choice scarf onto uh, onto myself so that I can I can switch up my moves. Um, ne and then next I'm gonna lock I'm gonna lock Blissey into I think it's gonna pick Charge Beam. <clears throat> All right, let's see who is in pocket. Do not be Ludicolo. Okay, okay, that's so good that, that I got Agron there. So next, I'm going to uh, trick the um, trick the choice scarf onto onto Blissey, by water spout. and then I can knock it out with helping hand, uh, helping hand water spout because I, I outspeed the rest of their team anyway. So and this works, I this is such a cool strat. <laughs> All right, so now you have. The Torus Scarf, so that, that means you can't go for, you can't heal and you can't go for Soft Boiled. Okay, nice. It went for Charge Beam. So, so, so now the Blissey is locked into uh, Charge Beam. So that means it, it can't go for Soft Boiled, which is really nice. All right, show me Gardevoir. Or show me, uh, or uh, yeah, show me Gardevoir or show me Haruyama. Survey says, nice. All right. So Gardevoir does have a focus ban. Um, honestly, it, it 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 doesn't matter because Kyogre has a Lumberry. So in the event that um, Gardevoir go, goes for Hypnosis, uh, I I wake up anyway. So. Oh, okay, Blissey moment. <laughs> I thought it was. I thought you were so fine. I'm not gonna lie. I think it's because I low rolled uh, the first water spout, and then um, it just—I uh, I, I think I low rolled again, <laughs> but it's okay. So we don't care about Blissey's special attack boost because we win anyway. Um, I'm gonna go for a water spout because physical moves in this game, for the most part, uh, take take much longer than special moves. So. 
I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually glad that I, uh, that I uh, did the trick play there, cause I was like, I was like, wait a minute, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get bodied by my Dragon Knight. No, I have Ice Beam. I, I can, I can just trick off my, my choice cards. So I can change my moves and go from there. So. <laughs> So now, this one is Lightning Rod. Uh, so let's use Iogre, Togekiss, Gengar, and Smeargle. So this one, I'm either gonna I'm either gonna get Rhyperior or Manetric. I want Rhyperior because it will uh, pick Earthquake if there's not a Starmie lead. So if I get Rhyperior Starmie, it, it picks Earthquake. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. If it if it doesn't. It, it, hmm. If it doesn't get um, Rhyperior Starmie, it picks Earthquake. That's, that's my bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, Gyarados is fine. Uh, it's, it's just it, it's just going to pick um, uh, Dragon Dance. So I'm just going to go for Helping Hand here. And now. And, e and even at plus one, I'm st I'm still faster than Gyarados here. protects itself. So the reason why it just it almost always goes to goes to protect is because it it wants me to go for like well it thinks that I'm gonna go for thunder or or any like electric move that it carries or that I carry and unfortunately because there are two Pokemon on the field Okay. Stone Edge moment. I thought it was gonna I thought it was gonna pick Aqua Tail or something. Alright, that's fine. Um because now uh I, I I knocked this thing out for free. I'm just gonna go for, go for follow me. Uses its move. In the in the event some silly foolishness happens, um, Kyogre does not get hit this turn. So. By water spout. All right. So you you could flow this flow chart this fight a bit more. Um, it's just kind of hard to flow chart uh, two different leads. You know what I mean? Um, so. But they're usually straightforward. Yeah, just routing runs like this is just so much work. Mm -hmm. Let's see, we get Aerodactyl. Oh, speaking of Togekiss. All right, so Helping Hand is basically Helping Hand Water Spot is just so broken, and I'm gonna just use it anyway because Aer like Aerodactyl is yeah. <laughs> I I think I barely outspeed it too. Oh yeah, I mentioned this earlier. The Kyogre that I'm using is one is one that I caught in Emerald as a kid. I didn't even know about RNG manipulation. I just straight up caught a timid nature Kyogre with like 27 special attack IVs and uh, I think nine speed IVs too. Like without the choice card, this thing is slow. <laughs> Even though Kyogre has a base 90 speed. I can't believe you didn't play through Gen 3 again. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. I Hold on, let me choose my team. Uh, follow Gengar. Yeah, oh, so, so funny story. That Mewtwo earlier, I, I had to play through my Fire Red again because um, silly me um, caught the Mewtwo already and uh, didn't realize that the Mewtwo th uh, that I had was bad. It didn't work. So I, I, I needed a Mewtwo that was gonna outspeed both Persian and Alakazam and had just enough power to um, one-shot Pokemon with self-destruct. And lo and behold, I, I, I got the team that I wanted. It's time to think about a cautious battle strategy. All right, I'm gonna just go for helping hand here. So Septile is going to live the water spell unless I get a crit. Um, so the way the way that this team works is that um, Septile goes for Worry Seed on Reggie Gigas to get rid of its Slow Star, um, because you know obviously with Slow Star Reggie Reggie Gigas has five turns to get it get its act together, um, and by getting rid of Slow Star and of course Truant, um, you you basically have very very strong normal types. But thankfully, it's not going to matter as much. But Septile carries um, a bright powder, so I'm going to have to go for follow me. 
so that my water spot doesn't miss and that I don't eat a leaf blade for free. Not a leaf blade, uh, an energy ball for free. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, this is the only Pokemon Stadium game with the physical and special split. I, I think I think that's like the, I, I think that's the that's the most important. Um, wait, did I say with or without? This is the this is the first stadium game. I think you said with. Okay, yeah, with. Okay, nice. Yeah, um, it, it's very important too because uh, Gens one through three had that physical special split or didn't have that split, and um, a lot of Pokemon were broken in that game. But the the fact that the split even happened made so much uh, made so much more Pokemon uh, usable, in my opinion, and also nerfed some some pretty broken ones as well. Yeah, speaking of Pokemon though, uh, for those of you in chat who enjoy Pokemon runs, uh, tomorrow when we live with, I'm pretty sure it's like a Gen 3 showcase since it's some Gen 3 anniversary this year, um, there's going to be Fire Red, Leaf Green, and also Emerald, I'm pretty sure. So, you should oh, yeah. check it out tomorrow, it's going to be fun. Happy 10 years to Pokemon Fire Red, Leaf Green. <laughs> uh, 10 years, 20 years, I'm, I'm wow. It doesn't feel like that long ago. It doesn't feel that long ago. Yeah. There we go. I figured it out. It's, it's Fire Red Leaf Green in 20 years, yeah. I figured it out. All, all on my own. <laughs> but if you if you want to watch more Hotfix, because you missed you missed some stuff live, you can go to youtube.com slash games don't quick and mm -hmm. subscribe there. All the VODs are there. Alright, so. Um this is the last time we get to fight Kruger, and okay, this is good. This this is such a good lead. So, the reason why um, I have Polyrath on the field here is because um, so er earlier I mentioned that uh, the AI the, the AI doesn't check abilities. This is a prime example. Um, so the Azelf here has the move Imprison, which pre prevents you from using Protect and basically protect explosion in prison and endure so um you basically um the, the 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 ai wants to make sure it it can use explosion but uh if we if we have the damp and of course kyogre we just win okay Latius is good radius is, is also good okay so Regis might pick Explosion this turn. So wh what I'm gonna do though is knock out uh, Latias because it's it's gonna go for Psychic on uh, Polyrath. So I need to crit a Regis in order to. Uh... Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Regis has like base 200 special defense, so it just didn't matter. <laughs> Focus Sash, and then we go for Payback, and it's goodbye to Latias. Oh wait, that's a range. Oh, that that's so unfortunate. But T, look at that. It, it, it tried to go for explosion. <laughs> see, see, see what I mean by by the AI just not checking abilities. And besides, it, it made a stupid play because it would have not it would have knocked out his teammate for doing that. So the the AI is supposed to be smart, but I guess not not in this instance. I think the reason why it pissed Explosion is because Ice Beam. I, I want. I can't remember if it carries T Bolt, um, but I like. I, I resist. I resist Ice Beam. Um, explosion is like it, it's like its best move essentially. Um, yeah, I need. I need to double check. See if the Rage Ice has uh, Thunderbolt, but but again, it doesn't matter. I didn't even realize it could learn Thunderbolt. I know so little. <laughs> Gen three Pokemon. Yeah, it's it's kind of surprising um, what what moves that's that some of these Pokemon uh, like uh, can learn. Like, I didn't even know that Polyrath could could learn Payback. Um, so usually Payback knocks out Latias, but I think because I low rolled a uh, Water Spout, um, Payback Payback just didn't uh, knock it out. But it's okay. All right, so so we have one more uh, set to do. It, it almost feels like I just started my run, <laughs> you know. All right, whoop, there we go.
Alright, so we get to see the Groudon and Shiftry team, but this is going to be a little bit different. Okay. So, un so this may be the only time where, where I will not use um, one Pokemon on my team, and that Pokemon is Typhlosion. <laughs> I want to say I used um, every single Pokemon um, in the run. Stargazer Coliseum, um, Master I might have missed one. What kind of but, battle can we expect from the challenger this time? Don't quote me on that. Anyway, so this this fight is actually fine because um, I can I can I can, I can basically keep Shiftry. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go for Eruption, and I'm gonna go for oh I have to go for Fake Out. So we're, we're gonna Fake Out uh, Articuno here. The battle begins. The blue corner makes the first attack. Bop. It hits. I believe Articuno outspeeds me. Articuno yes. Yeah. Okay. That, that, that was actually important because Articuno carries a Blizzard. So. Ugh. If I had misclicked there, I probably would have uh, ha had to reset the fight there because because um, Blizzard would knock out uh, Groudon um, from, from from that amount of health. So. I did not get the range on either of them. That's oh well. You know what? It's Typhlosion time. <laughs> oh baby, I don't know. You, you have one of these now. Yeah. So oh, you know what? I I kind of made a misplay there. I could have went for Explosion. I don't know why I didn't go for Explosion there. Um, I. I, I was not I was not looking at my notes honestly. Well, I looked at my team, but I I completely forgot um, uh, using explosion there, so it's okay. Well, well, the good thing is I I just get to spam. Uh, you, I, I, I I get to use typhlosion. I'm totally thrown for content. <laughs> Double your option. Oh, Frost Last. All right, here we go. All right, just the eruption again. Both sides still have a chance to win. Oh, yeah, I'm locked into eruption, by the way. Starts to attack. It missed. Yeah. You hate to see it. Me when I'm seeing it. Well, okay. Let's just hope that that Blizzard misses uh, under the sun, because because it, it, it's a 50-50. Oh, okay. It, it, it went for double team. That's fine. It's road. Oh, great! This this frost lies is no. It, it didn't even matter. Nice Groudon. We're so back. The absolute go. Taken down by an intense blow. But it's yeah, left. but but yeah. What I should have done was was go for explosion. I don't know why I went for fake out. Honestly, like I don't know. It, it's okay though. Oh, this this one is actually I. I, I, I know how to play this one. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I actually I need to switch. Actually, no, I don't. I don't, I don't need to switch. It has ice body, so what I'm gonna do is just go for sunny day again. I think two eruptions should knock it out um, because I'm locked into it. Oh wait, I knocked it out. Oh, I, okay, okay. I know why. Um, one, it's a range, and two, um, uh, the sun. <laughs> Stab, same type of attack bonus, plus the sun, and uh, and plus one on one. That's that's why I I one shot the wall rain. So okay, good to know. <laughs> All right. Last choice, Gengar. We'll just use Typhlosion. Even though we, even though we're not going to need Typhlosion for this fight, I'll just choose. We just choose him anyway for menuing purposes. So this, um, this, this team uses uh, basically the first few teams are our weather teams. Um, sun teams are, are kind of not that great to build in Gen Four, in my opinion. So I guess that's why the AI decided to go with that. So this is actually good. 
Um, so the reason why I don't have Kyogre, um, you know, holding like the the Lacking Tail or the Iron Ball, um, is because I want I want I want to initiate uh, Kill AI because I because usually the ty the, the Tyranitar goes for a Protect, um, but because it sees Gengar and it can knock it out with Crunch, I want for it to. Uh, basically not protect and uh, I get a free two-turn fight, barring uh, Omastar. All right. But then again, my Gengar has a focus hat, so it kind of doesn't really matter. Okay, Armaldo has a quick claw. Okay, this is this is perfect. So Armaldo may click uh, Sandstorm. So in the event that it clicks Sandstorm, I'm, I'm going to go for it again. Yep. Predicted. Get red. It started to rain. Nice. All righty. So, what what used to be like a seven turn fight turned into a two turn fight. What once I uh, figured out about um, Blastoise getting Water Spot as an egg move in Gen 4. I think it's not Harko Soul Silver only. The results are in. It's a total victory for the blue corner. Okay. Um, if my memory serves, this Gengar has a uh, Sunny Day, right? Uh, did y'all see Sunny Day on the Gengar? I, I, I hope you did. Because <laughs> if not, I had to go for a backup strat for the last fight. Which means I didn't- I don't know anything about anything. Oh, okay, that's fine. I, I, you're, you're taking the wheel. I'm just in awe. <laughs> All right, all right, that's fair, that's fair. I, I, I just wanted to make sure that my Gengar did carry um, Sunny Day, because if it didn't, like I said, I, I have to go for a backup strat. Which probably would be like a really dumb idea, but you know, it's okay. Let's see, what do you... Okay, Marowak is fine. Okay, nice, this one, does, this one did have Sunny Day, which means I saved, good. <laughs> And now the battle begins. So the reason why I I, I went for Sunny or I went for Rain Dance there is because I'm gonna send in Blastoise and then just straight up go for um uh, Water Spout. <laughs> because I I may get a uh, Slow King and Rhyperior. So so this so this is the Trick Room lead. Or, sorry, this is a trick room team where Slowbro is always lead and Slow King is always in pocket. Oh yeah, and the reason why my Blastoise is named Six is because I accidentally bred a six IV Blastoise when, when, when building this team. So like like no RNG manipulation. I just I just got insanely lucky. All right, so Snorlax is just gonna be Snorlax, and so I'm just I would just. Yeah, do that. So, so, so we burn a Citrus Berry, and we just go for Water Spout. By water spout. Yeah, this doesn't knock out Starlax because uh, of its HP and special defense stat, so it didn't really matter. I think it picks Crunch anyway, right? Yeah, it picks Crunch. Really this is, why is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bro bro gets up just just to take a bite out of me, but it's okay. I think it I think it, it lives a thunder though. I'll be mad surprised if, if if I get a kill with this. Bro gets up just to do a run on GDQ Hotfix. That's true. That that straw that straw X was actually me. Well if he's SMB, he got up to a run on GDQ Hotfix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Blastoise gets Water Spout through an Egg Move and Harko and Soul Silver only. And it also gets Fake Out, but I think that's uh, that was an Egg Move already. All right, so this is the last fight in, in the game, and you may notice that he ha he has a Kyogre of his own. Um, but so this Quillfish is kind of important. I'm trying to figure out how, I'm trying to figure out how I can how I can come up with this. Okay, so the the Quillfish has Swift Swim, and this Kyogre has a 
has a 31 IV uh, speed, holding a choice card to in nature. Um, who wins? Do do I does my quilfish go first? Or do I just lose the fight completely and I have to uh, question everything? I think you lose the fight completely and question everything. Oh, that, that, that's so unfortunate. I can't believe I went all this far just to lose. Psych. The funny thing is, this this outspeeds Kyogre by one point. <laughs> one. <laughs> um, I think th this, this is this is an, an adamant quillfish holding a choice band. And under and, and under the rain, like I said, I outspeed uh first grab Kyogre by one point. Shocker, isn't it? Alright. So I so the reason why I clicked Sunny Day is because I'm gonna be sending a shift tree next to basically end off the entire run. Okay, that's good. I got Mewtwo and Palkia. So the the optimal fight is Palkia, Latios, Mewtwo, um, uh, Kyogre, or you know, in that order. Well, not really in that order, but you get what I mean. Well, both corners. All right. So I'm not gonna say anything yet because you never know. Palkia might live the explosion by accident. Okay. Did we get it? Nice. All right, so time is going to be upon fade out. So I guess now now's going to be like the perfect moment for shoutouts. <laughs> <laughs> the point is great. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for um, supporting GDQ, the Black Speed Runners, literally just everybody here. Um, shout out to you, Limey, for asking me to do this. Of course. Um, uh, always shout out to Ray because Ray is awesome. <laughs> um, We're fans of the, of the producers on this stream. Yes, yes. Um, big Ray fan, big Limey fan, big Luna fan, big everybody fan. Um, I stream daily, and time is going to be... Now, time. <laughs> GG's. Thank you for the GG's. Um, as I was saying, I stream almost every day because I, I, I say this, graduate school is not going to pay itself, and I think content creation is just fun and uh black speed running is very important or black content creation is very important and y'all should y'all should support especially during this month <laughs> so yeah, especially during black history month it just started this this is the third day we have 29 days in total this year yippee <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah we got an extra day <laughs> that's what i like to say we got we got an extra day for the month and we have two extra days of, U of ubaf so it works out <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly um but yeah, I speedrun. Um, I'm trying to. I'm, I am trying to get into more Pokemon speedrunning, but that's gonna take some time. But right now, I'm focused on Mario Kart stuff, and later on, I'll be moving back to some Monkey Ball um, content because I have so many ideas that I want to do with uh, Monkey Ball. I'm just so focused on Mario Kart at the moment that um, I just I, I just need to put put those ideas on the back burner at the moment. So um, if you if you like chill vibes. Long streams occasionally. Um, I'm, I'm definitely your guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, again, th th thank you all so much for um, watching this run. Support the rest of the show. And thank you, Lemmy, again for asking me to do this. And uh, I think that's it for me. Yeah, before we completely sign out, I just want to give a quick shout out to UBAF. I'm going to be doing this after every run because this is so important. Mm -hmm. uh, UBAF will be live from February 16th through the 19th so that's four days of black speed runs and black joy use exclamation ubf in chat for more information about that and we're gonna be going to a quick break and we're gonna be back with more speed runs in just a few minutes goodbye everyone goodbye forever <laughs> <laughs> hey yo so that's introduced i'm ryan ford uh <laughs> and yeah here for uh pieces rpg i mean uh peas well limey's rpgs 
Oh, oh, oh no, everything's terrible. Oh no, I was muted. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll redo, yeah, redo. Yeah, redo, redo, reset, reset, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to GD Graphics with uh, my RPG show, I guess. It doesn't get better saying it after the third time I'm saying it, but yeah, we have SMRPG here with Ryan Ford. If you'd like to introduce yourself <laughs> for the first time this time. <laughs> for the first time again. <laughs> so hey, hey y'all, I'm Ryan Ford. Um, as introduced, so uh, yeah, I'll be running Mario RPG for uh, Limey's RPG show, I guess. <laughs> So, <laughs> alright, admittedly I'm pretty rusty at this game, but um, yeah, I guess since we're doing a showcase, I can just start from uh, file start instead of power on. Alright, so um, yeah, I'll count down for the timer from three. Uh, three, two, one, go. Good luck. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm... <laughs> Definitely pretty rusty. I uh, was supposed to grind some practice last night, but I just got lazy and didn't stream at all. So <laughs> we'll see how this goes. <laughs> I did practice the day before that, so uh, hopefully that's enough to carry me. <laughs> everything, everything is fine. You you run this game for so long. Truly, like all all the muscle memory and real memory is there. Yeah, exactly. It's just mostly if I. I think at this point, as long as I don't forget menus, then it should be fine. But uh, super jumps were pretty on point in practice, and I dropped the very first one, and then didn't drop drop it the rest of that day. So feeling confident about it. <laughs> but yeah, so going to be starting off uh, attempting a RNG manipulation at the start once I gain control of Mario. So uh, doing kind of slightly specific movement, and. Uh, you try to make these uh, Terrapin enemies attack only once. Um, trying to use visual cues for... Oh, never mind. I messed it up already. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so... Basically, uh, how they're kind of standing idle when they're swinging their arms back and forth. Um, kind of looking at that to use as a uh, visual cue for when to attack them. And, um, yeah, I got... Uh, I guess on the first turn after I messed it up, I got pretty bad RNG since all three of them attacked me. So um, I think it loses roughly two seconds per extra attack that you get hit by. So um, the easier variation of the manip, uh, you only get attacked uh, once, I think, on the third turn. And um, there is a uh, zero attack manip, but uh, yeah, I think even like the world record run doesn't go for it. And um, you do have to wait like a little longer, so I think it'll the zero zero punch. Uh, I think only saves like one second instead of two, because yeah, you have to like wait longer in part of the minute. Hey, someone noticed the uh, <laughs> Toronto Raptors hat. <laughs> Sweet, big Toronto fan. Yeah, Not um, specifically for basketball, <laughs> but I I'm a hockey fan. <laughs> you like the Maple Leafs? Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> God, they've uh, they've ever won the Stanley Cup since like. Hey, you don't have to. Hey, too soon, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> or wait, sixties, I think. My bad. Yeah, too yeah. soon, too soon, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, they'll they'll get theirs one it, day. Th this year's their year. I'm telling you. <laughs> Here's hoping. <laughs> yeah, uh, I just kind of lately since I got a haircut like a bit over a month ago, then um, yeah, I kind of just been like cycling through a bunch of different hats um, since I haven't worn a hat in like <laughs> more than a year, I think. So, yeah, I had some other like limited edition Raptors hat for the other hot fix show I ran yesterday, so <laughs> it's kind of in the rotation. <laughs> yeah. Ryan Ryan Ford Ford is a Hotfix regular. <laughs> yeah, exactly. he's good at what he does. <laughs> been, been, been probably. I assume it has to be at least a dozen Hotfixes by this point, from like 2022 till now. If you don't count hosting, I'm pretty sure. Do you have more runs on Hotfix than I do? <laughs> and oh I yeah, have like a handful as well. Shoot. 
Which means that you're a master of running a lot of games, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm good at what I do. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Even though I'm pretty sure most of my runs are just about keep all, but <laughs> we don't have to talk about that. Oh, that's still solid. But I assume it's like multiple monkey ball games. Though, right? Uh, I've done two of two, two of touch and roll, a 3D, and then I've done some other random games. Nice. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, I think the majority of the hotfix shows I've done has been like either this game, uh, Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening DX, and like Donkey Kong Country 2. I've been Probably, I think by far the most uh, that I've run, run on shows. Yeah, that's fair. And yeah, it's been like Mega Man X3 a couple times, but um, or maybe only once, once or twice, I think. Yeah, I know <laughs> that yeah. you've been you've been doing the black events here for a bit. Yep, yep. Yeah, like UBAF coming up, then uh, yeah, running uh, X3 there. So <laughs> I got to uh, de rust for that at some point too. Yeah, I should look at the. At the UBF schedule was very good. Exclamation yep. UBF. And twice the length? Yeah. Sick. Also, uh at least compared to last year. If, if chat hasn't seen the schedule, I'm I have two runs on it myself. I'm on twice. <laughs> hey. Actually, actually, Wait, what are you running? I'm running uh Chess Explosion. I think you've seen that. I think you've seen me play that before. Um Yep. Chess Blossom on day one as a third run, and then closing out all of UBAF with Turbo Overkill, which is just this crazy movement shooter. <laughs> oh, that's dope. All right, I gotta look it up. <laughs> I can just, I can just <laughs> show like you another time. I can show you, like, tomorrow. <laughs> sure. But yeah, uh, the schedule's very good. Has a lot of runners, has a lot of variety in games. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I was trying to read this question about Persona 5 gets smoke cat. Admittedly, I don't know what that is since I've never played a Persona game. I've honestly never either. I, I keep saying I will, and then I remember that it's a JRPG, and then I am like, we'll I have to devote a lot of time to this, so I won't right now. It seems like 5 is really long, particularly, because uh, the people I've seen uh, streaming a uh, uh, blind playthroughs of it, usually they've been over the course of like at least a month, if not more, like almost daily. Yeah, it, 5 is a long game. Uh, if I play one, it'd probably be 4 or 3, but... Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I played... Oh, actually, I played Persona 4 Arena, but, you know, it's like a fighting game and not... You know a, what? That counts, that counts. RPG. <laughs> I gotta try to not die here since I uh, mistimed the block just now. Oh, wow. I missed it twice. That's crazy. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to go overestimate for sure because uh, I didn't save. <laughs> so welcome back to the Limey's RPG show, I guess. <laughs> uh, we, wow, that's we have, crazy. We have, we have Ryan Ford here. <laughs> <laughs> you like to I'm so yourself. sorry that happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm Ryan Ford again. Um, for the first time. <laughs> Running here again for the first time, running for Limey's RPG show, I guess. Oh, that's crazy. I just did not get an input at all, both times. Not even a half time block. But yeah, uh, this time I'll remember to save. Cause, uh, usually for marathons, I do safety save uh, right before, but then I just completely forgot to do it this time. And what, what, what do you know? The one time I forget is the time I get like Omega Punch for it. So. <laughs> We, yeah. we never get punished here on GDQ Hotfix. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that's probably... God, how much time did that lose? Like... Mm, seven minutes, maybe? It's it's fine, it's fine. Oh, I also just messed up its minute entirely. <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> oh, that's wild. All right, all right, all right. Um... Yeah, I guess usually after that fight, I'm usually about a bit under seven and a half minutes. So. But since I failed the minip at the start, yeah, it probably would have been about seven and a half by the end of the fight. So I think I lost roughly about that much time. Yeah, I forget this game has like minips in it. Just because like <laughs> it doesn't strike me as the, as the type of game that would have minips. But then like I remember Earthdown has minips as well. Yeah, those ones are like long and complicated though. Yeah. 
uh, comparatively, but there, there's for this run. Uh, yeah, we have that small manip at the start, and then there's uh, one other manip for a uh, later boss boss fight around yeah, about the one hour mark, or like slightly under an hour. So then I figured uh, it probably probably would have been a good time to take a break. Would be uh, after that boss trying to show that manip. But uh, we'll we'll see now since <laughs> since I got sent back like seven minutes. So. All right, this time I'll remember to save. <laughs> but yeah, I guess uh, that's the benefit for um, the Switch remake is that there's uh, like auto saves, so usually it's like less punishing to make a mistake like that. Oh, I didn't know that the Switch version had auto saves. I haven't played it yet though. Yeah, there's like a yeah, kind of like a quick save, like auto save thing for it. So yeah, usually if in runs, it's like if you die to a boss, you can just like try again, basically. Like try again, like right at the boss. So it's a uh, nice that way for like marathons and stuff like that. <laughs> Timer seems to have started early. I know, right? <laughs> the first time was just a showcase. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were we were warming up. Exactly. Hmm, any percent. Is it a low level run? Uh I'd say no, because the max level is 30 for all your characters, and like by the time you get to the end of the game, like Mario will hit like level 16, so it's like You know, it's like low relatively, but it's not that low. So I think I think usually if people are like when I've seen people do blind playthroughs and kind of like rush through the game without uh, trying to fight like every single encounter in the overworld and stuff like that, then um, I've seen people hit like level 20, 21 generally, like casually. So, so I, I'd say no, personally. And then low, low, the low level run, like low percent is, uh, well, Mario's at like level three for that run. So. Level three? Yeah, you have to like purposely uh, prevent yourself from leveling up after uh, boss fights by doing um. So there's like this uh, lucky mini game. Yeah. Uh, where you bet on uh. There's like three eggs, and then uh, one has a Yoshi, one has a bird, and the other has like this like black blob thing. And uh, we save if it. If you, no, nah, I'm gonna save after this uh, next cutscene. Okay. Okay. I yeah, forgot there was have to a cutscene after. <laughs> but thanks for the reminder, though, because <laughs> if I actually happen to forget, though, <laughs> you know, that'd be pretty funny. <laughs> nah, I remember this time, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't know too much about SMRPG. I played, like, the first little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. I played to the part uh, where you were warming up, and then I didn't play much after that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's where 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 I died is like where um the very first time I played through or tried to uh, started playing through the game when I was like eight years old was pretty much where I left off. I like <laughs> died in that same fight and then uh I didn't own the game, so the friend that let me borrow it uh, took it back afterwards. So I uh, just never got to play it again until hmm, I forget how long, like maybe when I was like twelve or so afterwards. But yeah, the uh, the lucky mini game. Yeah, so you get double exp if you win the lucky mini game, and then uh, if you lose it, then you get uh, zero. Or well, sorry, it's like when you start when you activate the lucky game, the fifty fifty chance whether it'll ask if you want to double the coins that you won from that battle or to double your try to double your exp, and then uh, so you save in in low level, and then you keep resetting. Um, Versus, well, whenever you beat a boss until you get the double your EXP, and then you try to lose the lucky minigame on purpose so that you get zero EXP. Then, with that, you can uh, prevent Mario, or well, prevent everyone from leveling up. So, Mario stays at like level three through the whole run uh, for low level. So, that run is really long, and I guess in like non task setting, it's like, you know, it can go like upwards of like upwards of 10 hours, but. Oh geez, that's um, that's quite a long run. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. I think world records like uh, did they get sub seven yet? I actually forget. All right, so this mini boss was attack um, hammer time. Yeah, so this is the the attack you don't want to get. It's a one in three chance uh, whether he'll uh, do hammer time or not, and then yeah, two thirds chance that he'll just do a regular physical like this. So um. All right, this time I sur survived the fight We're since so I back. didn't <laughs> did it this time too. <laughs> two hammer times. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, so the 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 toad that I was talking to for a while, like right after I saved, um, he asks if you want a tutorial on um, healing, on how to use your items, and then another tutorial on how to do timed hits. So, whenever you attack an enemy, um. You press uh, one of the face buttons, like A, B, uh, X, or Y, and um, and uh, if you get a full timed hit, uh, most of your attacks uh, do double damage, and um, a lot of them are generally about a fi five frame window uh, for most of them. And then, um, all right, one second, one second. <laughs> yeah, maybe even trying start. to remember what to buy yeah. in the shop. <laughs> Because, yeah, if you're a bit rusty, like, ja Japanese, uh, remembering Japanese text also can, like, when you're not a Japanese speaker, can be, like, one of the first things to go. <laughs> okay, but yeah, so, for timed hits, so, uh, it's, like, roughly about a five-frame window for most timed hits. And, uh, if you're early or late in that timing, um, outside of the full timed hit, but you're about within seven frames, like, outside of the perfect timed hit window, you'll get a half timed hit so that will increase your damage by uh only 50 percent instead of double and then the same thing goes for blocking hits so if you for physical for almost all physical attacks you if you get a full timed block you take zero damage and if you get a half timed block you take half of the damage that the attack uh, would normally do and um the exceptions are Mario's jump. When you get a full timed hit, it increases by 1.5 times. And then uh, half timed for his jump uh, only increases by uh, a quarter. So, not sure why that one's uh, different specifically. I think Mallow's shocker might also be the same, but I could be wrong about that. I'm just taking you at your word. I, I'm trusting you with my life. <laughs> All right, I got you. <laughs> Even though I'm being <laughs> unconfident on some of this, <laughs> I, and, um, I think that you're just yeah. correct. And if you're wrong at some trivia where they're asking about <laughs> SMRPG frame data, if I'm wrong, <laughs> listen. <laughs> if you're wrong about Malo Shocker, then uh, you can you can blame me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You time your spell button for defense as well. Um, for blocking spells, no, not in this game. In um, the remake, you can for uh, single target spells, but in the original, you can't. So stuff like um, bolts or like fireball from enemies and stuff like that. But then, yeah, stuff like AOE spells like flame wall or like static static E and stuff like that. Uh, you can't uh, can't block those in either game. So yeah, also, yeah, just going through text at this point, it's a lot of early game text, but um, yeah, the community did allow using the turbo, uh, using turbo for uh, like with like third party controllers. So using the SNES uh, ASCII pad with uh, turbo for the A button. So, uh, this game has a lot of, like, anti-turbo mechanics, so you can't, um, mash buttons to get, like, timed hits at all, because, um, if you press, if you try to mash the button, it just, like, locks you out of doing, uh, timed hits or timed blocks, so, um, so turbo doesn't really help you for anything outside of, like, mashing through text, so it's just a nice quality of life thing. And also, uh, you could potentially, like, kill your run if you forget to, like... <laughs> Uh, what's it called? You you could possibly kill your run if you forget to like uh time or to uh, turn off your turbo 
basically. Because then if you get locked out of a time hit or something, then uh, it could be really punishing. So I'm going to safety save here because uh, there's a chance I could die to Croco. Um, unfortunately, got into that encounter in a weird way and uh, got unlucky that the runaway didn't work. Because um, every time that you try to run from a battle, it's just... Uh, whoops, just 50-50, uh, whether you'll run or not, so... Yeah, I got it third try at that point. And yeah, since uh, I didn't get it within two turns and all the enemies attacked me, so kind of wasted wasted more time. And additionally, Mallow is not at full health, so I'm not sure if that'll matter or not. I think you're fine. Yeah, there's a, like a healing mushroom like right before the, the boss fight, so should be chill. So I'm gonna try this uh, two-frame trick called um, Doze Jump. All right, I got it, nice. So um, you have two frames to jump off that dog um, before uh, before he dies from your star when you jump on his head. And um, yeah, you can get that chest up there, which has a uh, flower tab, which increases your uh, max uh, flower points, which is your mana for this game. Uh, increases it by one permanently, so um, with that I can uh, possibly do like a slightly more optimal strat on uh, this boss, uh, Croco, coming up. Uh, I might not be able to do the optimal strat even, depending on the RNG I get in the first uh, like three turns of the fight. So, may or may not save a small amount of time. Yeah, so Croco here, so you have to uh, touch him from behind three times, and, uh, and then he'll uh, finally give up running away because he stole uh, Mallow's frog coin. And yeah, we're trying to get it back, so hence why Mallow joined the party. And um, so for pretty much this entire fight, I'm going to be trying to use jump the whole time. And uh, ideally, would like to get full timed hits uh, the whole time as well. So for turn three, uh, since I won't have enough uh, FP, the rest of the fight I gotta use this honey syrup, and then uh, I need to use a second one as well. So since Mallow's still alive on turn four, and I got that uh, two frame jump, then I can use uh, the second honey syrup on this turn. And um, it would have been optimal to let Mallow die, but Rocco at just anyway, so that's fine. Because uh, at this point, since Mario's still at full health, um, I should be, like, almost ready to survive this fight as long as I don't, like, mistime my jumps. So it's a pretty safe fight. If Mario uh, got hit by a bomb, he would survive with 1 HP. So then, um, I would, uh, I would have tried to not let Mallow die on that turn where he attacked him anyway. But since he was at full health, I knew that it would have been safe either way. Alright, so... This fight's down. Uh, pretty solid RNG overall. Got hit by one bomb, which is... Uh, each turn he has a 1 in 3 chance to throw a bomb, and then 2 thirds chance to uh, do a physical. So Yeah, you just hope that he does like only physicals. And uh, ideally, maybe kills Mallow on turn 4 as well. Um, it saves, I think, about 2 seconds per turn if, uh, Mallow, if Mallow's dead, because you don't have to choose... Uh, to defend with him each turn, so he'll just uh, skip his skip his turn. He's like the battle system for this game, just kind of like a. Uh, is it like a predecessor to just like Paper Mario? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like not one to one, but it's like pretty close because like the timed hits and stuff. Yeah, I was like noticing like there's timed hits. There's like some things that are pretty similar, like turn order stuff seems similar, but I I didn't know that like the, the extent of it. Yeah, so yeah, the time the time hit mechanics is definitely. Uh, I'm pretty sure for Paper Mario is inspired by this game. All right, so I took that a little slow, but uh, so that trick is called Max Skip. So this boss, ah, yeah. So I guess in the SNES version, its name is Mac. They changed it to. Oh my god, I forgot what they changed his name to in the the, the remake. Now, uh, there's some kind of pun, <laughs> but I don't remember the name. <laughs> oh, I'm guessing the game volume's a bit high as well. Looking at chat. But if you need me to turn down anything uh, for, for tech, just let me know. But if y'all got it on your end, then uh, 
Thank you. But yeah, so Max Skip, so you can um, kind of jump over the uh, cutscene trigger to that, that triggers that boss fight. And um, yeah, it saves a ton of time, so I uh, safety save. Clay Morton, that's it, yeah. It's like a Clay Morton, I guess. It's like the, the pun, right? Yeah, Clay Morton for the remake. There you go. I'm still calling him Mech. <laughs> Mac is like a syllable, so it's uh, it's better. Exactly, exactly. We're just learning <laughs> the English language right now. Yep, yep, yep. Well, running in Japanese, but... Well, we're, we're but speaking I'm, the, the Japanese language. There we go. Yeah, but I'm, a, I'm, I'm an English speaker, so <laughs> we're just going by that. <laughs> So yeah, if I had missed that uh, two-frame jump for that extra flower tab, there was another flower tab to the left in the chest, which uh, loses about three seconds on this segment to get it, but it's a uh, nice backup for if you don't uh, hit that trick. So let's grab this star to um, gain some more EXP. So in the sewers here, I think you get two EXP per kill. So, um, it's gonna help uh, Mario ideally hit level five before a, uh, another boss later, uh, way later in the run. So, assuming that I don't mess up uh, EXP later on. All right, so Balom, uh should be a safe fight, but <laughs> now you never know. So, <laughs> I definitely died to like one of the freest bosses already. So, <laughs> for the speed run anyway. Alright, so first, this first attack is always scripted to go for Mallow. And then uh, turn two, he has a 1 in 3 chance to use uh, Sleep Sauce. So, he might put one person to sleep. Alright, he did the physical, which is uh, ideal for what you want. So, it's a uh, two-thirds chance that he'll just do a physical. But, uh, uh, if he puts someone to sleep, it usually loses, like, upwards of 12 seconds. So... I think if he puts Mallow to sleep, it loses more time than if he puts Mario to sleep, if I recall correctly. But fortunately, he didn't do that. So now this scripted turn as well. So after you do a certain amount of damage to him, he'll use uh, Scrow Funk, which uh, turns Mario into a Scarecrow, which uh, disables your... Oh, shoot. What buttons is it? Oh, your attack and your items. So you can't use attacks or items, basically. So you can only defend or use spells as a Scarecrow. So for the rest of this fight, uh, almost every turn will be unscripted, aside from, I think the second last hit, if Mallow's still alive, he'll uh, eat Mallow, if Mallow's not status. So, uh, since he's probably going to get Scarecrowed, then he won't eat him. So, for the rest of the fight, you just hope that he does physicals, because it's uh, significantly faster than uh, him casting either spell. Um, also... Fortunately, since he's using Sleep Sauce right here on Mario, um, since Mario's a Scarecrow, he can't get uh, put to sleep while he has the Scarecrow status. So, uh, so yeah, fortunately, he didn't like waste too much time by because if he had put Mario to sleep on the final turn, that would waste a lot of time, which can happen in this battle because um, normally if oh I almost forgot oh yeah it's this okay <laughs> yeah normally if he uh. If he didn't do the second Scrow Funk on Mario in a row, then uh, Mario's Scarecrow status would have lasted only three turns and ran out on the final turn. So, if he had put Mario to sleep there, I wouldn't have been able to do the final hit on the final turn. So, it would have just wasted more time. So, I did get a bit lucky in that way. Yeah, I like hearing about like different like fight flow charts and stuff in different games because yeah, right? it, they're, they're so different for every game. Like in the last run, uh, there's just like, oh yeah, if I hit this damage range, then I don't have to do this, which would lead to me doing this instead, and then I'll do this to like save a turn, right? But uh, exactly, like in this game is like so different. <laughs> it's like yep, so yep. interesting to hear about. Yeah, because like stuff like uh, Mallow could have gotten eat eaten a second time, and then uh, if he did, that would have guaranteed um, that. Uh, Balom would have done a physical attack on the last turn on Mario, but because Mallow got turned into a Scarecrow, then he didn't eat him, which could have potentially left a chance for Mario to get put to sleep on the last turn. And yeah, it's like all that stuff that like varies depending on what happens. And then 
you know, if Mario got put to sleep, I would have to like try to use a Able Juice, which uh, cures any status on one on one target. But then, if Malo was still a Scarecrow, then I wouldn't be able to use items. So then, I'd have to like wait and hope that like Below maybe does a physical attack, which uh, on Mario, which would wake him up from his sleep. So yeah, there's like all this like flowchart of like depending on like what happens then. You know, you have like this range of options, basically. Yeah, I, I just love hearing about it. I'm just, I'm just a nerd for RPG runs. <laughs> That's good. So normally there's like notes on um, there's a uh, speedrun wiki for this game, but uh, I was trying to pull up the notes so that I can remember some stuff in the late game, but uh, the wiki's been down for uh at least the last three days from what I've seen. Oh so. no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any notes, but uh. Should be fine. Uh, if anything, like near the end game, I'll just probably wing it. If, if uh, worst case scenario, like a lot, a lot of the latter half of the run is generally pretty safe. Uh, like I shouldn't die, aside from like me, the last boss. But um, yeah, so I just yeah, said this has like a safe end game because a lot of RPG runs just don't. Yeah, exactly. Because there is, like, a lot of variance with, like, RNG and stuff, but then, fortunately, since there's, uh, save blocks everywhere and it takes, like, four seconds to save, then, uh, that helps for marathon safety, and then, um, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, like, nice backup strats for, for fights and, like, backup routing, so, uh, there, there's a lot of stuff that helps, like, make this a lot safer to at least just finish the run at a reasonable amount of time. These cutscenes, like watching them without like English dialogue, is like so strange because I just don't know what's happening. <laughs> oh my gosh! With my uh, being a speedrun degen, like <laughs> so, sometimes I forget uh, forget lore for the games I run. Like like on yesterday's show when I was running a uh, quest RPG, then um, <laughs> I was like I don't remember like any of the stories. So. Yeah, you don't, you don't just do kept it, but the story. Yeah. You don't need to know about yeah, that. Not, not speedrunning for the story. For this game, I, I remember most of it like decently well. But, like, I don't know. It would be a very long ramble if I were to talk about the story. <laughs> yeah, that's the same thing with me in Super Monkey Ball 2, where mm -hmm. I know the entire story, but all of the cutscenes for story mode is actually longer than the current world record. It's actually longer than the current, like, top 10. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, because I guess, yeah, Monkey Ball is like a pretty short run, right? Yeah, uh, story mode, I think the record right now is uh, either a high 26 or a low 27. And all the cutscenes back to back uh, <laughs> is like 30 minutes. <laughs> there, there's a lot of plot. There's a lot Holy. of leaked plot in air quotes. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah, so like... <laughs> have, so yeah, it's like double, it would double the run if you had to like watch all the cutscenes. Eh? Yeah, there's people who have done like meme runs of that game without like pushing the start button. And if you push the start button, it skips cutscenes. That's the only button you can do, do to skip cutscenes. So you can't like <laughs> pause buffer and you can't skip cutscenes. And you can't do like yeah. the menuing to make the stages start and end faster. And it's like actually like over double the length. <laughs> oh my gosh! No, it's like um, a one-hour run. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Pause buffering sounds wild. Like from watching, I don't know if like top top runners like don't use pause buffers much uh, generally, but uh, there, there's a lot of pause buffers, but it's just more, uh, it's more complicated stuff. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Here on yeah. Office, well, we teach you that we teach each other about our speedruns. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's been, uh, not a whole lot going on for this part. Mostly just like movement stuff. Um, some of the, the large coins floating in the air are worth uh, 10 coins. So that's why I was uh, going slightly out of my way to grab them. Because um, there, there's a bit of a tight coin route up until about the midpoint of the run. And then you're gonna pretty much spend everything and then don't really need much uh, money after that. But um, there are some uh, 
not guaranteed events that could happen that might um help increase my uh or help me get like more coins which could allow me to buy more items in the mid game when i do the uh kind of long menu at the midpoint of the run but um one of them so if i can get a flower box drop from uh I'm gonna be fighting croco again like it's like the next mini boss after this next boss coming up then uh he has like a one in four chance to drop a uh, flower box which they can sell for 500 coins which would be huge and then uh there's an item I'm going to be using later called a Red Essence, which if I get a freebie, so when you use an item, you have just like a chance to get it to get a freebie. Like it just gives you a free one, basically. And um, if I freebie the Red Essence, then uh, I can sell sell that later for 200 coins as well. Which uh, that's like a one in seven chance roughly to happen. So it's like. You know, you don't really expect to get it, get either one of those those items. So yeah, this kid um is getting starstruck by uh, seeing Mario <laughs> in the house while he was playing with his uh, Mario World dolls, pretty much. He's like, "Are you really Mario?" So I told him no, that I'm not Mario because it's a little faster, because um you get less dialogue that way. And uh, if you say yes, he's like. Here, prove it to me, and then you have to press B to, B to jump, and then that just like that animation just wastes more time than saying no. And I then like yeah, the wants idea to, uh, of meeting one of your idols and being like, "Are you really this person?" And they just say no. <laughs> I've done that in. Uh, all right, I wouldn't say okay. I'm not gonna call myself an idol to people, but <laughs> I have done that at like some Smash Bros. Melee events are like, are you Ryan Ford? And I'm like, no, I'm Kirby Kaze or something like that. <laughs> some, some people many years later uh, bring bring that up that I, that I used to do that troll like years ago. And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot that I did it to like this person particularly <laughs> like in like 2013 or something. <laughs> I think I think There's people telling back. me in 2019. Sorry? I think you should bring that back. Like, you, you go to SGDQ like, oh, 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 gee, are you really Ryan Ford? Wow, big fan of your Mario RPG speedrun on Hotfix. It's like, no, I'm, I'm P's SMB. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do that. The super, super meatball piece. <laughs> There's genuinely three people on this earth that understand that joke. <laughs> little little inside in joke. <laughs> <laughs> little inside joke before we uh, started this run. So, <laughs> bit of an Easter egg. Yeah. <laughs> oh, actually, I'm gonna safety save here after this dialogue. So, uh, the Gino doll came to life, and uh, yeah, the kid's trying to tell his mom that he just saw Gino like walk into the forest, and uh, she doesn't believe him. So. That was kind of the gist of that uh, cutscene. Uh, she thinks that uh, because he like is reckless, like when he knocked out Mario with uh, Gino's uh, the Gino doll's ro rocket punch, that um, yeah, sometimes he breaks things uh, in the house. So she thinks that he's trying to cover up for something by saying that like Gino came to life. So this is some pretty hard tech. Um, so wiggler jumping. So if you bounce on a wiggler ten times. Then um, you get a uh, frog coin. So I never mentioned frog coins yet, but they're a special kind of currency, which you can buy uh, certain items that aren't uh, common in the game. And um, because of that, we need to I need to try to get like seven frog coins from here to uh, continue from the route, so that later on I can buy an accessory called the EXP booster, which uh, whoever has it equipped they uh, double their EXP game from battles. Oh, and from when I use uh, stars on enemies too. So, um... Uh, it's gonna be important through the route so that I can kind of, like, power level some characters so that they can, uh... learn spells sooner. Or have, like, high enough uh, stats just to survive, like, boss fights. Like, you know, kind of having, like, barely enough HP and things like that. So that's cool. I got the perfect seven, so I didn't drop any of them. So uh, what's difficult about that part, especially when you're first learning the run, is that um, 
So the Wigglers can move in like six different paths, and you can and you have to react to which one they're doing. Uh, there's like three different patterns they can do, where they move in front of the the tree stump, and then three when they go behind the tree stump. So one of the ones it was calmly doing was going behind the tree stump and doing one of the two zigzag patterns, which I find the hardest one to do. But uh, fortunately, I didn't mess up at all. And uh, because of this game's like isometric view, like the hitboxes are pretty janky, like the isometric hitboxes. So sometimes you'll kind of land on the Wiggler's head, but get into an encounter with it instead of bouncing off it. So you have to be like, try to be pretty deliberate with like landing in the middle of its body. So I'm going to save there as well. But first, I'm going to grab this uh, hidden red essence, which is uh, the item that I mentioned how I'm going to hope that it freebies later on. So, yeah, so you have now to be we're, warmed at the... up. we're we're so fine now. <laughs> yeah, right. This is going pretty smooth uh, so far. At least I feel anyway. <laughs> it looks like it. So. <laughs> yeah. So this fight, uh, there is a chance that I could could die, and it could just not be my fault too. Because um, with this current route, there's a uh, what's it called? Uh, if Boyer Boyer uses um. If he uses two lightning spells on Gino, then um, it could kill him, and he's the only one that can kind of deal real damage in this fight at this point, since uh, Mario and Malo are pretty underleveled, and I also don't have a weapon equipped on either one of them on top of that. Even though they wouldn't really hit that hard anyway, even if I did have a, a weapon at this low level. So Gino comes into this fight at level 6, I think. So, And I think Mario's still level at this point, so for reference. Or I think both Mario and Malo are level 3 currently. So, uh, even though Gino also doesn't have a weapon equipped, even his, like, physical attack will do a lot more damage, so it's gonna be purely relying on him. And, um, the, uh, frog coins, so when I was in Tadpole Pond, uh, talking to the tadpoles and the old frog named, uh, Frog Fuchsius, uh, so I spent... I think three frog points in total. I bought one sleepy bomb, which I'm gonna use on like the second last boss fight, like in like two hours from now. And then uh, uh, the other item is an energizer, which I'm gonna use on Gino in this fight, which um, gives you a, an attack boost um, for the remainder of the fight, pretty much. Unless if that character dies, then it uh, wears off. And a couple other exceptions, but none of them are available in this fight so i should have the energizer boost for the whole fight on dino and um, also we'll hope that it freebies if i if it does i can use it on the next mini boss afterwards but um if it doesn't then oh well so uh, one in four chance to get a freebie for it so it's another one that you don't really expect it to happen but sometimes it does so for most of the fight in this route uh gonna be using Gino Blast, or uh, Gino Beam, sorry. And then uh, defending or using items with the other two characters. So here's the Energizer. Um, the reason that, hey, it freebied, nice. <laughs> That's dope. So uh, there's a chance I could save time on the next segment uh, with that freebie too. And um, yeah, the reason that we use items with Malo instead of Mario is that uh, Malo's uh, item animation is faster. Uh, by a bit, so. Uh, yeah, Mario kind of like searches his pocket for a bit and then like then pulls out the item and uses it, so. Uh, yeah, Malo just has the fastest animation of anyone. So, minor time save there. So, these buttons that lock. Um, so, if you do a certain amount of actions, then um, you'll choose a different button to lock. So, uh, by defending with these two characters and just casting Geno Beam, then. Um, it gives a low amount of point, low enough amount of points that uh, to lock the X button, which uh, disables you to be able to use items. So that's why I uh, use those two items at the very start of the fight before you lock the button. And um, while X is locked, he can't use his AOE spell, fortunately, um, in this route. Um, in the old route, we used to get him to lock the uh, Y button, I think. I forget if it was Y or A, but <laughs> it's been so long since I've done the old route, so. <laughs> yeah, and, um, yeah, you could cast, like, Static E, which, uh, 
the AOE spell that hits everyone. So you said you couldn't block those, right? Correct. Same with these two spells, like Lightning Orb and um, um, Lightning Orb and Bolt as well. Um, so yeah, throughout this fight, I've been hoping that he would use uh, physical attacks. Here's one out of the three, three times he could have done it, so that's nice. Uh, I think it's 50-50 whether he can use uh, one of the two spells or just uses a physical, so... Uh, okay, well, yeah, we got about 50-50 for using uh, physicals versus spells. So. About average luck on that fight. So on that final turn, um, I got him to lock the Y button, which uh, there's a bit of a gamble, so... Oh, I need to do HP for Bella. Yeah. So um, it's like a bit of a gamble. So if we make him lock the Y button on that last turn. Uh, oh, yeah. So Y button, you can't cast a uh, chance to shoot an arrow that puts it on that last turn. But uh, if he puts Gino to sleep particularly, then, uh, you know, you can't get the last hit in to win the fight. So it just wastes, wastes more time. Also, the sleeping arrow also just wastes about seven seconds uh, if he uses it at all, if he uses it on someone else. Actually, my PB, he put Gino to sleep twice in a row, so I lost like almost half a minute. <laughs> oh no. That was uh, kind of unlucky. <laughs> on the final turn, so. It happened in my PB before that PB, and like. So, like, for the sleepy arrow at the end, he, he has like a one in three chance to use it, and then it's like a. One in three chance for him to use it on Gino, so it was like two one in nine chances in a row for that to happen on like two PBs in a row. So <laughs> yeah, so I don't know what the odds are, but yeah, that was uh really unlucky <laughs> in my PB. But it happens. So yeah, so now we've got the second star piece. Um, it's funny, uh, since I skipped fighting Mech, um, I actually didn't get the... Technically, didn't get the star piece. And um, the star piece menu doesn't uh, show up until you get this one here uh, due to uh, skipping that fight. But um, to beat the game, it only really checks for you to get the seventh uh, star piece anyway. So it's fine. In like randomizer, so, do you have to get all seven? Or uh, You can change the settings for it to uh, okay. require seven or... Uh, Six. I'm not sure if you can do less than six. I might be wrong on that though. But I know I know you can do at least uh, like six at the lowest, as far as I know. But it could be. It might be potentially less now because there's been a lot of uh, updates with the randomizer um, throughout the years, and um, there's supposed to be a huge like new randomizer uh, patch that uh, Pidge is developing, which I'm excited for whenever it gets finished. But um, it's supposed to be, like, way more crazy than, like, the current, like, randomizer. Like, what the current randomizer can do. So, that, that's that been, I think, at least, like, three years in development. Or maybe four years at this point. So, super hyped for it. <laughs> yeah, that's exciting. <laughs> I, I'm happy yeah. that I am at least in the know enough about, like, Bomber Cyberfunk to, like, be excited about, like... The randomizer because it's like still in development Ooh. so like there was an update recently and then like a bunch of people just like downloaded it and just like started playing it and like trying to do new stuff in it because they added a bunch of checks and uh there's an option for it to beat faster it's it's really cool oh whoa that's sick you know how long it's been uh in, in development for it as well um the game is not that old uh it was re released pretty recently so yeah. probably a couple months after release so like maybe around november oh okay yeah so it's still pretty new it's actually balanced for archipelago <laughs> believe it or not oh wow that's actually sick yeah so Damn, already too. vrc is a great game for multi-worlds mm -hmm. wow that's so fast that's so quick already though Holy. Yeah, there's already bingo and rando and like level mods for that game. <laughs> oh, that's wild. For like another game that I'm like 
somewhat in the know about is like uh for legend of zelda link's awakening uh dx there's uh like kind of recently like a video uh, just came out for that you know the rando's been like uh it's been like being improved for like a long time uh lately but like them adding bingo was recent oh my god that freebie again <laughs> we're so back it's crazy <laughs> it's like two one and fours in a row <laughs> so since i freebied that one i can use it on uh the next boss after this um if i were to freebie that one then uh it doesn't save time after that so <laughs> oh <laughs> unfortunately but but yeah uh it's optimal to get like two freebies uh in a row uh using that one energizer so uh this fight's always uh in terms of uh time save or time loss this fight's always a roller coaster and runs because uh if he uses a lot of if he doesn't use his regular physical that often then um i think he'd lose about three three and a half seconds each time so if he throws a bomb or uses that attack um chomp so now that he stole my items uh once i got his damage down to a certain or his health down to a certain threshold then uh he stole my items and uh now whenever he doesn't use his regular physical he'll uh throw a random like enemy from his bag which uh fortunately you can block it so that's pretty huge whereas uh his bombs you can't block in uh this version of the game so in the switch remake you can block block his bombs but not in this game okay no flower box drop though which is fine and um yeah, that was a pretty solid fight overall. Um, the only thing that could have went faster is if he used uh, more more of his regular physicals, because I think he used one throughout the whole fight. Fortunately, he used it on turn two, which was huge, because um, since I gave uh, Mallow an HP for his uh, level up bonus uh, after I beat Boyer, and, um, him being at 34 HP makes him able to survive uh, one bomb with one HP. So, uh, oh, it's Bob almost like right in the way. <laughs> I didn't want to encounter it by accident. So. Yeah, so, um. Okay, nice. I got all the, uh, all the kills that I wanted for this part. So, Mario did hit level 5, which is somewhat important. Yes. Um, it's able to kill the next two bosses a little faster, ideally. And yeah, I know I know I've been on two different tangents at once, but uh, oh shoot, but um, <laughs> what's it called? Uh, yeah, so I backtracked for that chest because uh, each of those coins is worth 10, 10 coins, so there's a uh, hundred fifty coins in total there, so that uh, adds to the money route over there. If, yeah, I feel like in this run there's just always so much happening, like that leads to other stuff just like w way down like the line <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so it's like chain chains of things like planning ahead it's like ah <laughs> oh, no freebie I, I just wanted it for the memes at this point <laughs> to get the freebie for that energizer <laughs> which um you can uh if you freebie did it again on this fight you can just use it on Mario, and if you freebie that, then you can use it on <laughs> Mallow, but it doesn't actually save time, or like, doesn't really save or lose time to do that. So, and then, um, for later fights, it's uh, not useful, unfortunately, if you, uh, freebie the Energizer again in this fight, so. Oh, and it's also, like, worth only one coin when you sell it. So it, uh, it's pretty much just taking up item space at inventory space at that point. And yeah, since Gino is my uh, highest uh, offense character currently, then uh, yeah, that's why I use the um, energizer on him. So yeah, Sandstorm. Uh, so I was hoping that he wouldn't do it for the oh, oops, for the entire fight, but uh, he has every turn he has a uh, was it one in one in seven chance to to do it. So, and the fight lasts about five turns, so, uh, I forget, there was someone in my chat, like, years ago that said that it, I think it's, like, 
slightly, the odds are slightly against you for him to use Sandstorm uh, at least once in the fight. Something like 54 to 54 percent versus like 46 percent, or 52 to 48, something like that. It was like close to 50-50, but like slightly against you to, to like potentially lose time, basically. Uh, fortunately, he did it on the last turn of the fight, so it loses the least time. If he used it like within the first two turns, it uh, loses probably about 10 seconds in this route. Because um, Sandstorm, it being an AoE spell, so the spell just being longer than his physical waste time, and then uh, it also causes fear, sta fear status. So when uh, Mario was shaking his... Um, so if you have fear, it makes your... Uh, Attacks do half damage, and you and you take uh, one point five times uh, damage from from enemies. So, um, both Mallow and Gino are wearing fearless pin for this route, so they're immune to getting fear feared. So, um, back when no, like way older route in like 2018, 2019, then uh, yeah, twenty eighteen. Sorry, um, we used to use uh wake up pins here to uh prevent getting put to sleep but then because of that if uh punchinello did uh sandstorm early in the fight it just loses way more time because everyone will get feared usually so it's like if he used it early in the fight it would lose like 25 seconds instead of like 10 seconds and like like in this route but yeah i think it lost about seven um seven seconds since he did it on the last turn since it didn't really affect how long it didn't make the fight go an extra turn like afterwards basically are you gonna be using gino through like the whole run or does he like kind of fall off like mid game or late game i'm trying to think do i use some of the is there any fights where i don't use <laughs> yeah actually he's gonna be he's gonna be here for the entirety of the game okay um Oh, I used the wrong, or used the mushroom at the wrong time. I was supposed to use it here, I'm pretty sure. So I'll skip using the mushroom here. Yeah, um, I won't be using Mallow for the rest of the run now at this point. Because I'm um, soon going to get uh, Bowser in the party. And then, uh, yeah, Bowser and Peach get uh, swapped around a lot uh, between each other. And then, yeah, Mario and Gino are pretty much like there the whole time. Well, actually, you can't remove Mario from the party at all, so there is also that. But uh, for Gino, yeah, like, yeah, I guess he actually is just that valuable that you keep him for the entire game. And then um, due to a, uh, I was going to say a new glitch. It's actually not that new anymore, but the uh, skill swap glitch. So the, star, the stars that I use in the overworld, I'm going to... Try to make um, Peach learn other characters' spells, and since she has the high, highest uh, uh, magic attack, then um, she uh, what's it called? Then yeah, I'm gonna let her learn. Try to let her learn uh, Mallow's uh, Shocker to use, and then um, and then uh, Gino Blast later on in the run as well. Because yeah, normally she's like. She just doesn't really learn offensive spells. But then, uh, because of her high uh, magic stat, she, uh, you know, she's like mostly for support and like healing everyone by a lot. But yeah, by getting some of the other characters' spells, then she'll also like hit monstrously hard as well. So, I'm gonna be using that a few times in the late game as well. Alright, I think missing that coin didn't matter, but that's chill. Oh, I completely forgot. I was gonna try and get chat to guess what my uh, my my minecart mini game was gonna be. <laughs> so, uh, I think normally, if I don't make one, a... personally. <laughs> hey, nice guess. <laughs> <laughs> pre-recorded, pre-recorded. <laughs> yeah, any since I made some mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Pre-watching a live run. <laughs> yeah, so like with no mistakes, it usually get like. Roughly like between mid 156 to like low 157. And then uh, generally each mistake will often cost like roughly a second and a half. So yeah, since I made about two mistakes, then yeah. So I got 
201. This run's been such a fun watch, just because it, it goes like super fast, especially for like an RPG run. Because like there's some JRPGs that just like feel like they take forever. Yup. <laughs> but like, this run is just like nonstop, it feels like. Yeah, because like, the cutscenes are not super long, and uh, yeah, even then I'm like using turbo, when I'm using turbo, then I, I can just like ramble about other parts of the run during cutscenes, since it's like, you know, so I don't have to like focus on like mashing, mashing a button or anything like that. Yeah. I'm going to safety save here in case like one really silly thing potentially could happen, but... It's like a fight that you, an encounter that you can get into, get into in uh, this next area that uh, you can't run away from. So if it happens, I'll just uh, soft reset. But that uh, artichoke there that I jumped over is a uh, is an enemy called artichoker, and uh, it's uh, decently strong for how low level I am currently. So yeah, I don't want to encounter that. Also, it would uh, I think it would possibly mess up my uh, exp routing if I actually did fight fight and beat it and yeah since i can't run away then uh that's why i say i haven't gotten into that encounter since like my very first run but <laughs> i don't know <laughs> it could happen <laughs> so it's been like 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 five years ago since that happened to me but <laughs> you never know <laughs> big relief for you was after you got your super jumps eight yeah, getting 100 super jumps is like, I feel like it's often nerve wracking for this run because it's like, what if it's like that one day where you're off and just start dropping it a lot? I feel like that's in, in a lot of people, the back of a lot of people's minds uh, when they're running. And um, yeah, so I have to make sure to say no for this uh, tutorial on how to swap party members. So since you can only have three people in a fight, then um. Yeah, if you say yes there, I think it loses like a minute from the game explaining how to switch party members. At that point, would it just be faster to reset to the safety save? <laughs> uh, oh, that's a good question. Huh. I'm not too sure, because uh, cause, cause there was a pretty long cutscene like in between, but I bet it would be really close, actually. That's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. I actually want to time time it because I, I think there's like a possible chance it might be faster. <laughs> I assume that if it is, it'd probably be like barely by like a few seconds or something. Yeah, it'd be seconds in a three hour speed run. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah, I should actually take this save because uh, there's also some encounters here that you can't can't run away from. So. Uh, I might reset if I get them. Uh, since I'm like almost perfectly on my EXP route, then um, then yeah, I don't want to potentially mess it up by uh, being forced to uh, win fights. So this checkered boardroom, there's a lot of uh, booby trapped uh, enemies on some of these uh, squares. So uh, it wastes a lot of time because the you get these uh usually these blue uh lava bubbles and um like the like the potobu enemies and um they're also faster than your whole party so they'll usually do really slow attacks as well and yeah there's like pretty much always like two of them as well and then on top of that you can't run from the fight so you also have to uh gain exp because of that okay in case other weird stuff in the safety stay yet again <laughs> Safety saves are safe and great. <laughs> yep, it's fast. <laughs> fast, fast to uh, it's fast to save in this game, so I definitely don't mind doing it. <laughs> How come the numbers are still in English? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question, actually. <laughs> yeah, there's um. So this part's pretty long. It's like a curtain curtains mini game. So. Uh happening here so uh this guy booster and his uh sniff it uh sniff it minions over here they uh oh so uh so princess peach when everyone got flung out of the castle at the start of the fight when i was fighting uh bowser at the beginning then uh 
Peach landed like on top of this castle, and uh, Booster is trying to marry her now. So he's trying to uh, do a wedding rehearsal uh, with these dolls, and he can't find this Mario doll, which is on top of the curtain over here. So yeah, Booster is sending these uh, Sniffits to uh, look for um, to look for the Mario doll. So I'm supposed to hide behind the curtains and not get caught, but. <laughs> I guess because of this isometric view, like, you can see that sometimes I'm standing there and, like, you know, about half of Mario's body is, like, sticking out, but I'm not getting caught. Which, um, I could, I could go a little bit further and not get caught, but I don't want to, like, you know, overshoot by accident and then, like, lose time by getting caught. Because, uh, you have to redo this minigame from the beginning if you get caught, and then, um... I think if you get caught three times, then uh, then you have to fight all of them because they're like, "Hey, it's Mario." Oh no! <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so if you win this mini game, you get uh yeah, uh, booster gives you an item called the the amulet. So um, I'm gonna be using that throughout the run later because uh, the description just says that it stinks, but it um what's it called? It uh. So it, it decreases your speed, but it boosts your offensive stats by a little bit. And um, it also makes the person wearing it, they also... It doesn't say in the description, but they actually take half damage from elemental attacks. So like fire, ice, uh, lightning, and stuff like that. So it's going to be important to survive uh, certain uh, boss attacks later on. Yeah, there you go. So we got it now. And then, yeah, so this door is locked by, like, a password that you have to say, which, uh, the password's just the, the file name, whatever you name your file. So, uh, a lot of times for, like, donation incentives and stuff, then usually do, like, file name if I'm, uh, playing in English. Okay, I had to remember what the <laughs> equips were for a moment. Because, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm going to be trying to do another RNG minute, but, um, I'm gonna also take off my headset at this point because uh, I need to use uh, the audio, like the TV audio for cues. Good luck. So, I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, give me trying to. Uh, yeah, there's like certain parts of the move, uh, the music that I'm gonna be using for uh, some inputs. If I mess it up, then uh, I won't reset. But I'll just uh, do an alternate uh, routing uh, later on. Ooh, that might have been early. We'll see though. Okay, no, it wasn't. Cool. Uh, a chance that might have been late, but we'll see. Dang, yeah. Okay, that was late. That's fine. At least the fight... I shouldn't lose time on this fight, but later on, since I didn't freebie that uh, rock candy that I used... Uh, twice. Oh, well, I'm going to lose time because I got bad RNG here, actually. <laughs> Mario hit a uh, low damage roll there, so uh, his boss should have, like, about 6 HP left. So, since Mario hit less than 120 either. But yeah, uh, since I missed the Manip, um, later on, it's going to be a boss fight called um, Axum Rangers, about a bit over an hour from now. That, um... So, since I don't have that rock candy, I'm going to have to do uh, alternate routing, which will guaranteed lose at least half a minute in that fight But at this point. Yeah, after after this segment right here, it, it, would it be a good time for a break? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, so this uh, mini game. so if chat wants to guess how many flowers I'm going to get, um, can get anywhere between 0 and 16 in this minigame. Um, I need to get at least 8 to not lose time in the run, which... Uh, mm -hmm. Usually I'm pretty confident about getting double digits as well. I'm going all in on 16. Hey. <laughs> yeah, even the task gets like 16 at most too. Which, um... I think I'm like one of 
five runners in this game to uh, ever get uh, 16 in this mini game. Frame perfect. Oh, dang. Okay, well, <laughs> just like. <laughs> It they seems like dead you now. Super Smash Brothers Melee for the Nintendo GameCube. <laughs> indeed, indeed. At least he's in that game. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I'm gonna guess that I, at best, can get like 13 now. But we'll see. So yeah, this phase when there's three barrels. Um, if I stay on the top right side, then um. You can, you can react to the bear coming out. Um, the middle... The middle is like... The middle and the left side are like... Borderline like not reactable, so... Um, so the phase where there's only two barrels... Um, sometimes the RNG, it's like... You know, if you don't get any on the right side, then you have to... Kind of guess when you jump. Uh, to hit the right side. To hit the right one. And then, yeah, this phase with these snippets, then, uh, yeah, just kind of waiting for them to run up. But, uh, sometimes, just as I was about to explain about isometric hitbox jank, uh, sometimes you can jump on them and get, like, knocked back anyway when you land on them. Due to janky hitboxes. So it, like, happened, like, right as I was about to start explaining that that could happen. It was kind of funny. <laughs> Dang, just barely didn't get that last, uh, flower or two. But it's okay. I think I got maybe 11. Oh, 12. Okay. That's solid. Someone won. Someone did guess 12. Hey, not bad. Not bad. Yeah, like, mo most, more often than not, I usually get double digits on that. But um, I'm usually pretty content if I get at least 11. So that's, uh, that's decent. Because um, it can make some fights a little safer if I make mistakes. If I get uh, every uh, addition... Oh, whoops. Every additional three that I get um, after eight lets you have uh, just extra FP for possible uh, backup strats. Yeah, just, so, just, yeah, since I got at least 11, it's fine. Yeah, just let me know yeah, whenever uh, you're good to like just pause for a break. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. We can definitely uh, chill here. Yeah, so uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes. We're going to... Have a quick wellness break, you know, get up, stretch, do all that. But also, while we're in the break, I need you, chat. I need you to type exclamation UBAF. Check out the schedule. Ryan Ford is on it with a run or two, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back with more SMRPG, SMRPG goodness in just, a couple, in just a few minutes. We'll be right back. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Limey's RPG show, I guess. I will get used to saying it by the end of the stream, I promise. Uh, we just left off. Um, I think we're about to do some stuff in Mario RPG. Before we get started, I do want to remind everyone real quick. Exclamation UBAF in the chat. Uh, it's going to be live from February 16th through the 19th. That's four days. Used to be two, and now it's literally double the length because its missions were so good, and the schedule is an absolute banger. Um, go ahead and check that out whenever it's live. Everyone today is going to be on. Is going to be on that. It's going to be super fun. But yeah, Ryan, we can get back into it. Okay. Yeah. So, all right, I'll count down real quick from three, three, two, one, go. Yeah. So, I think of where we left off <laughs> in the run. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, trying to crash the uh, wedding since uh, what's his face? Uh, Booster's trying to uh, force uh, Peach to marry him. Oh, I think I actually forgot to save. <laughs> All right, well, hopefully I uh, don't die in this fight. But I'm a believer. <laughs> Should be fine. This uh, fight is like quite a bit of a crapshoot, though. It's a uh, RNG. Like it's like a heavy amount of RNG that can. Uh, uh, most of the time, like, I should survive the fight at, at, at least and just, like, maybe lose a lot of time. But um, as long as I don't make major mistakes, I think I should generally be fine unless, like, the worst of the worst in terms of RNG happens. Then there might be nothing I can do at that point. But it's very unlikely that I'll... Or the odds are very unlikely that I should die purely to RNG. So, so it should be chill. But yeah, so first off, we got these uh, snippet 
uh, the Sniffit minigame. So uh, when we uh, crashed into the door, into the door with Bowser, it uh, when Peach got knocked back, uh, a bunch of her items dropped, like stuff she was wearing. So the Sniffits just found it, and then her crown was on top of uh, Booster's head as well. So the faster that you do this mini game, then uh, you can end up getting a kiss from Peach uh, if you're fast. Um, there's like candles that were on the side that uh, light up as uh, time passes, and uh, a certain amount of candles light up, you get like a different uh, reward instead of that kiss. Like you might get kissed by Bowser, and sometimes Bowser and Booster and stuff like that, because they'll like try to kiss Peach and they'll like she'll move out of the way and then they'll like. <laughs> Kiss Mario by accident or something. So yeah, so if you go fast, you get rewarded. Which um, the tech for those snippets because they move really erratically is uh, generally trying to stay around the middle of the room and kind of like let them come to you because they run faster than you do. And then uh, if they're stuck in a corner, then you can try to run up to them though. So here's Bunt the cake, which uh. Uh, for top level runs, he's definitely a pretty big roadblock because he can, you know, waste a lot of time, like, to no fault of your own. So, first off, these chefs, uh, I really gotta try to make sure I get perfect blocks with, uh, Gino and Mario. Uh, even though I have timed, uh, Bowser's block, that's, uh, not the end of the world since fortunately it was on Bowser particularly. Um, I generally use the audio mostly for, uh, for blocking versus these uh, chefs particularly. And yeah, the cake is, uh, it moves and, uh, the apprentice, uh, saw it and was like, I saw it move, but then the, the main, the head chef, he, uh, doesn't believe him. All right. So no freebie there. And dang, unfortunately half time the block on both, both. And they happen to be on Gino. But yeah, so now that I use the red essence on Mario, it gives him, uh, invulnerability for three turns. So, uh, for three turns, he won't be affected by, like, anything at all. And since he's, uh, really weak right now, then he would potentially get one-shot by a lot of, uh, Bunt's attacks or his, uh, spells. So, that's why we, uh, have the Red Essence in on this route. So, uh, hopefully Gino doesn't get hit by, like, two big spells in a row now since I, uh, mistimed those blocks. Otherwise, he'll almost certainly die. So, the Candle Phase, they, um... Okay, Drain Beam, that's the worst I could have gotten. And then uh, his head, the top head of his cake will also do some attack. Blizzard, so yeah, Gino's dead since I uh, missed the block. Yeah, just barely too. Uh, so yeah, because of that, then I lose two actions on the turn. So um, it'll make uh, this phase go longer. So we're trying to get, trying to get out of this uh, candle phase as soon as possible. So um Oh wow, so actually the Drain Beam and Blizzard did exactly enough help since I missed time both blocks. So <laughs> that actually sucks. <laughs> that I got punished like to the exact number. So, it's a bit unlucky and also my fault, but um Yeah, I see what you so mean. Yeah, now. These this candles, seems a little brutal. <laughs> I know, right? Dang, drain beam three times in a row. That's wild. Okay, physical is nice. Um so yeah, this candle phase is probably going to go at least, uh, I think at minimum one more turn. So hopefully Mario doesn't die because his red essence ran out now. Okay, lullaby, not bad. Well, it might not be bad, unless if uh, Gino gets put to sleep. Oh, then Gino got put to sleep. <laughs> so yeah, this is the, the things he can do to you. So yeah, I used Able Juice to wake up Gino and then, uh, I think Gino's gonna die soon too. Uh, Mario's dead for sure. Oh wow, I think Mario died at like exact HP too. Hmm, so what should I do here? Uh, yeah, not too sure, because Bowser's like at risk of dying now. And I don't have any mushrooms either, so. Oh wait, no, I have a mid mushroom. I could have used that. All right, it should be fine. All right, nice block, and okay, diamond sauce. So that's uh, decently safe, at least. No oh. oh, wait, no, because it's candles gonna relate. That's so unlucky. All right, um, Oof. 
Yeah, I might actually lose because of half timing the block with it. SMRPG is my favorite puzzle game. <laughs> right? Ah, uh, dang. Okay. Uh, wow, and the lullaby too. That's actually just so unlucky. Damn. All right, yeah, I think I'm going to probably lose a billion. And he put Gino to sleep particularly, too. Wow. <laughs> actually, this is actually hilarious that all this happened at once. Yeah, uh, I think it's over. So I'm going to lose a billion because I got to fight uh thing again, probably. What's, it, what's his name? Uh, yeah, no, it's over. Okay, yeah. Dang, I said the odds were pretty low that I could lose, but I it's messed up. It's because you willed it into existence. Exactly. I messed up, like, exactly one time too many, and it, like... Yeah, I gave the game an inch and it just took everything at that point. All right, so I'm definitely going to go, like, massively overestimate. It's, it's, like, on top of that, just forgetting to save, too. It's, like, actually insane that that happened. So You're not trying the manip again, or...? Yeah, I'm trying it again. Okay. Oh yeah, I gotta take off my headset real quick. <laughs> One moment. Okay, that, I think that should be good. We'll see though. Nope. Um, I have no idea why that didn't work this time. But okay. You just call the game mean and begin to say it patch minutes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I have no idea why that one didn't work particularly. Because I'm pretty sure the other time I messed up, I used the rock candy late. But yeah, this time I'm actually lost as to why that didn't work. But. I'm gonna guess I was like maybe a frame too early, but I actually don't know for sure. <laughs> All right, so I guess we're doing uh, the uh, Booster Hill mini game again. All in on sixteen. But all in on sixteen again. All in on sixteen. <laughs> all right, here's I, I have nothing left to give, but, but all in. <laughs> <laughs> True, I guess since he went all in the other time. So. Yeah. I, <laughs> Yeah, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so for the early parts, I, um, I do use the audio for this part, too. Uh, lightly with, um, there's like a sound that comes out before the uh, barrel comes, comes out. I have no idea why I got hit by that one, though. It, it's where I landed on it, but okay. So, I think that's going to be like minus three flowers guaranteed now. But, uh, you know, as long as I get more than eight still, <laughs> as I said before, then it's still fine. Oh, that was so janky. <laughs> All the things that happened at once there, it's hilarious. So I couldn't see the uh, barrel because the those clouds, like the cloud was like covering it. So I couldn't um, see exactly where it was when I was trying to react to it. And then, um, and then I landed on the sniffit and got like, janked by the uh, isometric hitbox thing, too. But it's so funny that all of that happened at once. So. <laughs> it make, this game makes you run, like, diagonally and stuff so much. Is it, like, weird to control because so it's, like, isometric? Since you only have, like, cardinals on the D-pad? Yeah, I think that you get used to it, like, pretty quickly, but, um, I feel, like, cas casually to me, it, it was, like, awkward when I, um, you know, when I would play this game, like, every, like, once every, like, few years. But <laughs> I can definitely say I don't really have issues with it now, but that's just because I've <laughs> speed ran the game for <laughs> uh Jeez, before I even learned like a new game, I speed ran this for like a year and a half at that point before the second game I learned. So <laughs> a lot of experience. <laughs> so I think it's twelve for this one. Oh it was eleven. Oh wow. Eleven. <laughs> so a little yeah, worse, but still decent. <laughs> And yeah, I saw uh, I saw eggs in chat as well. 
Sup, sup. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm not positive how much time I lost uh, from that death and forgetting the save. But, uh... That's so unlucky that <laughs> that death even happened. Yeah, exactly. It was like... Yeah, I made I made exactly like one, one too many mistakes, and RNG wise, it was like also just unlucky that the chefs attacked you know like what three out of the three out of the four times that they attacked they like went for Gino and I happened to like miss input <laughs> like half of them on 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 Gino so is what it is. We ball, <laughs> you know the vibes. Yep, yep. All right, this time I remembered to save. So, and then yeah, just um, yeah. Unfortunately, just how every single lullaby, like he casted it on Gino particularly. If he if he did it to Mario while his red essence was up, then uh, that would have been ideal. But then uh, if he did it to Bowser, I would have not lost like two actions per turn every time. If like if it was like if Gino didn't die, if Gino didn't get put to sleep each time, because. He's first in the turn order, so it's like his turn gets skipped. Then I need to like, hear him asleep with the other characters, so it like wastes more actions instead of like if Bowser got put to sleep, it'd be like Gino wakes up Bowser, then Bowser gets his turn. So it's like you know, not as bad that happens. But yeah, every everyone had it out for Gino for that fight, unfortunately. So <laughs> it's just oh, and also yeah, that Bunt did Drain Beam like his first three attacks in a row, which is like his. The bottom half of the cake, that's his uh, strongest spell he can do. AoE spell, so... Yeah, because he did it three times in a row, which is... I think it's also, like, the lowest odds for him to cast that spell particularly, so... That was additionally unlucky that it was, like... Yeah, the first three things he did was that, so... In a row. Yeah, the game knows where it's at. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, like, definitely had it out for me in that fight. And then how the one and three on Lullaby was just Gino every time. So that that one's common though. Like in runs, like him doing Lullaby on only Gino is like a life story. So yeah, I assume I don't even know if I can be like under three twenty for this run at this point now after all that all that happened. But uh. We'll see. And I also, since I failed the minute again, then I'm gonna lose a minimum of half a minute, like an hour from now, too. Yeah, so. Alright, gonna try to block the chefs again. And, uh. You know, hopefully they don't uh, focus Gino for the most part this time. Yeah, so what I was going to say... Oh, wow, I mistimed it again. Hey, I got lucky that he missed. <laughs> but yeah, um, what was I going to say for this fight? Uh, so the candle phase uh, later on. So each attack that you do uh, blows out one of the candles on his head. And um, when he gets his turn, uh, one candle reignites. So... Um, that's why I needed to have a minimum of two people alive, so that's why I just reset when uh, it was Mario left, because I... Mario left with no rev revive items, because I literally couldn't win at that point. So... You just need to hit him once after uh, all his uh, candles blow out, and then it'll kill the uh, top part of the head. Or the top half of the cake, and then uh, the bottom half has uh, 600 HP, so... Generally, like, four, four to five hits will kill after that. Yo, it's just incredible. World record holder. World record in holder game. in the chat. Indeed. With the void arrive. So, yeah. He uh, definitely knows, knows the pain of uh, Bunt uh, killing runs, but... But yeah, Justin, I don't know if you missed uh, me dying to Bunt uh, just now, earlier. But, uh... And I forgot to save, so... <laughs> so I had to do uh, Knife Guy, Great Guy again. Until now. 
So yeah, him doing the physical on the first turn was nice. Um, unfortunately, I half timed the block with Juno, so uh, he's probably deader since he's uh, spamming Blizz Blizzard with the top part again. So yeah, due to my mis-execution there. Um, so yeah, whenever he shoots the uh, the white ball for his physical, um, it. Oh, do you know my die again? If this diamond saw hits him. Okay, fortunately not. Can get out of this uh, nightmare phase finally. This time. But yeah. Um. <coughs> so when he shoots that white ball at you, he shoots it at varying speeds, so it can be uh, pretty awkward to block as well. To like try and time a perfect block. block. So he shot a fastball, and also like I don't know. Since like on the screen, I guess like Gino, it's like close to bunt. Then uh, you know you have like very little time to react react to it. All right, so this should be it. All right, so much more tame fight compared to uh, last run. <laughs> Since the uh, bottom the bottom part of the cake gave. Uh, like physicals more often instead of drain beam every time, so that helped a lot. Damn, rose from a power nap, so getting beefed up. <laughs> so yeah, it's a bit of a long, uh, long cutscene. So basically, now that the wedding got crashed, uh, so Bunt's trying to eat the cake, but he's like, "I don't know how to eat a cake. Do we boil it or, <laughs> or what?" I, He's like getting I nervous. Wait, boiled my cakes. I don't know about you. <laughs> right? Ew. <laughs> Thinking about it. <laughs> oh my god, boiled cakes would... What, 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 I guess it would just melt probably, eh? Yeah, it's like <laughs> cake soup. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and yeah, he just ate it whole after they threw it all in his mouth instead. Alright, so since I'm not going to be using Mallow for the rest of the run, um, just give him HP for each of these level ups. So, um, we do give particular uh, stat bonuses uh, depending on what level the character is. So, every multiple of three for Mario, I'm going to give him a physical, except for level 15, because we don't need physical much anymore after that point. And, um, every, uh, Oh yeah, I guess Mario's is like the more simple one with multiples of three. Then yeah, Bowser at level 10 and level 13, I'm gonna give him HP and then just give him phys uh, physical attack for everything else, or every other level. Uh, Peach, I think I give her HP for her first level up and then give her magic magic attack for the rest, rest of the run. And then Gino's mostly physical, but uh, level 7 and 8 we give him HP to be able to survive. Uh, Yarodovich will be, what, two bosses from now, I think? So that he can uh, survive uh, Yarodovich's uh, opening attack since it's a scripted attack. And yeah, he can like just barely not get one shot, which is pretty huge. Oh, I <laughs> went to the wrong place in the world map. Wait, I wasn't even supposed to leave the town. I was just like <laughs> on autopilot thinking about Seaside Town. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, so I need to go to bring Peach back to the castle. So just give me some long cutscenes again. So, uh... <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, nice way to throw away like half a minute there. But <laughs> it, it's fine. It's it's not it's not the worst time loss you've had. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Already had like two way worse ones. So. Yeah, while we're waiting on the cutscenes, I'm just gonna say, chat your subs, prime subs, gift subs, and bits cheered on the GDU channel. Help us support Hot Fix. So if you like watching this, uh, this mostly daily content, uh, feel free to drop a sub, use your prime, cheer some bits if you feel up to it. If you're watching on YouTube, like the video, subscribe. Do all that good stuff. Uh, we have we have vods of everything that we do here get, that get uploaded to youtube.com slash quick. 
So if you miss any hotfix or mainline runs, uh, you can go back and watch them. Even stuff from BBF and Fatales here uh, coming up soon will get uploaded there if you miss anything. Oh shoot, proud was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> to add on to that. Oh, uh, okay for most hotfix shows, which I forgot to do it last night or uh, yesterday evening's hotfix show. Um, so uh, if anyone would like to gift me a sub during this run, that'd be much appreciated. <laughs> well, a little, little way to uh, shill to, you know, possibly give give extra support. <laughs> yeah, we, we love shilling here. We're, <laughs> we're GDQ shills. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because, yeah, it, uh, it doesn't help me monetarily, but, uh, you know, helps GDQ if anything. So... <laughs> For whatever reason, I feel a little more comfortable showing <laughs> that way. But. <laughs> yeah, just because there's so many people here behind the scenes that do so much for topics and also like mm -hmm. mainline stuff. Exactly. Like ton, tons of people behind the scenes. So. It's huge. Oh, also, um, sometimes when I'm streaming uh, playthroughs of games, or um, sorry, practicing for speedruns that um sometimes i play random music on my spotify but i do have a playlist titled yoko Sh shibamoru so i just have a bunch of songs that she worked on or had a part in all piled up together like kingdom hearts and a bunch of the mario games and uh street fighter 2 and various others so Hey, there's a prime though. Let's go primes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, um, so now I remember where to go. <laughs> so first off, I have to go back to Tadpole Pond. So uh, when I talked to the shopkeeper, when I revisited uh, uh, Mushroom Kingdom just now, then um, so way back when I beat Croco the first time, then uh, I got back Mallow's frog coin that was stolen from him. Yeah, let me tune me. Thank you. Uh, for, <laughs> for summoning me. <laughs> Much appreciated. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so put that, that to the uh, shopkeeper, and, um, he, he. Oh, I thought there was supposed to be a cutscene here. Whoops. <laughs> I was trying to, uh, thank for the gifts of, but I, uh, I forgot the cutscene is here when you enter the first room. Whoops. <laughs> But anyway, um, yeah, what was I going to say? The, um, yeah, so Mallow's grandpa sent him to buy his, uh, to buy his favorite dessert, uh, cricket pie. And, um, yeah, I was supposed to do that after I gave, um, or after I got back, uh, Mallow's frog coin, like, way back, like, <laughs> maybe first, like, 15 minutes of the run. And, um, but yeah, it's just fast, slightly faster to just revisit the shop uh, when coming back here to bring uh, Peach back to the uh, back to Mushroom Kingdom. And then after that, uh, they're like, huh, where, where else can we go look for uh, Star Spirits after we get Peach again from the... Uh, uh, Peach again in our party. And then Allo's like, I know, my grandpa knows everything, so we have to go talk to Frog Fuchsius the, so that he could say that there was a star sighted here on Star Hill, which is uh, this star piece that I'm getting. So it opens up Star Hill on the map. So went to go talk to him, but then also because he's uh, sad from the cutscene when we first went to Tadpole Pond, and, um, and he was revealing that uh, Mallow, who thinks he's a tadpole, uh, is not a tadpole. And that he told him he found Mallow. Uh, he fell out of the sky in a basket one day, and it. And the note said that his name was Mallow on the basket, so he raised uh, Mallow since he was a baby, but they're not actually related. So he was sad uh, revealing the truth, so that uh, after giving him his favorite dessert, the cricket pie, that he cheers up. And then you have to talk to him again to have this part on the map unlocked. Do you explaining the 
lore to this game sounds like when people explain like the monkey ball lore to other people who don't know because i'm just so confused <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's like so much going on and then also the dialogue being in japanese so it's like <laughs> probably harder to <laughs> yeah that's like harder to explain yeah so like the baby is like the baby by I, mimi but also like they didn't like have a baby they is from he's from the future he, he time travels and also like dr baboon <laughs> tries to steal mimi for my it's like I, I don't know what's going on at that point <laughs> it's, it's a little much <laughs> <laughs> and now i'm curious to look up the people lore. that's so funny all right so you'll be doing a long menu here um that i mentioned earlier so, oh wait i'm supposed to unequip that okay yeah there you go I do here? I think it's like that. Oh my gosh, I need to double check. Yeah, right, so amulet. Okay, yeah, just like triple checking my inventory real quick. <laughs> Alright. In case uh, some kind of hilarious disaster were to happen. Okay, yeah, that seems right. All right, a little slow, but <laughs> had to make sure. <laughs> Ray, Ray explaining the story, you know. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, so here we're gonna be doing uh, the skill swap glitch that I mentioned earlier. So, um. Normally you can't pause while you have the start active and like open your menu, but um, the game kind of like fades into the pause menu like a bit after you press start. So I jumped and then press or uh, sorry, the X button is the pause. But uh, so I jumped and uh, press X uh, just before it uh, Mario actually hit the uh, hit the block with the star. So I had the star active while paused, and with that I swapped the party members around. So I swapped uh, Peach and Mallow, and then, uh, so the game thinks that, uh, the, the characters that I swapped are, like, in the opposite slot, so normally when, uh, Mallow hits level 10, then he'll learn, um, Shocker, but since I put Peach in Mallow's slot, uh, slot, then the game thinks that, uh, and she hit level 10, then the game thinks that, uh, it was Mallow and not Peach who, uh, Who's supposed to be learning Shocker, so... Yeah, so it gives. <laughs> so yeah, with that, uh... Now that she has Shocker, I'm gonna be able to use that versus a couple bosses. Is there a lot that you I can know. do with the glitch, or is it just, like, teaching moves to party members who can't normally learn them? Yeah, pretty much just, uh... Yeah, bad characters learn, learn the wrong moves. I think in one of the, like intermediate routes or beginner routes i think they might also each poison gas to peach or mallow or something i know the routing is completely different for like the uh, intermediate and beginner routes because um they uh it's for it's meant for people that aren't able to do 100 super jumps so but i've never uh, run those routes so i'm not uh fully positive though <laughs> yeah my goat can just do 100 super jumps easy every time <laughs> Yeah, I was able to do it, uh, ca like, 100 super jumps casually, like, not, 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 like, super, super consistent, but, uh, like, de like, decent, decently enough that I was, like, comfortable with, uh, learning the optimal route because of that. Hey, I got a firebomb freebie, that's, uh, pretty big. Ray and Chad asked, doesn't it also modify the FP cost? You can make it, you can make them cost no FP if you read it correctly? Oh, um, so... What happens with that is that, um, so normally, uh, all the characters' spells is supposed to be on, um, it's supposed to be on, uh, on one page, but because of learning the extra spells, then also when, um, 
Uh, so for this example, like Peach, uh, since she's gonna learn pretty much all of her like all of her other spells that um plus uh, plus learning two extra spells that she shouldn't have, then um it makes it it makes the uh, the extra spells go to the next page. So then um with that uh, later on versus uh, when I use shockers like versus the last two bosses. Um, Chalker will be on the second page, and uh, the game registers its FP cost the same as the uh, first. Uh, the spell that's on the same uh, the same height of its spell slot on the first page. So, uh, for her, it's therapy, which is her like basic healing spell, like her first spell, and uh, that costs two FP normally. So then uh, the shocker shocker will cost two FP instead of eight, instead of eight because uh, of it being on on the second page. Sorry, that was a pretty long-winded explanation, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically it'll sense. be a quarter of the cost uh, than it's supposed to be, basically. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna be really hoping on um, trying to get some freebies with these uh, bombs that I'm throwing. So, uh, mostly been throwing fire bombs as a whole, and um, uh, just to kill like all these uh, groups of enemies in one hit. That's a that's the second freebie I've gotten. That's uh, pretty lucky. So nice. Hopefully, uh, all that huge, luck especially... doesn't go away at the next boss fight. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, especially since I missed the uh, the rock candy manip on the uh, on the uh, clown bosses that I fought, uh, knife guy and great guy. Then uh, I need to rely on having like. A couple more freebies than normal. And uh, each of these bombs, it's a uh, one in four chance to get a freebie. So, you know, the odds are uh, kind of against you, but I've already gotten decently lucky. So, I think ideally I need at least two freebies with um, ice bombs for, uh, for me to not, like, lose a ton of time later. So, we'll see, we'll see. So, gonna be going for 100 super jumps, uh... Oh, is this correct? Yeah. Pretty sure that's right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to be going for um, 100 super jumps in this fight. So, um, yeah, I'll mostly just be chilling, but I, I probably won't be uh, talking much when I start uh, start doing the super jumps. So for safety, I'm going to also raise defense, even though that is uh, two seconds. But if Mario dies, I'd have to reset. So uh, just to try to make sure that that doesn't happen. That's, uh... Because she would have died in one hit, so that would have been faster. Oh, I didn't get it. Dang. That's funny. I uh, got distracted by something uh, off screen and I uh, miscounted by, I think, by 10, actually. Oh, dang. The worst part is that I uh, purposely dropped it because I thought I got 100. <laughs> so that was my fault. So I'm going to go for 100 again here.
Okay, cool. I got it that time. <laughs> Yippee! It's funny, in hindsight, I should have, like, still, like, pressed the button in case that I didn't actually have 100 <laughs> the time that I, uh... <laughs> the time that I miscounted. Like, there was no reason to just, like, not press the button. <laughs> Does it that automatically stop you? Yeah, it caps at, uh, once you hit 100. Okay. Yeah, so there was, like, literally no reason for me to drop it. <laughs> 20. Hey, so you got to see me uh, almost do it once and then do it <laughs> the next time. So, <laughs> little bonus content for y'all. Very, very telling but, for the run so far. <laughs> I almost do it once and then I do it the next time. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that's bad is that uh, I probably wasted around like probably like over a minute because uh, because it takes uh, what forty frames per per jump, so it's about two seconds every three jumps. So. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah, I definitely burned a lot of time by by dropping it so late in the super jumps as well. But yeah, it is what it is. So, so yeah, so I needed to get a hundred super jumps to uh, get that as a bonus reward for the uh, super suit uh, later on in the run. Which uh, see, it's a uh, really broken armor, so uh, kind of gonna carry the run. Uh, when I get to uh, Monstro Town later on. So I'm going to save here just in case I uh, possibly lose to Yaridovich, who got renamed in the remake to Spiritovich, because he's a uh, spear. Oh, 45 frames? My bad, Justin. So yeah. You're getting um, fact checked in chat. <laughs> that's that's, know, that's right? my biggest fear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's 45 frames. So it's a bit over two seconds per. Three jumps. <laughs> Those games only second FPS. Run. No, that's 60, that's 60. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, 60 frames. Yeah, so the... um. Oh yeah, I'm going to be using the audio for uh, Shocker for Pete, so I'll probably have my uh, headset off for a bit. Okay, I got that time hit. So I got to get that, like... Five times in total in this fight. But um, since there's no visual cue for that attack, um, we use the TV audio to try and uh, know when to uh, do the uh, time hit for, for Shocker. So if I, if I hit 100 and... Uh, what is it? 197, then it means I half-timed it, and 237 means I full-timed it. Okay, good on that one. I was a bit concerned since I I have timed it like three times in practice, <laughs> so a uh, little bit worried because of that. Hey, nice firebomb freebie, pretty huge. I gotta use the Caro Caro Cola for max out my FP. It uh, gives you full heal for both HP and MP or FP. All right, good full time again. So this fight should be, I think, decently safe at this point because uh, I didn't miss time any shockers early. You saying this is like scaring me. <laughs> like, I don't want to say it's too soon, but like, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> okay, four out of five. That's uh, so far. So that's solid or four for four. So that's really good. <laughs> Dude, that may have been late. Yep. Okay, so I just gotta fire one uh, Geno Blast at him, and that should kill. So when he does this Mirage attack, so one of them is fake and one of them is real. And um, the cursor will uh, target the real one um, by default. So fortunately, you don't have to guess uh, which one's the real, <laughs> real one or, or not. So I'm assuming that's an oversight by the devs or something. But uh, yeah, we get to take advantage of that and yeah since i got 11 flowers in a uh, booster hill then um i had enough fp to be able to use that geno beam uh, as a backup fortunately so if i had uh, if i got like less than 11 then uh i would have had to probably toss another item at him or something due to um uh, half time that 
So I did lose a bit of time since I had to do one one extra turn, but not the worst. Probably like 10 seconds or something. Yeah, so saved all the real toads in this town. So uh, it was overrun by uh, Yardovich, um, posing as a bunch of uh, fake toads. Like multiple? Yep. <laughs> and then they all uh, combined together. Uh, when, when the fight was starting, they uh, combined together and formed the whole uh, <laughs> Yardovich afterwards. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I'm not even yeah, asking so, more questions. <laughs> Yeah, when I did the the long menu earlier, then um, that was one of the uh, fake toads. So um, after beating Yardovich, that shop is gone. So um, that was the only time that I could um, do that long menu to buy. Um... Oh, that's also a safety item, red essence. So that, I'm using. I got that just in case uh, I make mistakes on the final boss. So <laughs> backup items. But yeah, um, what's it called? Uh. Yeah, so I bought a bunch of uh, fire bombs, ice bombs, and uh, fright bombs. Or two, two fright bombs and a bad mushroom. So bad mushroom is a single target item that uh, causes poison on enemies. So um, I, I had like just enough uh, money to be able to uh, use it as a to to keep it as a backup again in case of uh, mistakes or if I uh, didn't get like any fire bomb freebies. Since I got three fire bomb freebies, then uh, I probably ideally won't need the bad mushroom, but I can uh, liberally like use it as a backup if I like make mistakes elsewhere. So, so it's nice, nice to have. <clears throat> so uh, these sand pits. So you just gotta follow the. Um, so these uh, shogun enemies, you. Um, after you fight them, then uh, you just go into the whirlpool that they were uh, that they were hiding in, and that will take you to the correct path. For some of them, you <laughs> sometimes can't instantly go in it, so <laughs> see, so I was just <laughs> running on it for like a good like three or four seconds. There. <laughs> so I'm also really hoping to get some ice spawn freebies uh, from this fight as well, or from these fights. But again, it's a one in four chance, so. Uh, often expect to get at least one but like maybe not <laughs> so uh, commonly like my best pace my best paces end up uh have ended up not pbing due to not getting any uh freebies from these guys i got one nice we're so bad for four <laughs> that's average <laughs> but then also since i got all those firebomb freebies then uh fortunately that could help uh, offset the, the problem a little bit. So it's uh, not too bad. I'd ideally like to get at least one more Ice Bomb freebie. Um, if I get two two more, then that's golden. But yeah. So, um... Oh my god, are you kidding? Okay, I'm gonna reset. <laughs> Since I saved just in case I made a mistake there, so... <laughs> oh, I can't believe I missed uh, one dog there. Jeez. So yeah, so... There was some like little bit of janky looking movement where I uh, exited one room and then I backtracked. But um, there's this uh, weird mechanic with stars where if you gain uh, two level ups uh, too close together, then uh, Mario will just get stuck in place for a little bit. So um, because of that, I um, you know leave leave that room and then re-enter, which uh, prevents that from happening, while uh, also preserving the uh, star timer a little bit. So ideally, I would have liked to kill uh, these two geckos on the bottom, but um, if I get at least one of them, then that's uh, good enough. So I barely missed the second one uh, right here. So I'm going to be buying another star here for 400 points. Um, I sold a fl flower box drop that I got. Um, that I got for... Uh, oh, it was given to me from uh, saving the uh, real toads in uh, Seaside Town just now. Then um, yeah, I get it as a reward, so I just sold it for... Uh, 500 points. Um, you could use it to permanently raise your max FP by uh, by five, but um, the money is more valuable than the speedrun. So, um, so 
Yeah, I spent 400 coins on that star. And um, so the first star that I used, all the enemies I killed, you get 11 EXP per kill. But that second star I got, then all the geckos on the bottom, uh, that star only gives you 6 EXP per kill. So that's why I wanted to try and kill uh, two geckos on the bottom. Because um, cause the first star is worth uh, like 5 more EX EXP. Which um, shouldn't really matter. Um, as long as uh, Peach doesn't... Uh, as long as I don't get too much EXP and have Peach hit level 14 before I enter uh, Barrel Volcano later on. That should be fine. Too much so XP to, uh, in a RPG run is so funny to me. <laughs> I know, right? Paper Mario uh, has that a lot as well. Yeah, I'm just not used to that because like... Usually in Manipolis Pokemon, uh, it's like very infrequent when that happens. Like I can only think of it like one time. Oh yeah. Yeah, and then like the other times, just like oh, if you hit optionals, this one fight three hours in, like we'll be fine, and you won't have to struggle that much. But you're still losing time. Ah, I see. I see. Oh, I think I did one too many. Yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> it's better to do uh, too many than too little, so... Because, <laughs> you know... It only wastes, like, 45 frames if I do uh, one extra jump. Compared to, uh... If I had, uh... Miscounted by one, and I was short by one, then... Uh, Balone would have still been alive, and he would have, um... What would he have done? Oh, he'll, uh, eat somebody and, uh, clone them, and then you gotta also, like... Kill him and kill the clone on the next turn. So can waste like potentially like close to half a minute sometimes if you uh, drop drop super jumps in that fight. All right, so here I'm getting both the attack scarf and the super suit. So the rewards for doing um, attack scarf is 30 super jumps, and then uh, super suit is for 100 super jumps. And so I've picked up the uh, broken item. So yeah, uh, with Balom 2 there, uh, so depending on D Gino's uh, damage roll, uh, when I attacked with him, then uh, he uh, determines how many uh, super jumps I needed to do. Since uh, Gino got almost the max roll on that hit, then I only needed uh, needed 57 super jumps to kill him, but then I uh, did 58 by mistake. But still fine. And yeah, if he gets a really low roll, then you might have to do like 59, so... There's that. And then yeah, I made another mistake, so after Gino leveled up, I uh, unintentionally raised HP instead of attack. But, um... That shouldn't... Uh... Shouldn't really matter much, I think. But... You might actually, like, not... Potentially, like, not even lose time at all. Uh... Assuming that, uh... Yeah, if, like, any of the boss fights don't, like, take an extra turn because of it, then it might not even, like, lose time entirely. Would have mattered more if I, like, accidentally did that with Mario, because his uh, jumps and super jumps would be weaker. So. Yeah, actually, Mega Smilax, I think I might not end up killing him and uh, killing the final phase in three hits, maybe, with, with Geno, so... But yeah. we'll see. <laughs> Is there a place coming up here soon? Uh, that'd be like good for like a break. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right after this mini game, I guess. Okay. So, Sky Troopers mini game. Um, so if you get under twelve seconds, then uh, you get a really good equip called uh, Trooper Pin. Uh, what was my time? Okay, ten eighty six. That's uh, fine. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna just do this menu first, and then I'll uh, then we can take the break. Yep. Just to make sure I don't forget. Uh. Okay. 
Okay, perfect. Um, we'll be back in just a few minutes. We're gonna have a quick wellness break. Uh, feel free to get up, hydrate, stretch, walk around wherever you're watching the stream. Uh, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Just a reminder though, uh, every runner today that we have on for my RPG show, I guess, uh, is gonna be on UBAF uh, from the 16th to the 19th. Uh, so I, I want everyone in chat to support everyone. I want you to follow Ryan Ford on Twitch. I want everyone to watch UBAF because it's gonna be an absolute like, like banger event. Like I'm, I'm guaranteeing you this personally right now. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Hello everyone and welcome back to my RPG show, I guess. Uh, we're in the middle of a uh, Super Mario RPG run. We are getting ever so closer to the end. Uh, before, before we resume the run, I just want to mention that unapologetically black and fast, finally I say it right, <laughs> uh, we'll be live on February 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th. It is a four day, uh, it is a four day event of all just black joy and uh, it's full of speedruns. Uh, use exclamation UBF in chat. Check out the schedule. It is really good. Uh, everyone who's on today is going to be on UBAF. So support everyone that's on today. Support UBAF. Uh, but Ryan, would you like to resume? Yeah. All right. Counting down from three again. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. So. Oh gosh, I'm <laughs> again having to reorient myself on like <laughs> where I am in the run. Yeah. So this is Bean Valley. Um, as usual, going to be trying to avoid pretty much every encounter at this point, and um, to very quickly get up to another uh, mini boss fight to see, which is um, Mega Smile X. So uh, on this fight, uh, it's generally usually not too dangerous, but um, one th one thing could go really bad on turn on his first turn is if he uses oh shoot what's the attack called uh pollen nap and puts mario to sleep uh turn one then that could be really bad fortunately he didn't so um so the fight should probably go as planned i assume maybe like one extra turn since i accidentally put uh hp into Gino instead of physical attack but yeah, I'm gonna throw my uh, yeah, throw two of my ice bombs as well uh, to kill the smaller heads. Now that there's uh, three of them, and do a pretty solid amount of damage to the, uh, the big head. And then probably gonna have to attack him three or four times uh, with Gino and Bowser, and then should be it. I think. Oh yeah, right. He has a 50% chance to also uh, counter attack whenever you hit him. So, uh, I completely forgot to defend with Gino, but <laughs> it's fine. He's still, <laughs> still very healthy. It's okay. You give him extra HP once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so there, uh, Mario had, um, or sorry, uh, since I put the, since I put HP into Gino, then, uh, he actually did hit a very low damage roll. The, uh, <laughs> On that last turn, so I had to attack one more time with Bowser to finish him off. He, he probably survived with like less than 10 HP or something. Because of that, that really low, that really, that, that really low roll. Yeah, so climbing these vines, so you can uh, speed it up a little bit by jumping. But um, some parts I'm climbing slowly because I really don't want to get into an encounter with uh, any of these enemies as well. There's also some uh, cheater tech, not really, but it um, since turbo controllers are allowed, uh, you could go for a strat called turbo vines, where you just use like the B button turbo and try to like, you know, jump off of it as soon as possible. But it's a, uh, it's actually pretty hard to execute. So like, I don't think anyone really goes for it. Are you telling me you're cheating in the video game <laughs> by speedrunning it? Uh, <laughs> you don't allow. Yep. We don't allow that on this channel. <laughs> Turbo buttons. Yeah, this is a 100 percent 
serious, no cheating speedrun channel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, nice. Uh, can't, I can't read that. Tariq. <laughs> Say that melee rules. But yeah, uh, this place is also the land of cutscenes, so uh, it's very. Uh, takes a while because there's just <laughs> a lot of downtime, pretty much. So yeah, this is uh, Mallow's um, uh, hometown, uh, Nimbus Land. So finding out that he's not a tadpole and that he might actually, actually be a cloud. Uh, what do I want to buy here? <laughs> uh, that's always a good indication of uh, that I know what I'm doing, right? <laughs> Okay, I'm pretty sure that's correct. I also, uh, since I had a lot of extra money, I actually bought a couple items uh, for safe, like safety reasons. So I think I'm a little more like loaded, loaded up than normal. So, um, in case of like random disasters, I think I should like potentially avoid any more deaths in the run. But yeah, so. Yeah, there's this, uh, as you can see, this gold statue that uh, <laughs> looks like Mallow, but that's uh, Mallow's father, who, uh, King Nimbus, who, uh, when he was young. So. Yeah, he's starting to find out that he uh, that he's a prince. Or Mallow, that Mallow's a prince of uh, this land. And then, um, yeah, that's, uh, there's an enemy named... Uh, Valentina, who's uh, trying to usur usurp the throne and is uh, kind of tricking the, the townsfolk and um, and has uh, the king and queen uh, locked up in, in their uh, lo locked up in their, their room. So with that, uh, there's this uh, chunky bird named Dodo, which uh, Queen Valentina is trying to pass off as Mallow, as as Prince Mallow, so it's like a all like fraud situation going on. I'm gonna have to stop you there. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely recommend playing the game for uh, <laughs> to, to have the story better explained <laughs> than than me just saying all the, all this lore at random. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to figure out what was happening and then you started explaining it and then I was like okay yeah and that didn't help for some reason <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a whole lot so this uh this bird chick here Valentina she's the uh the big bad trying to usurp the throne for uh Nimbus Land long story short pretty much <laughs> <laughs> can't believe a tadpole could be a prince it's so cute <laughs> Okay, listen. The cake makes sense, okay? It makes more sense than what's... <laughs> Passing off, like, a whole person as, like, a statue of, like, not even the same species? Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, this guy, Dodo, he, uh... Yeah, she's trying to pass him off as, like, uh, Prince Mallow, since, uh, Ma since Mallow went missing a long time ago. Um... Because of the events when he fell into the uh, tadpole pond and everything. And then uh, she's like, I found the missing prince, uh, Mallow. This is <laughs> this is him. So she's trying to use him to like be able to like control the throne, basically. <laughs> I feel like that's still a bad explanation, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any explanation so, um, is We better snuck than into no the castle by... Um, that guy, Garo, who's a master of making statues, so he made this statue of Mario and is like, told Queen Valentina that this is, um, art. Some unique, like, abstract art. And, um, now Dodo is, uh, supposed to be polishing the statues, which, um, I don't know how pecking them is polishing them, but uh, for this minigame, you just gotta not get pecked, so just you know, jump whenever he's about to try to peck you. 
because his helmet like covers his eyes, I guess, so he doesn't see Mario jump. So if he's looking at you and you jump early, then um he'll uh run run away and uh try to tell Valentina that one of the statues is moving. Or if you get if you get picked as well, then he'll uh do the same thing. And then uh if you fail the minigame twice in a row, then um uh then you have to fight him. But um, I wanted to win that mini game to get the uh, the feather that dropped. So that increases your speed by a lot as an accessory, which I'm gonna be uh, using it later on. Uh, I think Gen I think only Geno uses it in the run. So, uh, in, in later segments, not yet though. So scrapping that flower tab uh, for no reason, I guess. <laughs> like. As backup, if I like run out of MP or something, grabbing it for fun. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so there's a uh, a room key to progress further that I got, and then the second guy I talked to as a uh, just a backup item. He gives you a flower jar, which um, permanently raises your MP max MP by three. And uh, so whenever you use those items, like flower tab, flower jar, and flower box, they also uh, Restore your MP to full while they increase your max. So I'm gonna just use that later, uh, uh, since I'm gonna need to restore my MP uh, at some point later in the run. Then uh, just gonna use that. Now I've got uh, this giant egg. <laughs> but yeah, this egg is uh, so Birdo is inside and uh. Gonna have to do what five hits to the egg for it to hatch, and then uh, Birdo has um, seven, seven, seven HP. So somehow this is the least surprising part of this whole chapter. <laughs> Birdo hatching from an egg. <laughs> yeah, there's just suddenly an, a giant egg, and there's Birdo, and Birdo's a boss, I guess. That's fine. This this makes sense. <laughs> right. And for whatever reason, that uh, shy guy in the air was like watering the egg. <laughs> wow, I got really low damage rolls um, each time. So this should kill, I think. So sometimes you can uh, kill in three three attacks with Mario occasionally if you get um, high enough damage rolls. But uh, yeah, since he got uh, very low damage rolls each turn, uh, that wasn't really close to. Uh, being a three-hit kill, and there's a fan skip. Um, I forget. I think it's like a three-pixel wide window to be able to uh, jump over that fan and not get into an encounter. So um, I think my consistency is decently high at getting that skip, but it's uh, it's definitely hard tech that like everyone messes up or. Uh, there's some like solid runners that don't even like go for it because they find it too hard to just take the encounter instead. So yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, where where was I? Yeah, back to long cutscenes again. So um So we've gotten to uh What was this? Like the King and Queen's room. But um Yeah, Mallow's like you know trying to call them out for being frogs. It's like, where, where's my parents? And then, uh... Now that... <laughs> yeah, now that they're uh, getting found out for uh, beats us, they're like trying to run away at this point. So, I'm gonna take a uh, safety save here, because I'm gonna be uh, fighting, the fighting them soon. And um, you can also reset this room because it uh, makes the uh, movement more consistent to avoid encounters. Uh, if you move the same way in that room every time, then you can avoid encounters like pretty reasonably. Hey, got the two-frame jump off of Dodo. <laughs> just for the swag. Yeah, I was about to say, did it matter for anything? But that, that just looked <laughs> completely swagful. Yeah, that was just purely swag. <laughs> Only on GDQ Hotfakes were full of swag. <laughs> mm, yes, delicious, full of swag. <laughs> swag strats, baby. <laughs> yeah, so, um, 
So you'd have to fight Dodo as a uh, mini boss if you uh, don't kill him with the star there. Or I think you can also just let him uh, run away and leave the room and not fight him, actually. Yeah, pretty sure. But um, yeah, so I'm supposed to fight uh, Dodo and Valentina um, coming up after this cutscene. So she, uh, so she's gonna call Dodo for help when the fight starts, so that he, uh, he's gonna he carry he carries off the person who's in the middle of your party. So that's why we have Bowser in the middle because he's uh, the most tanky, and because you can't move Mario like into the middle as well, I guess. So Bowser's like the next like most tanky guy. So this one-on-one -on -one fight, um, yeah, I guess I have a few fire bombs, so I can throw one and then do one uh, untimed attack. Hey, nice freebie. I was literally about to say, I can't wait for the freebie, and then it happened before I came in on mute to say, the, <laughs> to say it. <laughs> yeah, so that was an optimal fight, plus the freebie was nice as well. Which, uh, I think I can use that versus uh, Smithy at the end, the final boss. Uh, potentially. So I might uh, save a bit of time there. So yeah, 420. Pretty dank amount of damage. <laughs> so uh, mostly we hope that Valentina does physical attacks. So yeah, she did one out of two, which is nice. And another 420 with that punch. Because <laughs> um, when, when characters have items equipped, uh, weapons equipped, then uh, they have a certain like range of damage that they can do. So um, I think 420 is like on the higher end of that threshold. So not so bad. Unfortunately, because I put uh, HP into Geno, then I think I can't do what we call turn skip, where uh, you could manage to kill Valentina on uh, this turn if you uh, roll high enough with uh, both uh, with with everybody, pretty much. Uh, throughout the fight, but yeah, since Gino had a low roll plus his under level, uh, under level for his uh, attack stat, that uh, it probably wasn't gonna work. But uh, Bowser died anyway to that diamond sauce, so it, uh, I wouldn't have had a chance at it anyway. Let's see, uh, got killed regardless, which also sometimes just happens. Like usually, you kind of expect Gino to die if she casts uh, spells a lot. Okay, cool. So also, as long as Peach doesn't gain the level after that fight, then uh, should be good enough on the EXP route for her to uh, to do the next uh, skill swap glitch uh, coming up. Because, um, yeah, if you have too much EXP, then uh, you can't uh, get her to learn Geno Blast. Because, uh, yeah, then she'll end up uh, level leveling up after this fight. <laughs> Birdo apparently hatched with that ribbon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, more dialogue because uh, so that key that fell out of the sky that they uh that they dropped uh was to uh was a key that locked uh Mallow's parents in their uh their bedroom. So Mallow went in, you know, to go see his parents for like. Yeah, for like the first time, and then whenever Mallow cries, it also rains. Or like uh, these Nimbus characters, whenever they cry, it rains. So he, uh, you know, went to have like a heartwarming reunion with them, and yeah, and then it's <laughs> so that's why it rained as well. Yeah, I'm looking at some of this dialogue. I pulled up Google Translate. I, I think I'm getting it. Uh, what I what I'm seeing from Translate is uh says, if you missed out on any of our past shows or events, be sure to check out our VODs on youtube.com slash games on quick. Uh, and if you're watching this video on YouTube, make sure to press the like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what that means in relation to the game, but it's cool that they put that in there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you should <laughs> definitely definitely uh, follow and subscribe if you, if you can. Also, follow our rudder. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash Ryan underscore Ford 522 question mark. Is that it? <laughs> hey, definitely got it correct. <laughs> I'm, I'm a real fan. Yeah. I'm a real one. <laughs> hey, I appreciate it. 
Yeah, all my socials are uh, the same. Ryan underscore Ford 522. Uh, find me on Twitter, Twitch, um, Instagram, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it's all the same. <laughs> I eventually changed a bunch of them to at least make it more uniform, even though it's not the the name the name I exactly wanted. Like, I'd rather not have the underscore, but eh, it is what it is. <laughs> All right, so this next skill swap glitch. Um, so I swapped. Uh, what was it Peach and Gino to try and get Peach to learn Gino Blast and. Uh, you see a pretty interesting like palette swap as well. Uh, whenever she casts it too. Okay, so I think how many enemies I killed. I hope that was mine, because uh, since I was behind a little bit on um, on EXP because of the lands end start. But, Are you telling uh, me there's the other this run? No way. Oh, sorry. Are you telling me there's glitches? <laughs> I, I would I would never have glitches on Twitch TV slash Game Zone Quick. <laughs> if there's a glitch, that means run. some people are gonna have to use their subs and prime subs and gift subs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, imagine there being glitches in uh, my one of my favorite speed games. <laughs> yeah, no so, way, surely, right? There's a nice uh, pink Geno. <laughs> yeah, because of uh, Peach using Geno Blast. But, uh, yeah, the palette color changes and stuff. Okay, Mario still hit level 15, so that's nice. Um, I was a bit concerned that uh might have not killed enough enemies. Uh, <laughs> I was hoping I could maybe squeeze through the door when that guy uh, dropped in the way. In my mind, you definitely did. It definitely counts. It was so close. So I just did a trick there called Stump It Skip. So that enemy is like supposed to be in your way enough that like you have to fight it and you can't run away from that battle. So, but yeah, you can uh, kind of move in a specific way to just barely like get around him and not, not encounter him. Uh, where's the flower? Oh, wow. I have so many items. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, flower jar. Um, what am I supposed to do here? It's like this. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's great. So the only thing that might be scuffed later is that, uh, again, when I was mentioning how the wiki is down for the notes, um, I'm not positive what the uh, backup <laughs> strats is supposed to be versus uh, Axum Rangers. So the next boss after this boss that I'm going to fight, I... Uh, I'm gonna be kind of winging it, winging it for that fight, <laughs> because of failing the manip on uh, knife guy and great guy, and since I don't have the rock candy either. So, gonna be trying to go off of memory a bit, and also uh, potentially winging it if I uh, make a mistake. So this guy Zar Dragon, um, he also has a 50% chance to counter attack whenever you hit him. And, um, okay, I got the bad pattern. So if he does a physical or uses a uh, scream, which is a status move um, that causes fear, then uh, the summon these uh, these orbs, which we call the dragon balls. <laughs> and um, the fire to them. The what? <laughs> Only four of them, though. <laughs> ah, shoot, I dropped it. So um, it's a little bit... Uh, Awkward for um, super jumping on Zar Dragon is that he, uh, because of how he's oscillating up and down, then um, uh, eventually, like the timing can, uh, your timing can be like thrown off a little bit because of him like hovering up and down from there. Oh shoot! Dropped it again. So. Should go one more turn, and then I can kill this first phase. Oh, he's gonna summon more Dragon Balls though. <laughs> now, now there will actually be seven in total, I guess, in this run. But yeah, um, I think I hit enough super jumps so I can just use a physical at this point. Kill him. Okay, cool. So uh, yeah, so that back. was an extra. 
<laughs> yeah, it was an extra backup because, um... Wait, what? Oh, because I uh, didn't get enough Ice Bomb freebies, and, um... I need to save my last Ice Bomb for Exxon Rangers due to, uh... Not getting... Because <laughs> of failing the, uh, Manip on Nice Guy and Great Guy, so... <laughs> You know, it all, uh, it's all coming together at this point. So, uh, Zombone. So, usually at the start of this fight, uh, these two party members are almost always dead. So this is, uh, pretty normal. And, um, since my HP is still pretty high with Mario, then uh, I'm just going to try to hit him with, uh, four physical attacks. Um, normally if Mario ends up being below, like, I think like 31 HP, then, um, you might want to uh, use ultra jumps after two attacks and hit him with about 12, 12 ultra jumps to kill him. Uh, just so that uh, so that uh, some don't get any extra turns. Even though it's uh, slower to do the ultra jumps on average, then yeah, it's making sure that you kill him instead of him potentially killing you the next turn. Zombone was purple in FF6. Is he an uh, actual enemy in... FF6? Oh, shoot. Also, yeah, it would be dope for a randomizer on Switch uh, to come out. I've been meaning to buy the game for myself, so... Because I do want to uh, learn to speedrun it at some point. But, uh... How does the randomizer gotta get my work money in this game? First. Oh, pardon? How does the randomizer work in this game? Uh, for this game? Yeah. Um, so what happens? Uh, so currently, for the current patch, um, the star pieces are sh shuffled around uh, among all the bosses, and also Star Hill, like, that I, when I got that one free star, like, sometimes a star piece could be there too. And then, um, it's uh, open world for the, the randomizer, so you can choose anywhere to go, and then... Depending on your settings, you can have like the shop items randomized. Um, enemy enemies and en enemy drops can be random. Um, and then yeah, star locations are randomized. That's pretty. And cool. also in the ne the next area I'm going to Bowser's Keep, the uh, door. Uh, there's gonna be these uh, doors that I'm gonna try to manip, but um, the doors are also. Uh, even, like, all the individual rooms in the doors are also randomized, like, in the randomizer. So. Well, I guess for a lot of those, I think you have the options to shuffle them or not shuffle them, so it also depend depends on you, but... Yeah, there is a uh, website for it, though. Oh, shoot, so I forgot what I'm supposed to do for the opening attack. <laughs> for, the, for the backup routing. <laughs> Alright, gonna wing it. So I think that I need to... Oh, okay. I think this was wrong, actually. <laughs> oh, no. I hope this doesn't uh, get me killed later. Because, yeah, uh, since they have a chance to counterattack you, then I'm pretty sure that that was wrong. Alright, so... I think I was supposed to throw a... I think it's a firebomb, and then I was supposed to throw an ice bomb later. Might be the opposite, actually. <laughs> oh, well, whatever. I, uh, fortunately, I have, like, a lot of extra items, so that shouldn't be the worst. Yeah, so what I'm hearing is we're fine and we're so back. <laughs> exactly. This might be a slow fight, but, uh... Yeah, I think especially with getting, um... What's it called? Uh... Getting Geno boost on Mario, I think, was the big thing. Oh, nice Ice Bomb freebie. <laughs> Probably will use that uh, two segments from now. Or three segments from now. To uh, speed up the uh, second last uh, boss. Okay, yeah, I think my HP is high enough to uh, take the breaker beams at this point. Alright, so... First phase is done, so second phase is the, <laughs> I guess, the Megazord, since this is like, uh, you know, like the uh, Percentai tropes, or like Power Rangers, like stuff like that. 
What's up? Got this attack called uh, Breaker Beam in English. Um, I know Japanese translation is uh, Justice Breaker, but it uh, has 999 HP. So um, as long as I keep my HP above 37, then uh should be able to survive this. <laughs> also, I recognize none to one. In chat. My goat, honestly. Okay, cool. <laughs> Two. All right. At least it didn't die to this fight. It's a uh, huge. <laughs> nah, but worst case, uh, if Mario ended up being below 37 HP at any point, since I uh, freebied a uh, mid mushroom versus Yardovich, and then I bought it. Um, I was already supposed to buy one from Nimbus Land if I didn't have if I didn't have one already in my inventory, but then I still bought it anyway, just as a extra safety safety precaution so we're chilling <laughs> yeah we've never we've never left we're so here <laughs> still here never left <laughs> don't even call it a comeback <laughs> you're so in the know <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i gotta go back to um yeah, so what happened with the story was uh, so after meeting Malo's parents and saving them, then they uh, said that we should go to Zar Drag, uh, go to Barrel Volcano to fight uh, Zar Dragon because there's uh, probably a star piece down there. And then got the star piece, but then the Axum Rangers stole it immediately after. So then we had to beat them to get the star piece back. Now, reporting back to. Uh, Mallow's uh, parents to try to find out what to do next because uh, they need to because we still need to go to Bowser's Keep again to uh, fight Exor, that uh, giant sword that crashed into Bowser's Castle at the start of the start of the run. But uh, Exor also collapsed the bridge, so we had no way to get there. But then, uh, so parents are uh, giving us permission to use the uh, royal bus in Nimbus Land and. Uh, yeah, since the bus is a cloud, you can uh, fly over there pretty much. So I'm going to reset here to uh, start an RNG manipulation for in Bowser's Keep. So I mentioned earlier when we were talking about the randomizer. So there's uh, a room that has six doors and you need to complete four out of the six doors to um, be able to uh, to be able to progress to the next area. So we're trying to manipulate the doors to uh, get the uh, four faster rooms because there's uh, two categories per per door so there's uh, action rooms battle rooms and uh, and uh, puzzle and uh, quiz rooms so or puzzle rooms sorry so um, the battle the battle rooms are uh, really really slow so we're trying to manip to uh, not get the battle battle doors um, if I failed the manip and if I failed the manip and uh, end up getting a battle door, I'm just gonna unequip all my items and uh, die on purpose, and, uh, and then just try a different door after. Because uh, you don't get a game over if you uh, die in the uh, battle rooms. So um, I closed that last text box on. Uh, I try to close it on a certain range of frames to hopefully have the manip uh, active. Um, I completely forgot that I don't have uh, my notes up. It's like a little like flow chart for it's like if you get this, if you get this room in this door number, then uh, you gotta choose this room after. Like, I have like an imager uh, image for it, so I just need to pull it up on my phone to take a look. <laughs> so it always starts with uh, door number two every time. So that's always the same. Um, I forgot how big the window is for the manip that I'm doing. Um, oh gosh, 10, 10 frames, I think. So I was like looking for a visual um, in the background as a uh, cube to uh, start the manip. <laughs> Taking an air ride on a frog. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I gotta remember to not say yes here, otherwise it'll give a uh, ex explanation of uh, the doors. Ah, so I might have failed the minute, maybe. 
not positive yet. No way. Yeah, because I got a, a platforming room first instead of a, a quiz or a puzzle room. So yeah, okay, I got a little annoyed when I uh, missed the first time there. Uh, <laughs> I swear that my controller acted up. I was like holding diagonal down right, and then I got like just a straight down input in between, and then it went back to down right, so I like was short landing on that platform. I'm like... <laughs> so much with the controller issues. I don't know what to tell you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe don't every cheat. every every speed run lately. All right, so door three. Uh, see if I got it. Nope. Okay, so I got a battle door, so I did fill the minute. Uh, so I got to remember to re-equip all my stuff later. Um, oh, actually, I. There you go. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so I'm just gonna lose on purpose and uh, not defend as well so that uh, I can just take full damage from hits. So, if Bowser's in the party, um, these enemies that are loyal to Bowser, they'll. Um, Bowser will scare them and they might run away. And um, if you have Bowser out of the party, uh, they they know that Bowser's there and they get confused. So uh, sometimes they might attack each other, as you may have seen. All right, so try door four. And yeah, if I end up uh, finding the other battle door uh, before I'm done here, then uh, yeah, I just have to take a loss again. Did you have to yeah, hold the diagonal for that room? Oh, sorry? Did you have to hold a diagonal for that last, like, platforming room? Yeah, I was holding, um, up and right. Okay. Oh, what the I just walked off that ledge for no reason. It just looked a little silly because it's isometric. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, hold, holding up and right diagonal instead of, like, just up or just right for, for that room. I had to think about it for a moment, too, when he asked. I was like, wait, what am I holding? <laughs> <laughs> speedrunner speedrunner autopilot <laughs> yeah I just I feel like that's one of the things turning me off of like playing the game but I feel like it's not even that bad I just am overthinking it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I'm sure that you'll get used to it honestly Um, I also wanted to grab that chest as a backup but um, yeah, it should be fine I already got one backup item from the Nimbus land shop so should be chill. Yeah, so I am gonna grab this chest. Uh, to a uh, Caro. Oh, what the? Whoa, crazy that that didn't reach. It has a huh? Caro Caro Cola in it. Oh, well, at least you don't get sent back sent back to the beginning. Yeah, you have like uh, was it ten tries to um, uh, ten tries in the uh, platforming rooms, and then uh, if you run out of tries, then you have to, you know, you fail the room, kind of the same as when I uh lost that uh that battle in the uh battle door okay so what the my turbo just stopped there that was weird okay there you go um what's it called uh what was i thinking uh so dr topper's uh rooms so these are like the puzzle rooms so this mini game is uh, whoever gets the 21st coin in that chest loses, so, um, you just try to end our turn on, um, multiples of five. Well, once, once we hit 10, then just end at 10, and then when we hit 15, we end at 15, and then, uh, end on 20, of course. And then, uh, this minigame, the uh, Cannonball, uh, what was it? Cannonball Solitaire? Um... Oh, did I do this right? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I have to question this now. <laughs> I'm actually unsure. Uh, I forgot that I was going to practice particularly this one at some point, but... Um, I think this should be fun, actually. So you, uh... 
leapfrog the cannonballs over each other. Okay, yeah, I did this uh, suboptimal, but it was still fine either way. So yeah, so you have to leapfrog them until there's uh, one left. Yeah, when I was a kid, I uh, had trouble with that one and I would just skip it. Okay, so door number one was the other battle door. So. Now I've got uh, Dr. Topper again, so it's quiz minigame. So uh, every question you get right raises you up uh, one spot on this uh, platform, and then you uh, move down two if you uh, get a question wrong. So, uh, Oh, shoot, it was the top one. Whoops. So yeah, if I get two wrong, then uh, it's a guaranteed loss, but... Um, Porsche I managed to win. Which, uh, usually if I'm rusty, uh, that's another one that I have trouble with because of, like... I don't, I don't read... I don't know Japanese, so... <laughs> Just kind of remember the order of the uh, answer sets, for the most part. So this one's uh, barrel counting, so... Um, just have to tell them how many barrels are, uh, are there. So, first one is 14, this one is 20, 45, I think. But yeah, it can be a, a random amount within a, a certain range, but, uh... You know, after all the experience, it's like... The first, uh... It's weird, the first three row, rows that are all, like, neatly st stacked on each other is like 35, so I just kind of go from there, but yeah. All right, and then the triathlon. Um, so we have to tell the order of uh, what place the, they all came uh, in the triathlon. So uh, they give the same um, uh, answer each time, but it's just uh, shuffled among them. So yeah, I just looked at the like three of their uh, answers, and then yeah, my process of elimination, I would know. So I gotta remember to equip my items as well, real quick, and uh, swap my uh, party order back. Big menuing fan right here. <laughs> hey, I'm glad someone appreciates it. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah, so gonna be fighting uh, this next boss, uh, Magic Koopa. Um, uh, what was I going to say about that? <laughs> I already forgot. Oh yeah, so Magic Koopa, uh, gen generally a decently safe fight. Um, since I'm on, like, the wrong route, my Eclipse are different, but, um, and ideally like to kill him in two turns, so, um, most of the time save and time loss, uh, assuming that you actually do kill him in two turns, is just, um, what spell he uses. So he used, um, Water Blast, which I think is the slowest one he could have used. But, um, so yeah, it's like a, like, minor time loss, like, maybe like five seconds relative to the fastest spell he could have casted. Which is, uh, I think Blast is the fastest, and I think Bolt, Bolt is... I can pass this. All right, and in case of uh, additional potential mistakes, I'm going to also uh, go back and save uh, after I do this menu. Big safety saving fan. <laughs> Definitely hasn't saved us before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, is this right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is right. Okay. Yeah, since I had um, less items to shuffle around due to uh, the backup routing for Axum Rangers. Then, um, yeah, then it was a little different, but uh, I should pretty much be back on like the normal uh, normal routing at this point. <laughs> Where the variation uh, converges. 
So, gonna jump on this guy once and then do, uh... What? How many super jumps do I do? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> 47. 47. Number. <laughs> I can't even count that high. What? Yeah, most speed <laughs> speedrunners can't. <laughs> Trust me, I can't either, honestly. Just, just do 100 <laughs> just again, guess. make it easy. <laughs> Imagine. Alright, cool. <laughs> Alright, you're also gonna get up real quick to turn on my uh, heater. My hands are starting to get really cold. <laughs> this is a reminder for everyone in chat. Uh, quick stretch, just for fun. Hydrate a little bit. <laughs> Indeed, we got a somewhat long cutscene coming on, so. <laughs> So I've got time to chill, pretty much. <laughs> oh, what I was also going to say about super jumps, like, way back, so... Yeah, I guess over the years it's become more common knowledge, but, um... So, from jumps number 14 through 100 for super jumps is, um... The timing is a three-frame window uh, for each jump, so... That's so why often... I wouldn't be surprised if uh, there was some people in chat when I was doing 100 saying that, like... They couldn't hit past like I don't know, like sixteen or like thirty or fifty or something like that. So the common common comment I usually see. But yeah, because yeah, because it's a three frame window at sixty FPS, so it uh, gets pretty tight, pretty early. So you can jump on the uh, right eye to get rid of his protection, and then uh protection also gets rid of um so it makes them vulnerable to statuses including um instant i guess instant death so uh gino whirl um if you get the time hit on um regular enemies it'll do um 999 damage so um yeah that protection there's normally a protection for that on bosses so that you can't just one shot a boss but um when you get or just get rid of xor's uh Status protection on his uh, when you knock out one of his eye, one of his eyes, then yeah, it uh, gets rid of that that check too. So thanks to that, yeah, you just cheese that boss in in one hit. Ryan, I'm sorry I have to tell you this. I'm lactose intolerant. I can't accept this type of cheese on Twitch TV slash Games Done Quick <laughs> slash subscribe. <laughs> 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 so yeah, if y'all would uh like to like to follow and subscribe, uh by all means. <laughs> <laughs> also actually you be up in the chat for fun. True. Yeah. <laughs> so we're uh providing you all this uh heat content, so uh hope y'all enjoy. <laughs> yeah, we do have uh lactose free milk in the fridge <laughs> upstairs, but <laughs> But yeah, so these screws, uh, I guess it's like a homage to um, Super Mario Bros. 3 uh, on the pirate ship areas. So yeah, whenever you jump on a screw facing uh, left, it'll move left. And if you jump on it facing right, it'll move right. Uh, it is a bit awkward with like the isometric platforming though, but... Especially that, that last one there is like common spot where usually uh, people end up falling including myself sometimes i've never fallen on that specific screw <laughs> so i don't yep. know maybe i'm just better <laughs> the perfect record <laughs> <laughs> all right so gotta hit everyone once and super jump then for safety strats i'm gonna boost the defense here since uh, again it loses two seconds but uh if countdown this clock uses um What's the attack? Uh, 
Hey, nice rock candy freebie. <laughs> if he uses a uh, dark star, if the bells use dark star uh, twice on Mario, it could uh, kill him. So that would uh, make me almost like certainly lose the fight or just lose a lot of time. So that was unlucky that he did um, uh, uh, scroll bell on uh, Bowser there, but. So I will lose a bit of time because I ideally want to hear that. So yeah, more often than not, usually Bowser's kind of the character that's uh, in danger, whether you'll save time or lose time. Because uh, he can die turn one. Wow, nice freebie again. <laughs> Lucky me. There's the dark star. So um, you ideally want to use three um, rock candies for this fight. Um, Bowser dying there shouldn't matter uh, at this point of the fight. Oh, maybe I should have revived him and used the rock candy with uh, Bowser. <laughs> nice freebie again. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. And yeah, I was lucky that the uh, when he countdown used recover that he used it on um, on his face and not the uh, dumps. So I was able to actually kill them. Yeah, so Japanese uh, saves roughly about nine minutes in the run, so hence why I'm playing this language. I knew it was a lot. I didn't realize it was nine minutes. That's so much time. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah, most games it's like, especially in retro games, like a lot of them, it's like usually Japanese is faster, but then, yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's a lot for this game. Is that? Probably majority of this is like uh, Nimbus Land. So yeah, that was an unfortunate encounter. It was a, another controller acting up situation, but this is what it is. So it uh, dropped my diagonal and started inputting only right briefly. Hey, I got a, I still got a wrong work despite uh, failing the uh, Manip and Bowser's key. Cause, uh, whoops, cause um, what's it called? Uh, uh, when you do the Manip, uh, in Bowser's Keep, then uh, if you run off that ledge um, when entering this room, it'll um, give you... Uh, it'll, like, place you in the wrong slot, uh, like, towards the end of the room. So I got the uh, second best position of the, the wrong room, so still saved a bit of time. I just I realized that it's called it Nimbus Land because of, like, the cloud. <laughs> I, I, I just yeah. put that together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my my world is, is shattering right now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I just needed... Um, since I got a bunch of rock candy freebies, then um, I have the liberty to do only 20 super jumps here and throw this rock candy. Otherwise, normally you do like 37 super jumps for this fight. But it's a little faster to drop it early and to just throw the rock candy if you have extras and yeah i got like three three freebies that was crazy so depths <laughs> clouds nimbus what do you mean <gasps> dang Oscar, i, I, smell I just put together crazy. something that's way more embarrassing than that actually uh-oh <laughs> <laughs> i'm all right i don't even want to talk about it anymore <laughs> <laughs> now i'm curious what is it <laughs> i just realized that Mallow is like a cloud. Oh, <laughs> I think I see. I think I see what you're getting at. Yeah, <laughs> the, the the marsh marshmallow. Yeah, I yeah. I... <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Maybe I should just play this game, and I wouldn't have these like embarrassing realizations. Live on Twitch.tv slash Games on Quick slash Subscribe. <laughs> Mallow, marshmallow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I was a bit concerned that that uh that this guy wouldn't have died in two turns, but uh because of uh Gino missing out on a bit of his uh, physical attack from that mistake on the level up, but uh it worked out. It still it, it actually didn't make a difference, so I'm glad. So we can do sixty four super jumps here.
Oh, shoot. All right, that's fine. Um, I fortunately, since I bought... Oh, where is it? <laughs> or since I still have this, the mid mushroom and I bought another one, then um, I should heal Mario because there was a chance he could die. Then I'd probably have to reset. So whatever uh, Earth Link here, the snake, uh, uses uh, poison, that attack, then uh, you can't block that one. So uh, Mario got hit pretty hard last time. I'm not sure how many I need. <laughs> Whatever, I'm gonna just do 26 and hope that that's fine. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we're so I, fine. I uh, did a little too many, but um, better safe than sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, doing too many in this situation seems way better than you do too little and then all of your party members die and then everything yeah, bad exactly. happens. So. Yep, yep, exactly. Oh, uh... <laughs> I forgot, since I unequipped all of Peach's stuff, that, uh... Oh, what the heck? Bowser's... Wait, is this normal? No, this is normal. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> just misremembered there. So I, I thought that, uh... Bowser was supposed to be right under Peach in the, uh... In the character's menu, but... I think that's normal, actually. Oh, I could have actually just used a rock candy and not done the menus here because of all the freebies I got. But it's fine. I'll probably uh, use the rock, some of the rock candies on uh, Final Boss as well. Alright, that should be the last level up for Mario right there at 16. So there's a little bit of like a kind of like a mini boss gauntlet at this point inside the, the weapons factory. So, gonna be using, yeah, Geno Blast and attacking with Mario for the most part for these fights. Oh, this game never came out in Europe. I never knew that. Yeah, so it's a bit of a cutscene here, so time to hydrate a bit. Chat, he's talking to you. You've got to hydrate. You know what to do. <laughs> Yeah, that crane grabbing Mallow and uh, and all that. So mostly just chilling while that was happening. And then yeah, some uh, Toad managed to make it all the way to the weapons factory to try and help support uh, Mario and Peach. So um, yeah, he's got a shop here, but uh, I'm not gonna buy anything though. And uh, he also gives you a rock candy, which uh, is also nice for the route. So the rock candies is, yeah, so since I've been using them all this time, it's a AOE item, a single use, that uh, base damage is 200 on enemies, and uh, if you uh, have an attack up boost, it actually, the attack up also boosts them by 50% as well, so that's why when uh, most of the rock candies I've been throwing have been doing uh, 300 uh, most of the time, because been doing them either after using a Geno boost on a character or um, if they have the uh, Troopa pin equipped from uh, when I got that item uh, uh, right before we took the second break and I was doing the uh, Sky Troopa's uh, platforming, platforming minigame. No best. So yeah, that blue uh, Shovel Knight guy has about 800 HP, so I think I did like 802 in total. It's like just enough. So yeah, Bowser, uh, <laughs> he says like some haiku that, um, I don't know if it's like translated or if it's like the same, like translated or not. I actually forgot the haiku, like how to even <laughs> say it for the English part. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have it memorized, but I <laughs> I forgot. It's okay, because if since you don't have it memorized anymore, we can talk about how you used to have it memorized, and we can talk about like what it might be instead of you just saying it. <laughs> yeah. 
gonna <laughs> try to try to recite it, and I hope that I'm right. Unless if chat says it first. Hope that was correct. Okay, I'm gonna do one more just in case. <laughs> okay, yeah, I would have miscounted by one, so uh, it's good that I did that one extra jump. <laughs> Better safe than sorry, yet again. Because <laughs> uh, that probably would have lost like close to half a minute if I uh, was under by one. Yeah, I feel like the end of this run is just scary because you just have to count constantly. And I can count to like <laughs> 12, maybe like 13. I don't know what comes after that though. Oh. Oh my gosh, that's higher than me. <laughs> I, ha I had to guess right there to even, <laughs> to even get mine. Yeah, I think the haiku is like, like the moon over my genius and brawn is wasted on these fools. I think it was something like that. Uh, might might be either missing words or might have said the wrong order of words potentially, but <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Because uh, Bowser was getting ignored before that fight by the enemies because they kept uh, talking to Mario and Bowser's trying to act tough and <laughs> yeah, they just kept ignoring him. So he was uh, sad about it after. <laughs> yeah, it's close enough. It, it definitely counts for you said a haiku and it was deep. <laughs> Alright, so I got it right. Oh, I think I was not supposed to do that jump, but it's fine anyway. Nice freebie. Uh, I want to use the ice bomb. Okay. Sometimes I mix the ice bomb and rock candy in the inventory, so. Uh, I was just uh, making sure. Oh, okay. I definitely did the uh, end part of this fight wrong, but. Huh, I wonder if I could throw this. <laughs> this is just for science at this point. I'm curious. Okay, so. That did not work, but whatever. Good to shock her to probably kill him. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're scientists here on GDQ Fix. <laughs> I try, try to wing it to see if I could uh, finagle a way to keep either a rock, an extra rock candy or ice bomb <laughs> for Smithy, but <laughs> ended up wasting time, so it'll probably like might save a little time on Smithy <laughs> with the extra item that I was able to keep, but then also just lost time there from like keeping, <laughs> trying to keep the item. So. <laughs> Time save is time save, so okay? Exactly. If you, if you take three <laughs> minutes to do a 0 0.2 second time save, then it's still time save. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Just time save elsewhere. Uh, going back to save also like loses time on this cutscene because the uh, crane won't immediately come to grab you because it has to put down this enemy first and then uh, eventually come and grab you. But, um... This is uh, the final boss uh, about to start, so just wanted a safety save in case, uh, you know, things happen. <laughs> so, I have died to Smithy 2 before and have lost like like 8 minutes or something, so... I uh, think nothing bad will happen, actually. <laughs> I'll say it. Yeah, I have a lot of like extra items, so I'm a lot more confident this time. Uh, like for back for backup purposes and stuff. So yeah, for Smithy one. So gonna start off with a physical with Mario, and then uh, depending on if I get a high roller or not, then gonna do either. Oh, it might determine uh, how many per jumps I do. That was a really high roll. So um. Here, if I have two rock candies, uh, I think I have two. Uh, where are they? Yeah, I do have two. Okay. Yeah, so I can do, I think, 61 super jumps on this next turn. Instead of uh, 71, since I was able to use that rock candy on the first turn.
Okay, should be good. Yeah, 1,312. Uh, yeah, that's correct, I'm pretty sure. So, How do you even count yeah, I that many jumps at one time? <laughs> Yet again, I uh, had to guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You just you just felt right. the vibes out. It just went until it felt right. <laughs> it's like I, I think this is sixty one. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, this uh, Santa Claus phase is over finally. So yeah, Smith Smithy is definitely dangerous. Uh, really dangerous if you uh, drop super jumps on the first phase, particularly. Oh, uh, if Tech wants to uh, up the volume on their end, I'm going to turn the volume down on my end because I saw the volume peak uh, peaked a few times. And it was like, I mean, like the red scrambly thing. So I don't know if like the game maybe sounded weird because of that. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> In between jumps, oh my god. I often uh, try not to blink sometimes when I'm doing super jumps, <laughs> like the big thing. You and me aren't the same, because I try to blink when I'm trying to do L cancels, okay? <laughs> oh yeah? I'm That's actually. I'm kind of bad at it, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I can do it every time, but I have to be like locked in, I have to be like, ugh. <laughs> I will not get forced to opt. Super... <laughs> That's crazy. No, it's not, it's yeah, not going that bad, going for 100 but, uh... this time. But yeah, I heard you. I heard you. Yeah, wave trines make oh. me make me scared though. <laughs> Wait, do you actually find them difficult or nah? Uh, d yeah, I'm I'm bad at them. I just do the inputs too slow, generally. That sense. Because uh, I was gonna say like a common thing is like sometimes uh, sometimes people try to jump out of the chine too fast, and then you're uh. If you do, then you'll get uh, still like locked into your shine because uh, of that. Yeah, I'm okay, past that point. I just do it too slow. Ah, <laughs> uh, fair. Yeah, I'll try a hundred again for this one. Okay, yeah, that's 100, so... Uh, I gotta hope that he... Hey, where's the rock candy? I thought I freebied one. Oh, I guess I didn't. Okay, well, it's fine. Trying to, uh, make up for some damage is, uh, uh, when I dropped the super jumps the first time. And, uh, I think that ice bomb should put me pretty much, like, right, right back on, on track. I was going for a gamble here, where, um... I'm gonna try to go for it again, though. Um, so there's a 50% chance that uh, Smithy will change heads. So I want him to change to the chest head. If I have his HP above uh, 2,000, it's so like 2,001 or higher, then uh, he would um, transform his head. And um, the chest head is the sweet of fire. So um, I would have tried to use um, Super Flame and uh, throw all those fire bombs that I freebied, that him as well. Uh, this is really bad that I dropped the super jumps there. Cause uh, I wanted to try to go for about 68. I think 68 would uh, kill him at this point. But um, since I wasn't getting the uh, good RNG for him to uh, transform his head, then 
Uh, the backup is just to do more super jumps if he doesn't transform. And there he is. So now that his uh, health is really low, then um, probably in the part where he'll uh, his transformation will be random. So got Mage Head, which uh, has a lot of powerful spells, which is dangerous. But um, what's it called? I grabbed that Red Essence in Land's End as a uh, backup, just in case that I got. Um, for the most part, in case I got Mage Head particularly. So, um, so this should be a safe end, pretty much. Because, yeah, invincibility for three turns, and uh, Mario's, like, still, like, really tanky with the super suit and stuff. So, Mage Head has really low um, physical defense. So, um, oh, there. I got him. Yeah, so it has really low physical defense, so my physical X will hit really hard, but the spells are slow. So, uh... Or slow and strong, so it's like dangerous for both of us. And yeah, uh, normally we just do time for marathons. Usually, you just do it on like final input, but um, could also. <laughs> or well, yeah, I actually just did the final input with turbo by accident, but yeah, so time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I was thinking there was more dialogue. <laughs> well, GG's. <laughs> Hey, thank you, thank you. I don't even want to look at my time. Nah, I'm just kidding. So, what was my time? Like, it was 320 or worse? 313. 28. 313? Oh, shoot. Yeah, but. Okay, so. No credits, so. <laughs> yeah, quite a bit overestimate, but. <laughs> it's alright. <laughs> yeah, your, your original estimate was 315, assuming there was time to do credits. So, it's good enough. You're st it's, it's still under. <laughs> Dude, that works. Yeah. Oh, wait. Actually, my bad. There is text here. So time would have been here. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh... Uh, whatever. <laughs> I still beat the game. That's all that matters. <laughs> and hoping that everyone enjoyed while I uh, <laughs> put together this run. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was fun. Um, Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, glad that y'all enjoyed. So, yeah, thanks for having me. Having me, Limey. Mm -hmm. So, this was what like a couple of months in planning so yeah uh glad yeah. to have have it work out and everything yeah yeah where can chat find you where, where would, you, would you like to like shout anything out all right everybody in the chat so yeah actually to shout out uh first off yeah shout outs again uh Limey for having me for this event shout outs to the ubaf crew and uh inspiring this event to uh be a thing and uh and check out UBAF in about two weeks from now. And then, yeah, if you, uh, if all y'all want to follow me, I'm at uh, Ryan underscore Ford 522 on all my socials. So Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and YouTube are all all under the same thing. And uh, yeah, a speed run. Yeah, I've learned about like 14 games. <laughs> Most of them has been like pretty much after COVID hit. So, <laughs> um, all, all of them aside from this game, Magic. <laughs> it was all like from mid 2020 onwards. So, um, you mostly catch me, uh, grinding Super Metroid lately. I'm trying to get like a 43, hopefully, in that game. Yeah, you've um, been a fiend on Super Metroid recently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been, uh, complaining about my controller just like in this game. So I've uh, <laughs> been having a slow progress, but. <laughs> I'm going to push through it. <laughs> I, I believe, I believe. <laughs> and yeah, I might catch uh, some random games that you may have uh, never heard of on my stream. So uh, <laughs> feel free to drop by. But yeah, uh, <laughs> if that's it, uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes. We'll be having Nestani on with just a sneak peek of the Fire Emblem run that's going to be on UBAF. Again, exclamation UBAF to check, to check out the schedule. Uh, and everyone who's on today is going to be on U UBAF as well. So we'll see you in just a few minutes. Get up, stretch, drink some water. All right, peace.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my RPG show, I guess. Uh, it's not getting better. Um, we're back here with Fire Emblem and Nastani. If you'd like to introduce yourself, because I know uh, nothing hello, about this everyone. game. Hello, uh, everyone. My name is Nastani. Uh, most of you, uh, if you know me before, you probably have seen me run uh, platformers. This is the opposite of that. So uh, this is a little bit of a, a different type of game that I'll be playing. Uh, this is Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones or Fire Emblem 8. This is the, the this is the third game that released in the U.S. market of the Fire Emblem series. The first like five were uh, Japanese only releases, so this is the third U.S. version. But if you notice, we're not playing on the U.S. version, which we'll get into that a little bit. Um, but yeah, and I'm you know excited to show you this game. Uh, we good to just just hop right in, or, or, or what's the vibe here? Yeah, just, right, just give a cool. countdown. All right, so uh, time will start in uh, three, two, one, go. All right, so right now we are running E-Frame Route in uh, Fire Emblem Sacred Stones. There are two different routes. There's E-Frame Route and Erica Route. We're kind of jumping in the middle of the run. Um, but all you really need to know is that Fire Emblem is a, a turn-based strategy game, so that means that I have a turn, I move my units, the enemy has a turn, they move their units. Um, and so right here, we're just going to do some prep work before the battle. We're just going to move basically our units in the, the proper uh, scenarios. Um, we're going to skip some dialogue. And uh, the big thing to note about this whole run is that it is completely... Um, we complete, we, we RNG manip everything. Um, and when I mean everything, I mean everything. Um, so uh, that's not what I do. So this first turn, what we're going to do is you saw me drag uh, the horse's cursor, which is named Seth. I dragged him up to the top, his cursor up to the top, and I basically did like a little out and back at the top, and that basically was me manipulating the game, right? So anytime that I force the game to redraw a cursor, um, that burns a set of random numbers, which affects things like hit percentage, um, crit percentage, things of, of that nature. Um, so like right here, I'm going to go down. That forces the game to redraw. That counts as a, as a redraw. When I go down here, I'm going to redraw, redraw, right? So that redraw is basically burning a set of random numbers so that I can get uh, the hit that I want or the crit that I want, etc. Um, and a fun thing to note about this game um, is that we are playing on the Japanese version specifically, which kind of leads into the next turn uh, that we're doing. But right now, this main unit I'm using is Seth, who's killing all these enemies. He's basically like your typical, like, super broken unit that you get at the beginning of the game. But the cool thing about Seth is that uh, normally in Fire Emblem games, your, like, OP unit that they give you at the beginning of the game has, like, a fall-off. Well, in this game, he doesn't really fall off that hard anyway in the base game. But also, when I say that we RNG manipulate everything, I mean we RNG manipulate the level ups themselves, which is actually really, really cool. So we'll like basically just feed him basically strength, speed, and skill, which strength is how hard you hit, skill is how often you crit, because uh, a thing to note is that we cannot uh, manip crits if we do not have, um, if we don't have crit percentage at all, right? So like if we have a 0% chance to crit, there's no way to change that. So we're just gonna uh, carry E-frame here and and I think this chapter will go faster if we just move the enemies out of the way. What, what do you guys think? Do you think that will be a, a good idea if I just uh, simply just control the enemies? I don't want to say anything. I just don't <laughs> think anything bad will happen at all, ever. I, I trust you. I trust you with my life right now. Yeah, so this is, a, this is pretty nice for us because we're basically going to clear the path and then we're going to end the enemy's turn and they don't get to do anything, uh, which is great for us. So... Um, what if we just did it again? And just keep ending their turn. Isn't this cool? <laughs> they just don't get a, a chance to play. So this is called uh, Enemy Control Glitch, or ECG for short. Um, and the long and short of how this works is that there are actor tiles on uh, the stage. This one specifically is in the top left-hand corner, which is why you saw me lure uh, this knight to the top left-hand corner. And I'm having Gar uh, Garcia and Gilliam standing in this specific positioning so that the enemy is on said actor tile because you need the enemy to be on an actor tile in order to activate the glitch. Oh, boom! Uh, Gilliam is dead, uh, but that's fine. Uh, because we're, it's based on the enemy and not us, so where the enemy's positioning is. 
And essentially, we activate the actor tile uh, by, um, what do you call it? By opening the door. So I open the door with E-Frame, and um, that door essentially is what created the glitch to happen. Um, and we're going to intentionally watch this cutscene because for some reason, if I if you don't watch that cutscene for at least a little bit, your RNG goes a little out of whack. Um, I'm unsure why that happens. It just does. So I just know how to <laughs> navigate that. Um, here is uh, chapter 10. And this is one of the few chapters where we actually don't use Seth at all. And this is because we're actually recruiting the, the, the next or like next unit that we're we would normally use to actually defeat the game. We're not going to get that far today. Uh, but this is Cormag who just missed, um, and this guy who also just missed. Um, these guys really can't hit us. Like they can't hit the broadside of a moisture evaporator. I'm not going to lie. They they just keep whiffing on us. But uh, it, and that's great for us. And so there are certain units uh, that are enemy units that have faces. And so this is Cormag. Uh, normally enemy units just have like a generic like P and G on them, right? And so you can't recruit every enemy unit, but there are specific enemy units that you are allowed to recruit, and Cormag is one of them. And the reason that we want to use Cormag here is because he is a flyer. And flyers are really OP because uh, they can ignore terrain. So like these walls, like if I hover on this guy, he can't go, this is a horse, he can't go over the, the walls there, right? And so... It's, it's important that we use flyers mostly throughout most of the game, just simply because we can go wherever we want. We can go over water, we can go over walls, we can go over mountains. So we can really just trek to our goal of the map uh, very quickly, um, unless it's a kill all map. But like, for example, this is a kill boss map uh, or it's a defend for like, or not a defend, it's a survive for 13 turns map or kill the boss. We're obviously just gonna kill the boss here. Um, because that's faster than waiting for 13 turns for these guys to like move and stuff, right? Um, and there's different uh, objectives uh, depending, but right here we're just gonna kill the boss with two crits that were at like I think like psst, like 20 something percent, <laughs> something really good, you know, that should allow us to to happen, right? And we're now just gonna make our way into uh, chapter 11. So this chapter. Uh, is very input dense and this is basically the reason that the estimate is a bit longer as well as just chapter 13 being long as well um and this is because uh there's just a lot of movements that i have to do in this map which you will see why but first i'm just going to move franz up here who is literally just there to give me an iron lance for tana so that she can kill two enemies <laughs> uh later on and here we're going to talk about something uh else about ecg which is we can create actor tiles with uh, the torch staff. So we simply put the torch on this space here, uh, and then this gargoyle is going to run on that space, and we're going to soft reset the game. Um, so the reason that we're playing on the Japanese copy of the game is because only the Japanese copy can do uh, this glitch, which is basically we press uh, start select an A, start select A and B, um, and then we hold start, and then that basically soft resets the game and places you like into what turn you were basically already on, right? Instead of going all the way out to like the main menu, it basically just places us right back into the turn. Um, and so we're gonna set up another actor tile with uh, Molder there, and we're going to do some fun little redraws here just to get uh, good RNG for this. And we're going to switch to the Iron Lance because right now our, our goal is since we just recruited Cormag, we want to feed all of those enemies on that boat into Cormag to basically beef him up and get him really OP really quickly because uh, in the next map, we actually want to have him uh, be level 15 so that we can change class, which will set up for the, the, the rest of the run. Um, and so... The... the and... Basically, you can kind of see where this is going. Um, again, all these stat changes that you're going to see are basically predetermined or influenced by us in some way. Don't ask me the super specifics on how this works because I'm stupid. Uh, but the good thing about this game is that you can kind of be stupid and play it because you can just copy what other people have already done all the hard work and routing, and then you can just kind of have fun and just be like, oh, if I just move my cursor like them, I'm going to get the same result, right? Which is very fun. Um, 
and specifically uh, on these level ups that you see, I'm getting the the left side of the stack cheat a lot, which again is health, strength, uh, skill, and speed. And here, that guy just went on our actor tile. So, okay, fun fact: if you reset too soon. Um, you can try again. If you reset too late, though, you are screwed, and you have to restart the whole chapter. So, luckily, I was just a little soon on that one, so it's fine. But now we're going to control the enemies ourselves. This is because uh, Mulder, uh, since he can't attack, he draws a lot of attention, and so we basically were just writing out the enemy turn until that they would actually start to kill Mulder, in which case we don't want that to happen. So now we have to basically control... Uh, these enemies so that we can feed them specifically into Cormag and get him more levels. And so as you're going to see here, this whole left side of this stat sheet is just basically going to fill up, right? We want all four of those stats, really just the bottom three, but, you know, health isn't that bad either because uh, you're going to see specifically in chapter 13 that we're going to basically bait Cormag's health, which will be fun. But for now, I'm going to kind of just keep uh, moving these enemies um, and there are enemies in this fog here and also just what the torch staff does in general since I forgot to kind of mention it is that it clears the fog so that you can see but again for us the main usage is so that we can set up actor tiles so that we can use ECG whenever it is fastest and the thing about ECG too is that a lot of times you don't want to spam it in every single level just because the enemies moving themselves is faster than you moving the enemies right um and so we only want to do this when it is strictly imperative that it will be faster to do so. So like, for example, at chapter nine, we were literally ending the enemy's turns sooner, which basically uh, any time that uh, an enemy face is going right, it's eating up time by just watching them move their units. And so if you can interrupt them uh, from not moving their units, then you save time, right? Fun crit there. Um, and here we're gonna move the last enemy. I'm very happy that I saw that crit there because some, if you don't see that crit there, that means you messed up something and that means I didn't mess up anything, which is very good. <laughs> I just so kind of can't believe that you know everything that's happening. Like the minute is just that like, like fleshed out and it's, it goes through this long. What do you mean? Um, I'm used to games like Pokemon where uh, the minute usually goes for like maybe maybe a couple of minutes so you can get like oh, a couple of encounters and just like get your yeah. stats and then that's kind of it but like this is just this is the whole this, run <laughs> yeah this is the whole run and it's it's super impressive <laughs> yeah which is like super shout outs to like Kirby Master and that's pretty much the only Fire Emblem runner I know uh, and all the others who actually worked on this game because I know it was more than just him but like they were the ones who created this route and I'm simply just basically doing the route so they did all the like nosedive like how can we like super strictly optimize this to basically save time because there's a lot of things to to think about when you have like such a powerful tool as ecg in your disposal right because you're like oh i can actually abuse this and basically save a bunch of time in my routing but oftentimes you just it's faster to let the enemies move. And another thing is that you don't really want to like set up crits all the time. Uh, because again, if you're burning time to set up a crit, when you could just two hit the enemy and kill them, it kind of doesn't really matter, right? If you're having to, you know, m make the game redraw the cursor like 12 times in order to get a crit, you know what I mean? Like it's not the most optimal thing in the world. And so here is the class change that we were setting up. Uh, bop, bop, bop that we were setting up uh, last time. This is kind of just a dead turn where Kalek, who is the enemy up there, is basically hunting down Ephraim. This is the part of the story where Ephraim and Erica both are getting hunted by uh, Valter. Erica is getting hunted by Valter. We are getting hu hunted by Kalek. Uh, and basically, uh, the super long and short is that their empire invaded our empire. And so they're hunting us, trying to kill us to acquire our bracelets, which open up an OP door that gives them like a, like a, a stone that like they want to destroy. That's, that's all you need to know. <laughs> that's, that's the, the kind of vibe of what's going on. But the, and 
and basically they want to kill the stones so, so that they can spawn more of these like monsters which you may notice is that there's kind of two separate units on the screen right now where there are like these human units like on the horses with the axes the swords stuff like that with magic um oh good that missed that's very nice for us um and it's mixed in with uh you know these these sort of like you know cyclops monsters zombies and that's basically we're fighting both sides and the 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 story thing is that oh it's really weird right now that the the monsters are obeying grotto forces right and we don't know why that's happening uh but yeah anyway uh everything's gonna miss us from now on which is really good for us because uh a thing to note about flying units is that uh these units bow users uh they will do a lot of damage to us um uh because basically how the weapon system in this works is that uh bows are, are super effective against flyers for just simplicity's sake right and so they just do a lot of bonus damage to us and so a lot of times we will want to either avoid them with Cormag or just force them to miss because if we take too many hits, we just get owned, right? Um, and we don't want to get owned. Ugh. And speaking of getting owned, um, I didn't have a transition. Anyway, um, <laughs> this is chapter 13. That's so real. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to do some prep here, uh, which is hard to... Uh, that's not what I want which is hard to think while doing this, so we're just gonna... That's not what I want it. So basically what I did is I equipped a bunch of uh, javelins to uh, both Cormag and, uh, and Seth. And that is because uh, javelins uh, are our primary weapon of choice uh, in this whole run. Uh, by the way, this is a dancer, which basically just lets us move twice, which is nice, but unfortunately, dancers can't really keep up with us because they only have a movement of five and we have a movement of like eight. So we normally get like one or two use uses out of them. And we're going to do another class change with Garrick because uh, this map is a little interesting because we have to basically spread out our units pretty thin because this is a kill all map. So we have to kill all the enemies on the map and basically reinforce the spawn in and we want to basically in the map before too many reinforcements spawn in. Uh, but back to the javelins, we want to equip javelins on uh, Cormag and, and Seth because um, in Fire Emblem there are units that can attack from range. Uh, typically the range is one to two that most units uh, can fight you in. Um, but there are like certain like uh, stretch things like longbows which can fight us like three units away. But luckily we don't have to, we don't interact with any of them in a meaningful way. Like we don't have to worry about them. For example, um, so pretty much every unit that fights us is a one to two unit range. So that means javelins will allow us to uh, counterattack bows because if we were just using an iron lance and we could only attack one unit away, we would have to spend a player turn to go intentionally kill one of these units rather than just being able to counterattack them while the enemy phase is going on, right? Um, and... Yeah. Those, those are javelins. <laughs> um, this is... Uh, this is also just kind of one of my favorite maps casually, just because it is just a very fun map to, to play, and also very hard at this point of the game, too. At least for me, you know, other people... You know, I'm not good at strategy games. Let's just put it like that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And in the, in the speedrun, it's also very interesting, too, because, again, we're spreading out our units pretty thin. And the thing to note about this point of the run, too, is that we have very few units that can actually keep up with the enemy units because uh, this whole run up until now, we've basically been sacking uh, our other units to funnel XP into, like, one or two units those being Cormag and, uh, and Seth. And so since no one else has experience, we're kind of limited in the people that we can use in order to clear the map, uh, which is why we immediately class change to Eric, because whenever you class change, you basically just get a bump in stats. And so... Uh, one, two, three, four, five... Whoop. You basically get like a giant bump in sta stats, and basically this bump allows us to... 
uh, clear out the left side of the map, which is exactly what we want to, or not the left side, the right side of the map with Garrick. And um, two, three chapters, the math. In chapter 10, let's just, let's just say chapter 10. <laughs> In chapter 10, we got Dussel, who is this unit on the far left, who is a, a pre-promoted unit. So like he's already at like the highest class. So there's like beginner like recruitment classes and then there's uh and then you can class change in this game and basically we're only using class change units right now because they are the only ones that can kind of just solo all of these uh, enemies at this point of the game um and so rounding this is kind of a mess because you're like okay i still want to funnel xp into seth and and cormag in order to get them at, you know as high level as possible so that you can beat the final boss later on and just the other bosses in general along the way um Hello, train, thought, where'd it go? Um, <laughs> but yeah, and so basically the the approach to this map is just kind of having both of them take out the middle portion because the middle portion of the map is where the most enemies are. For lack of <laughs> better thoughts. There's probably other things that go into it, but from an outsider perspective looking in on the route that I didn't make, <laughs> um, this is kind of the, the vibe that, that I see going on. Um, and this map is definitely longer, and that's a good example of both, right? I just took a ton of HP because I got hit by that bow, and now I'm at 11 HP. Um, and surely that will be fine, right? I can just finish out this map with 11 HP. I think that'll be good. We don't need any more than that, right? Yeah, I, I trust you with my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to one-shot this mage smile, and then uh, we're going to do something pretty interesting here. Um, where we're going to use this energy ring as Seth here. And this is actually really important for chapter 15 specifically, uh, because if uh, energy rings and just similar items basically just give you a raw boost in a stat, right? So there are like skill books that give you a, a point in skill. <laughs> and then there's uh, specifically what we used was an energy ring, which gives us plus two strength, which is not very important for this map, but it's very important for chapter 15 because we are setting up a one-hit kill on one of the bosses in chapter 15, which we won't see, but that is like, I think that's the, because I don't think Erica route uses a stat boost item, so that's a, I think that's a, an exclusive one to, to this route, which is pretty cool. But for now, we're just going to keep kind of just spamming javelins and uh, we're actually not going to kill this guy uh, you know, unfortunately, that plus two strength is not going to one-shot that guy, so we're going to have to go for another pass yet again. But here, this is, will be the, the last turn. We're going to kill Selena. Uh, I love Selena. She's my one of my favorite antagonists in just gaming in general. Uh, so I get a little sad every time I have to kill Selena, but it's fine. It's fine. Um, and then we're going to make our final two moves here. Uh... And then we're kind of just going to watch the game play itself. It's a little bit of a wild move. Uh, <clears throat> lots of redraws there. I wonder why we need so many redraws when we're at like 6 HP. Can't think of a single reason why we would want that. Um, so again, Garrick is kind of just clearing out this right side because there's not that many enemies on the right side of the map, which luckily... Uh, he can just kind of handle them because there's a lot of axe uses as well. And now we're at 2 HP. Oh, good. That guy did no damage. That's that's good for us. So, like, hopefully, like, no one else does damage to us from now on. Because if, if we took damage and died, that would be very unfortunate. So, yeah, hopefully these guys just keep it. Especially this, this bow user. That would really suck if the bow user killed us. Because uh, it, it definitely can. Um, cool, it missed. Oh. <laughs> How wow. Lucky? <laughs> wow, it's, we're so lucky, everyone. Uh, that's, that's a word I would use. <laughs> and time. Uh, <laughs> and <that> is, nice. <laughs> that is just a little bit of the insaneness that goes on in this run. <laughs> I cannot believe that was already 23 minutes. I was just entranced the whole time. <laughs> yeah, it goes by really, really quickly. <laughs> And this game is just super, super cool. I, I, I definitely love it. I wish I could show you guys more, like, right now. But unfortunately, um, I have a job. So I have to be yeah. there a lot of hours of the day. But 
happens. I'm super stoked that I got this at least ready and and, and to a presentable format. So hopefully it was interesting and fun. That's that's all. I, I hope you all had a good time. Yeah, that, that was great. That was, that was super fun to watch. Uh, it was said in the chat a little bit ago by Jaxler. Love Jaxler. Uh, Ooh, Jaxler. Where can, be, where can people find you? Uh, people can find me at twitch.tv slash Nastani. <laughs> I also have a YouTube channel that's Nastani as well. I'm really bad at promoting myself, but um, I'm uploading more videos this year. I don't know how many videos I'm going to upload, but I have, a, I have a best of 2023 that I made. I have some funny clips in it. You should go check it out. It's just a fun video. And uh, yeah, I, I speedrun uh, a lot of different games. I'm going to start, uh, I think, I'm going to start a new game soon, TM, this month, uh, because I'm prepping for, you know, SGDQ, as most people are right now. So I'll be running a lot more games. Uh, I'll be running this uh, in prep for Unapologetically Black and Fast, which is coming up uh, in a couple weeks. The whole run um, will be there, not just, not just the segment. Yeah, the whole run will be there. The whole run will be there, and hopefully the comments will be very polished and very it'll be a good time i have a lot cooking in my head that i just need to like put together uh, i'm very excited for it because this is one of my favorite games ever and i just really want to like do it justice because i think this game is super 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 cool um like this it's a top five favorite games ever for me um yeah i just have a lot of useless knowledge about this game <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's gonna be a good time i'm gonna give you all a lot of useless knowledge about this game so if you're interested in that Check out Unapologetic Back Fast and just all the other runners too. Like yes. Ryan Ford's going to be there. I'm pretty sure pretty much everyone in this event is going to be yeah, there. Yeah, everyone so. in in Pieces my RPG earlier. show, I guess, will be there. True! Uh, exclamation UBF in the chat. Uh, but yeah, is, is that all your shout outs? Uh, yeah, that's, that's, all, that's all I got, man. Okay, good perfect. Time. Good yeah. time. Uh, Thanks for having me. Well, yeah, that was, that was super fun. Uh, but we will be back in just a few minutes uh, with. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 randomizer? That's Ooh. that's crazy. This is okay. going to be a wild one. I'm done telling you right now, chat. Uh, but yeah, just stick around for a few minutes. You know, get up, stretch, drink some water. Type exclamation UBF in the chat because uh, the schedule's really good. And we'll be back in a few minutes. Yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my RPG show, I guess. I'm slowly getting used to saying that. Um, right now we have Kingdom Hearts 2, completely vanilla, no mods, no nothing. This is how the game is supposed to be, surely. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you guys would like to introduce this. Oh, uh, yes, this is... Uh, so we're actually going to be running the one-hour challenge. There's a lot of um, different mode types for Randomizer, but this one is personally one of my favorites. Um, that involves the boss enemy rando, which is... Arguably one of the hardest randos, which is for why specifically this showcase, we're going to be starting with Second Chance and once more, just to like, so we could show it off. But, um, so you got anything? Uh, also, are we still doing with like the, how many points you get at the end, or it's just like, just basically straight showcase? We'll do a straight showcase. Well, I mean, I'm going to, straight showcase. yeah, we're going to, we'll explain how the points work. Okay. Yeah. As we go. Perfect. All right, so uh, the thing that different, different, differentiates uh, this run from normal runs are normally, um, in order to get to final fights, you would need to find all three proofs. Here we start with uh, one proof and the promise charm, and there are two ways we can enter final fights now. One is to get uh, the remaining two proofs, and we know we kind of have an idea of which role those are in because those proofs are 15 points each. And they can only be um, obtained at the end of your first visit. So something like Olympus Coliseum or Pride Lands here or Agrabra are looking like good candidates. The other way, um, there are seven objectives you can complete. If we can hit five of those seven objectives, then that'll also unlock the final fights. And, we, and it also allows us to skip the world that never was. Right. And do you have the uh, objectives on screen, or are we just going to read them out to the audience? No, uh, we'll go ahead and go ahead and read them out. All right. So the seven objectives that Mister Dan will have to do is defeat the Grim Reaper Two replacement, interrogate the hyenas, reach Valor Form Five, defeat Data Larkseen replacement, capture Lock, Shock, and Barrel, 
reach Master Form level five and survive their treasure room. So when he gets like close to those objectives, we'll let y'all know like which objectives is coming up. Yeah. And just for the replacement objectives, that means uh so for defeat D- Larkseen's data, we're not actually gonna beat Larkseen. We're uh so those arena those arenas are gonna be randomized. We have to defeat what is there and we will get the points from the objectives. We'll explain the point objective like values later though. All right. Uh with that being said, I think I am ready to go. Are you guys ready? Yep, I'll Let's set. do yeah, it. Just give a countdown uh, if you're good to go. All right. Uh, five, four, oh, three, three, two, two one. One. GLGL. Thank you. Thank and you. Just a quick thing. Just a quick thing. Uh, so, one hour challenge is there's two timers real, real time attack, and then there's loadless. At the top left of the animal screen, as you can see there, uh, that's going to be the timer that we're going to actually be going off. Okay. I will, uh, let me get through my menu and I will fix that. Okay, uh, uh, let's see what we want to do. And with the one hour challenge, since it is like heavy on like going to like different worlds, we do start with some good level two movement. Yeah, it's, it, okay. it, yeah, it was quite okay. Okay. So we, he starts right. with like level two movement, so high jump, uh, dodge roll, glide. Mostly he's looking. Probably going to be using dodge roll and glide or aerial dodge and glide to like get around the map. Yeah. So I am. Kind of. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you kind of want to focus on clearing as much content as possible while picking up as many important checks as possible. As you can see, there's each world has a point value, and um, each of the important checks has value. So like reports are three. I'm gonna take an intentional. Uh, some, I'm gonna take a death here. I just wanted to see yeah, what these yeah. were. Mm -hmm. Okay. So normally these are something called Jayline, you remember what they they're, they're like living called? bones. So living be, bones. Yeah, living bones. But you know, since this is the whole yeah. boss enemy rando, like instead of living bones, we got the big bodies. Yeah. Yeah. And they are we rather have these than the living bones. Yeah. <laughs> Pro progress <laughs> could be a little scary at the start because um usually in a normal rando we'll have like a setup that will guarantee that we beat the living bones every time, but sometimes Ooh. Uh, they could be enemies that are a little hard to fight. Yeah, I like these replacements. Uh, if I get final, it's going to be lit. So normally these replacements are the little shadows that, you know, pops up and goes underground. But now we got the nobody dancers. So if he do find like an experience boost in final form, he's definitely going to have a good leveling spot. Yeah, the good thing about shadows being randomized is you could actually get a lot more EXP off of them. Usually you get like, what is it, like 30, 45 EXP off of normal shadows? Yeah. Those dancers, I believe, give 600 EXP per pop. Mm hmm Yeah, so if I don't need, even if I don't have experience boost, it's still going to be a good spot for me. Mm-hmm. All right. And something else about the one hour challenge that I like is the chess matches what's in the chest. So there could be junk, there could be accessories, there could be a uh, magic or ability, and each color of the chest uh, will like let you know. So if it's a red chest, it's an ability. If it's like a yellowish chest, I believe that's a drive, correct? Yes. So like yeah. yellow oranges are like drives, yeah, blues, mm -hmm. magic, stuff like that. And and it helps out because Again, for this category that we have so much little time for, we want to make sure we could like kind of skip the junk and just pick up yeah. what we need. So that chest right there that's red by the little guillotine, that is a ability. So it could be a glide, it could be a, an attack ability, a finisher, it could be anything. Mm -hmm. There we go. Now the good thing about the good thing about Halloween Town, it's uh it's one of the worlds you want to start off with the most because uh, you have access to Jack's dance call and uh, it destroys all the heartless nobodies. Yes. And you get uh, a good amount of levels. We actually uh, leveled up to, uh, what is it, 10? 12, I'm at 12, 12 now, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm a little behind on that. Yeah, track. which makes the Pride Land opening, you know, unfortunately, large bodies would have taken too much time. I could have done it, but it would have taken way too much time versus just finding some magic and getting them later. And because I level up so so fast with these settings, it's not a huge issue. I go into that right off the rip. Mm -hmm. All right. Also, we got these things called the Ansem Report. So I don't know if y'all see Danimo's tracker, but whenever he picks up one of these Ansem Reports, it gives him two hints. It lets him know where an important check is. So Olympus Coliseum has a blizzard. 
and Marluxia became Data Axel. So if he finished, what is that, DC, mm-hmm. and he goes to fight Marluxia, it's going to be actually Data Axel he's going to be fighting instead of the regular Marluxia. Yep. And the thing with the absent silhouette arenas, which is like, you know, Mar- Marluxia, Zexion, you actually get to fight them twice, and it's a 50-50 whether or not it's going to be the Data or the normal version. So that could be Data Axel on Marlusa, but Data Axel can be, or Data Marley can be normal Axel or Data oh. Axel again. The, the thing about Datas, you actually want to find Datas because as opposed to normal bosses yeah. that'll give you five points, Datas will give you 20 points per pop. Mm-hmm. Right, I'm going to get a couple more levels right here, real quick. Mm-hmm. Well, we got the Fire okay. Bandits now. Yeah. So the ones okay. in Prodland that we've seen. And the God in Ether, bandits. thank you. <laughs> yeah, they're just uh, the yeah large bodies over, and then these are the a fire I bandits. Prefer, I honestly prefer fighting the yeah. fire bandits sometimes. You do? Yeah, I oh. don't know. So sometimes they're like they're kind of weird in boss enemies. Sometimes they just stand there. <laughs> they have an interesting mix up. They can either shoot the fire breath or the fireball. So it's it's a mix up. You got to be ready for it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, if you get caught with the fire breath, sometimes you'll... We got once more there, but <laughs> we got a mod here that lets us start with it just for the showcase. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Still points, though. No. Yeah, now each... We are in... Go ahead. Oh, saying um, each um, important check I pick up also has points related to it as well. So, for example, magic is going to be a seven. Um, summons are five. Um, dry forms are nine. Oh. And then the proofs we talked about earlier, fourth or fifteen. Yeah, there's pretty much like five point value types, and uh, some of them have their own little groups. So again, reports are all three points. Uh, summons, uh, second chance once more, and like pages, those are all five points. Five. Magics are seven, drives are nine, and then proof points e are fifteen. Five. And you also get bonuses. So if you were to find Faraga, like three fires, you get an extra set of points. And it's the same with summons, torn pages, reports. So it's it's good to keep an eye out for that if you want to try to get the highest amount of points you possibly can. As well as drive levels. Each drive level up from like form two to seven, they all give three points each. Wally Pop Chain Blade. Space <laughs> Paranoid. Still continuing like doing what we call like shotgun. She's going through all the world, seeing what's in the chest and everything. Yeah. Get some good yeah. abilities. Yeah, at the start of my shotgun for one hour, you'll see me pick up most of all the chests. Um, as I go th- as I continue on, I will start skipping certain chests. Mm-hmm. Basically, whatever I get at the beginning is what I'm going is the uh, equipment I'm going to be stuck with. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. Usually, like the first fifteen to twenty minutes, you just want to gather resources, tools that'll help you clear the game as fast hey, as possible. Hey. So that's what we're doing right now. We're still in what we'd call the the shotgun phase. Right. I definitely have a combo plus on my equip or my uh, uh, keyblade defaulted. Combo or air combo plus? Uh, air combo. Yeah, yeah right. that'll happen. And it looks like for one of the answer reports, final Zimnis has became in change. So oh, oh, if no. he oh. gets to the final <laughs> fight, the final boss will be vanilla. The funny thing about uh, Final Zemnis Unchanged, usually in the randomizer, we have something called Dome Skip that'll let you skip that like whole one minute dome animation that you have to watch. <laughs> uh, but when Final Zemnis is unchanged, you cannot skip it. <laughs> so Oof. it's actually bad that he's there. Because <laughs> we're going to have to sit through that cutscene. Style points, style points. <laughs> oh, okay. So these are dancers. Uh, this might crash. No, we're good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're good. I think was, the main one to worry about is that samurai there. Samurai, you probably would have crashed. <laughs> it, it was Honestly, it was probably my mods that was causing that crash. Okay, so Mini has what we like to call, call a uh, blood left. So I'm going to try to push her. Uh, but she likes to pop off. Yeah, unfortunately, we're yeah. nice doing damage. Yeah, we yeah. I'll that. try it we one want, more time. To... Yeah, so I'm not going to try to. I'll give it one more push to try. There we go. So, yeah, you kind of want to move along the side of the wall with Mini. It can be a little tricky sometimes to move out. Yeah. And sometimes you will pearl. Every time you do a face, it pretty much resets, like, 
uh, her, I don't even know what you want to call it. So per, every time you face, she'll like reset her pearl counter, I guess. So uh, usually when she throws the pearls, she won't do it again for like a good amount of time. But uh, every time you face, it resets it, unfortunately. Yeah. It's actually a good escort for the first part. Yeah. With no, dancers. No, <laughs> with yeah, dancers. That, that, that was honestly good because yeah. uh, sometimes they can get like desynced when you're like um, pushing them away with face and they have that move where they like kind of glide at you and then they'll pick you up and throw you for like your yeah. entire health bar. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah well, uh, just, just so you guys know, uh, there's little stat values on the tracker. That too is our defense. We have not gotten yeah, one defense up yet. So only thing can kill me at any time. <laughs> Right. I can't hear with footsteps, but I, so if you can't hear it, I try to count how many steps he's taking. Let's go. So usually it's like eight footsteps, but if I can't see it, I start count. I start looking at it. Let's go. Not great RNG, but it's fine. I think we're good here. So one more. Oh here, it's good. It's good. All right, and then we're good here. Go. All right, here we go. So there's a lot of debate on whether uh, Pete is should be part of your shotgun or not. Uh, <laughs> oh, we got our our sixth sense. Sephiroth became Riku. <laughs> okay, well, that mean, so that means Sephiroth <laughs> is uh, out in the wild somewhere. Yeah. Well, since there's only a seven here, and I this isn't part of. In, oh, I got Trinity Limit. Ooh, that's, got that's, Trinity. A good, that's a good pickup though. Yeah, Trinity it's worth it. Absolutely. So what I might do then, I might go ahead and take a, I'll take a peek on who it is. Mm -hmm. And if it's someone I can very easily do, I will do it. But, uh, actually, you know what? I'm not going to. I just thought about it. I don't have any magic. No, you got this. You got this. Okay. Three well, defense in a dream. Well, you know what? Three defense in a dream. I am a sucker for peer pressure, so I will go ahead and do it. Show me. Sephiroth. Oh, we found Sephiroth. <laughs> <laughs> <That's enough. laughs> <laughs> what, what is that weapon? Is that Eris? No. Oh yes, that is the uh, Final Fantasy VII <laughs> ending. So, boy, I'm gonna not do this. Actually, this will take way too long. And yeah, I d <laughs> even if I could, well, yeah, it would take half my screen time getting past them. <laughs> but yes, that yeah, is Eris at the end. Uh, spoiler alerts: Eris does die at the end of this one. <laughs> also, we do not have. Reflect, uh -oh. so uh, yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm, that would be a pretty tough fight to do. Uh, let's let's go here. We can we're gonna death the abuse at the beginning, so it should be I pretty believe quick. We do have max AP in this setting, yeah, so we don't have to worry about it. Yeah, all right, taking a quick death here. That's good, yes. Oh, this will be oh, there's our samurai. Oh, this place Samurais. has a lot of nobodies, actually. I uh, know. <laughs> Jeez. What are the I odds I just get final hit. form just right here? No, not here. Maybe in the next well, room. Somebody's not looking at his tracker. Yeah, I'll start getting Zigbar. Oh, wait a minute. Final form's in uh, Oh, okay. <laughs> I probably should. Somebody's <laughs> not looking at his tracker. <laughs> like, it is what it is, all right? These bosses are what they are. <laughs> you know, what can you really do about it? Fine. Other than prepare for him. Oh, I don't want to talk to you right now, Bell. Ooh. I believe that um, it'll no. still be past Pete when we are <laughs> going up to Future Pete, so I, we are not going to get an uh, ally Sephiroth, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. That would be fun, though. Uh, you that know, if I have time, amazing. I might go back and beat up on him. Probably won't. Aerial finish. Hate to see it because I'll never use it. A good thing about the hints, though, is that if uh, OC Pete ever gets into it or if you decide to do OC, whatever replaces OC Pete will be future Pete. All right. It's uh, a good way to just get knowledge there. I'm actually gonna, wait a minute, I'm gonna push this chest real quick and then I'm going to go to Agrabra and hopefully I can get some kind of magic. <laughs> mm, to help out with that Pride Lance fight? Yeah, because final form is right there. You, you, honestly, I, I'd like to say, usually we kind of pick up a little more tools. The shotgun has been the most generous to us. We still do have a few big point worlds that we can check out. Yeah. Hopefully, Agrabah yeah. will be a little kinder. Yes, my favorite. Agrabah, always go there. Really? I thought it was Beast Castle, it's, it, so it's Agrabah. Well, Beast Castle is on beginner. Oh, that's fair. Agrabah. Yeah, Agrabah is critical. All right, so Agrabah is right next to us. All right, and, and we're going to death abuse find. again here. Oh, yeah. And more nobodies. Creepers. They're just 
It's throwing nobody. <laughs> it's just punishing me for not toughing out that Pride Land yeah. opening. <laughs> Alright, so if you hit them, they have a little flinch. I said if you hit them, they have flinch. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, the creepers are something... Like, they respond weird. Okay. Usually you want that like little. Oh, Valor Force? No, Twilight Town. Oh, those oh, are Twilight Town. Yeah. So a uh, little thing about the one hour GOA is that we actually don't start with STT or TT and they aren't actually worlds. When we find picture or ice cream, it unlocks <laughs> the data fight for that world. So um, we might we might peep into those later. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. So so the ice the ice cream would bring you straight to Data Axel Arena. And, right. we already know and we're going to steal from uh, Aladdin Lucia. here. All right. Oh, all these nobodies. It's torture. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <Sorry>. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to pick these up. Because I'm picking up the junk ones because I don't have a money pouch yet. And I need all the uh, items I can get at this point. Once I get a money pouch, I'll, be, I'll probably skip them. Uh, okay, this sucks. Uh, wait, I have an idea. Alright, we're gonna try to use Speedster here to oh, break open the Okay, bar. you know what? That's Let's nothing. See. Yeah, I don't need it. Yeah, it's just an accessory. <laughs> yeah, don't um, need it. And that was junk. Okay, we're done here. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, we, okay, we okay, finally okay. got good. the reflect. Okay, we got a reflect. That's good. We got a magnet. The, the magnet's nice. Doesn't really help with the large bodies, but at least with the reflect, <laughs> we could do some damage to them. I might be able to hit them into a magnet, maybe. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, this Agra is paying off, though. It is. A lot of good oh, stuff. that looks like another form over there, too. Though. Right? I think it is. Okay, what do we got here? Is it the... Master? Oh, oh Master. Right. So, right. Master's great for leveling in one hour because we've modded Winnie uh, 100 Acre Woods. Um, yeah, we put, there's a tool that, what's it called? Someone else, because I cannot do yeah, this. Yeah, so in, in, the, in the Cavern of Remembrance, there's like five orbs spread out through there. Uh, uh, if you hit them, Abu? they'll drop Hello? drive orbs. Or... Sorry. Yeah, if, if you hit them, they'll drop like drive orbs and small chance of drive recovery. You don't really ever get those, but it's nice because uh, I believe Sean and Jared threw in an orb into 100 Acre Woods. We can just go in there at any time and just, uh, Smack the orb for some hey. drive, of course. <laughs> Which is nice because sometimes you don't always get the drive converters that you need yes. to um, level up your master form. Right. So we're going to do these large bodies now. At least we have some strength. And yes, Sora does have a beard. He matured. He was matured and grew a beard. Okay. Didn't you like 12 or something? No, no, no. It's been years. It's been I years. Idea. It's been years. I he was like 14. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> hey, he probably hit puberty quick. Quick puberty. There we go. I, I mean, know. if you could give Sephiroth the hands, he's in puberty. <laughs> there we go. And also, with him picking up Valor Form and Master Form, we just need, what, one more form to find or to reach our objective for reaching Valor 5 and Master 5. Oh, yeah. So we can get two objectives yep. right there. And, uh,. I'm gonna push this until I get final. Yeah, we we the, the final is is crucial here because of the no base that we have, the EXP farming that we could do in a world that never was, because we're gonna need those stats because sometimes we get some like you know, sometimes you'll get like cloud in an arena. Dix. And then you'll get like Terra with some dumbbells in his yeah. hand ready to like beat you. And uh, some <laughs> more good news here. Larxene is stuck in Zexion's arena, so I don't have to worry about my arch nemesis. I mean, maybe I might do them. I don't know. Yeah. I will be completely fine if you skip that. Uh, I don't know what it is. Our team just owns me. Yeah. <laughs> and we just got a hint that Prison Keeper became Tifa. Tifa? That's how you pronounce her name? Yep. Tifa. So, if he wanted to go back to Halloween Town, that would yeah. be a quick and easy boss. Oh, right? yeah. That's free. Yeah, so the um, I think it's gonna be changed in the next trainer generator, but the o mm -hmm. the OC like FF bosses are really squishy. So like Cloud, Yuffie, Tifa, yeah. uh, Squall. Uh, usually like two reflects will be enough to kill them. Oh, there you are, my Here's baby. 
All right, we are unleashed. We have the power. Do we have a uh, fire? We do, we, we do need fire, yeah. <laughs> we do. We, we would like fire, though. So if y'all don't know, final form fire destroys. Destroys. <laughs> Absolutely destroys everything. <laughs> for now, we'll just rely on our final magnet. Well, for y'all have an issue with anything in this game, final form fire. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we got that. So now I can go back to uh, let's uh, here, let's level that up a little bit. All right. Yeah, if we, even if we could kill a few of these guys, it'll give us a lot of experience. Yeah, because right now, what, are we 15? We're low 15? Let's see. Oh, yeah. The levels are coming Come on. In. Oh, thank you. We got another magnet. <laughs> we, got a, we got another magnet. <laughs> okay. Okay, that was a little bit scary. And I can't go into um, anti-form in finals. So that's another reason we like it so much. Oh, yeah. Yeah, every time you go into a final, it kind of like resets your anti points, which is very nice. Okay. Oh, this is going swimmingly so far. Yeah, that Magnera actually really helps out with them. Um, yeah. Uh, get away from me! Making sure. Yeah, that, that move. <laughs> that move is. Uh, I don't know what the damage scaling is on that, but. <laughs> it's very strong. You wanna you wanna avoid that at all costs. Yeah, I think that grab, if we didn't have once more a second chance, that grab would definitely one shot. Oh, yeah, oh get out, get out, get out. Okay. Guaranteed all right. one shot. We just, we, we did get a lot of strength and magic level ups in those yeah. last, past few though, so. We're almost, we're, we're going to be doing, start doing a little more damage with our magnets here. Come on, psychopaths, get away from me. <laughs> so when they're glowing like that, it's a little scary. Yeah. They are going for that command grab. Oh yeah, you do not want to get <laughs> caught in that. The other scared. They, they don't really like care what you're doing to them while they're do, like doing yeah. that. Oh, so yeah. they like won't stop. And you, like you have to like be in oh, their yeah. face and reflect them for them to stop oh, doing that move. I think I'm gonna do this like one more time to move on with my life. Light. Yeah. Oh, the, the good thing is uh, we're at like the 30 stat floor. That's gonna that, we're gonna be sitting comfortable for a lot of these first visits now. Oh. How oh, did you not get cat? Horn pages. Yep, just like that. No! Oh, oh man. man. Oof. <laughs> he caught me. Ah, uh, he got me. <laughs> Alright, let's go back to that. Not like this. Not like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's so over. <laughs> it's On the bright side, though, they all, they all respawned in. Oh, well, we're at 35 right now. 36. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. Actually, I might be able to do this for a while because they drop magic. Oh yeah, so um, Final Four Magnet actually draws all the prizes that fall out of the enemies uh, to Sora. So Thirty-nine. Like magnet, okay, Magnera we're good. Really good. And and I should have enough power boots to get me to forty-one. Okay, so uh, let's see who you are. All right, we're gonna be going to uh, check out the threshold arena. Yeah. I don't believe this was hinted, so it was I don't think it was either. This was not hinted. Oh, wait a minute. Let me see it. It's a good play. You know what? I'm actually not... I'm going to get my... Um, I'm going to go to OC, actually. Because OC... Yeah, we have Mag... Yeah, we have Magnera now, too. Yeah. And even if you take out the 15 here, it's still a lot of stuff here. So, we'll do that. And remember, since this is a random mod boss enemy, Hades is going to be... Anyone. Oh yeah, whatever. <laughs> Pass feet. All right. Oh, we found Pass The struggle fight champion. <laughs> so, fun fact uh, Cure counts as uh, hits. Yes. Cure indeed. It count towards that fight. Or, it, like, if yeah, you're I just doing your, I believe curing your party members adds to the hit count there, too. For whatever reason. No, not yeah, you. Or nobodies. Yep, <laughs> only nobody's. Oh, the only thing <laughs> though about past Pete honestly, though. Past Pete is is doing some damage he is, here. Oh yeah, he is uh... a. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. He is there... terrified. He is wondering how he got an OC. <laughs> yeah, he will catch you like that. Fortunately, I don't think he's gonna bother us anymore now. Yeah. The nice part about Hades Escape is uh, usually most of the bosses stay up on the top top platform, so we can just do the rest of this comfortably. Oh. Yes. I think it's like 
Is it like just one of them that actually follows you? I think that would be Barbosa, correct? Um, there's a um, Sephiroth will does? follow you. Um, then this one will slowly walk towards you the entire time, and it is terrifying. Oh, oh! Not because he's not because he's tough, just because he's asserting dominance. <laughs> All right. All right, what do we got here? Oh, okay. Pete. Oh, you're good. Right. We got future Pete. <laughs> More Pete. Which one is okay. this? Okay, it's fine. We can oh, loop him. OC. We can loop him here. Yeah, he doesn't have too much health. Oh, so my. I don't think we have to worry about uh, the okay. phase transition one. There we go. Oh, man. Easy clap, easy clap. So I, thought, I was hoping I could loop him there, but he did not loop. All good though. I have fin I have a million finishing pluses apparently. All right, and we're gonna go train a little bit. In order to yeah, become a real hero, we fine. have to train. And yes. Kill some urns. But we're gonna do some urns. Just some. Oh, I got a flare. Oh uh, yeah. It's lit, fam. <laughs> okay. Yeah, a little quality of life thing here is uh, usually these urns only drop like three a piece, but. Uh, now they drop a uh, like 300 a piece. So, okay. Okay. so I'm actually gonna yeah, let me switch my keyblade real quick. Uh, oh, it's the keyblade that had the yeah. Plus on. Uh, this <laughs> like this has okay nine eight yeah, that's fine. I'm not gonna do a full menu yet. I just want that was just taking too much time. You why? Oh, come on, Sora. Thank you. Sora's favorite thing to do is whiff. It's his favorite pastime. I think it was the actual national sport on Destiny Islands. <laughs> oh, Destiny Islands? Yeah. Bringing it back to 2002. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see, we got 34 points here in OC, so there, there still could be some good abilities here. Oh yeah, let's go down here first. Starting to, starting to think it also might just have a proof. I think OC does have a proof. I would bet it does. No! <laughs> oh no, we got oh. those guys. That's the one that thinks with boss enemy. Uh, you just might get one of these things. <laughs> one of the worst enemies in the game, in my opinion. Oh, nice, a glide. Yeah, so I'm going to be zooming now. Zoom, zoom, hire me, Mazda. <laughs> All right, I can do Genie now. Grass if I need it. Probably not since I have final Magnera. But if I do need it, he's there. I'm hoping I can find uh, Peter Pan somewhere. Let's see, what was oh, see, that nope. report? And another quality of life thing is we actually already have the Olympus Stones. We could use dry forms in this fight, where as usually we would not be able to do it in the underworld. Uh, and I don't have a fire yet, unfortunately. Yeah, I was gonna say, but we don't. But we don't have a fire. Yet. <laughs> So I have to do it the slow way. Wait, unless... No, wait a minute, no. I'm gonna need a fire. I thought about no. So it looks like Vex Oh, wait a minute, no. A nope, that's, that's, I just thought about it. No, I gotta wait till they're down to like 20. Yeah. Oh, you were thinking about Trinity Limit? Yeah. Yeah, usually, uh... I believe 31 is good. Yeah. There we go. Bad, and a blizzard. a blizzard. Okay, we got some offensive magic. All right. Where's the fire? <laughs> oh. Oh, the right. oh, wow, this place. <laughs> All right, and so before, so I'm going to menu right here before I go into this fight, see what abilities I have. I have arrow sweep. Okay. Uh, no, can't have too many finishing pluses. Don't need that. I already got that. Okay, so uh, the answer is not much. <laughs> uh, 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 do I got? I got a grand ribbon. That's fine. Wait, no, this is a better one. Thank you. Um, I know. Okay, Donalyn, do you have? No, you don't. Okay. Ooh, my so reflect. Boss is gonna be okay. here. Is gonna be in DC as well. Era. Hades. <laughs> Which one is this? Is Hades escaped? Nope. Look at that damage. 
Wait, oh no, wait a minute, wrong one. I, I, I thought my blizzard. Is that a, it's it's fine. On that rock? <laughs> I, I don't know why I thought <laughs> I had my blizzard on triangle. It's okay. Okay. And uh, our next let's, surprise uh, boss. Let's uh, fix that right now. Here we go. Done. Come on. Is Hydra. Be free, be free. Oh, you're free. Okay, we're good. Oh, it well. is you free. More like you free. That's <laughs> yeah, this one reflect might do it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Easy clap. Easy clap. Easy clap. Again, the FF fights, <laughs> the FF characters just die to reflect. <laughs> and we okay. got a proof. All right. Uh, let's see what my thing. Okay, so it's either in Pride Lands or or here. You know what? So I don't know where we'll start climbing this because you do get points for it. Let's start climbing this real quick. Oh, what is this theme oh, song? I was not expecting. Oh, wow. so was there was a tournament called uh, Fresh Faces One I was in, and in the there's a chopping block seed, and I played some of the best rando of my life, and the final proof was on a one LOD. Like the last place you would possibly look for. So, beca so because of that, I now have uh, PTSD when going into uh, Land of Dragons. Hey. <laughs> and this is Robo's like fault. Yeah. yeah, so there's, um, there's, cer man. there's certain like hidden oh. objectives that give you points. LOD has uh, most of them, honestly. Hey. So these missions that we do here give an extra 15 points that will not show up on the tracker. And I have a um, sneaky suspicion there are some, um, there are some drives here. Because I think the... What do we I, got? We have three, right? Yeah, what are we looking yeah, for? Yeah, and there's only one limit. check left in, um, Pride Lands, or Pride Lands 1. So I think that's where the proof is. Yeah, I, I, I put my money on Pride Lands as well. Ah, uh, we got okay. it. Okay. It's gonna be here. Yeah. Be here, LOD. Oh, oh, I have like no answers right now. Yeah, honestly, limit form and final form are just contenders for like the best forms for uh, boss enemy. I, I, oh. me personally, I like limit form. Oh, same. Because you don't need party members. Because you can use limit form anywhere. Yep. There we go. Oh. So I, I feel like there might be a limit here. If not. You know, it's fine. We'll just uh, go do our object. We'll go do Pride Lands and then do our objectives and then we'll do final fights. I think that's how the, my, I'm going to route it. So it keeps starting over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got gargoyles here. Gargoyles oh, are God. very aggressive and sometimes they break the walls. Yeah. And they're Gargle. immune to most magics, too. Uh -huh. Yeah, fire, blizzard, thunder, do not. All right, come on, be fire. That'd be a little annoying. Okay, I got thunder, oh, that's fine. Still, I mean, that's the worst, I guess. <laughs> Technically could be worse. <laughs> we still have two cures just out there, just taunting us. All right, so that is some points right there. Does, that one doesn't get automatically hinted, but... Oh, uh, actually, there's no buts about it. Okay, we got fire. Oh, we found oh. our first fire. Okay, so we'll do this. We'll do the cave fight here, and then we're gonna go to Pride Lands. Oh wow, that uh, what is that? Night Rider is actually vanilla. Purple. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. And Magnero to make quick work of all of them. All right. Uh, do I want to do the minute fight without limit form? It's... Probably not. Yeah, we got 12 points left here. It's it's probably okay. We're yeah. saved from the song now. Oh, no, no, we're going back okay, in. Never mind. We're saved from the song. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if I, if I have to suffer, so does Spoke everyone else. <laughs> Spoke too quick. <laughs> uh, actually, that this mod right here actually made oh, that so actually made that one with the uh, music. I made that one myself. I keep not guns. expecting it to restart, and then it just always restarts. And I'm just yeah. surprised every time. I... <laughs> At least yeah. here is boss music, so you don't have to worry about it. 
Yeah, with the boss, uh, with the music, rando, so it's like field music gets randomized, Perfect. battle music gets randomized, and like cutscene. So every time we go in and out of a battle, it'll like restart a song. You. <laughs> the, uh... And it's very apparent yeah. here. So while this is going on, shout out to, uh, we have a very healthy mod community in here. So now's a great time to get in because mods are easier than ever to make. There's a lot of good ones coming out. I know Shenanas makes a lot of my cursed mods. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's new ones being made all the time. Most, again, mostly by Shenanas, but there's a lot of people on Nexus mods like, um, the Cody, the Pisto, all of them are making really good ones. And if you want to find, get yourself a bearded Sora. Yes. Go look there. And a chains. <laughs> uh, you want um, chainsaw as keyblades. Okay. Go so ahead. I'm going to come back when I have master form. Oh, Lord. Because I want to skip the Shan Yu fight and go straight to that throne room. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's ma do ma master form, you say. Animal. Yes. My friend. You look at your drawings real quick. Oh, I do that master. Never mind. <laughs> I've, you know what? I'm going to not going to lie. I've not been looking at my drive, <laughs> and I got and I'm at eight. We're good. We're, we getting litty in this bitty now. Oh. All right. Is this possible with? Oh, what okay. is that shield? <laughs> that's, Why I'm am dumb. I just now realizing that's, this shield? It's wonky. I don't know. I, know. What, I don't know what the problem is. Oh my god! I noticed it in those. <laughs> I know. It started looking at me. I'm like, bro, what is this? It's Wolfy. I don't. That's. It's always been there. It's just Wolfy. That's oh. Wolfy O. Um, okay, yeah, I can do it. Okay, so I'm gonna set up for it. I'm gonna set my camera too. Okay. All right. Hey, let's go. So Jayla, you want to Because I'm still new yeah, to hey. this. Yeah, we're going for drone. So normally, uh, there's a cutscene trigger here that. Uh, sets up for the shiny. Uh, if we if we reach high enough, just above that lantern, we we actually skip the loading zone and just go straight into throne room and grab these checks early. Okay, so we got another blizzard. Okay, let's see what's in here. So we're just gonna raid this room. I might get Peter Pan in here if I'm lucky. Nope. Yeah. Um, is the uh, em is the emperor in here right now? He is not in here. Yeah, no, there is he nobody is in here. All right, so. <laughs> Oh, so that means your other points or abilities may be on yeah. you. Uh, okay. Oh, I know what I'm doing. It might be. Or even Data Zigma replacement. Mm. Do we know what this boss is? Mm. We do not. Nah, we don't. You know, we're, we're just going to We're just going to go. He's free. Oh, it is uh, AX1. Armored, armored free <laughs> fight yeah, one. Oh, this, oh, yeah, this one. Yeah, if uh, that Zigbar weapon is on the floor there, mm -hmm. that means it's X1. Easy class. And look at that. Grab the charm and combo That's master. who I so wanted. We got Peter Pan and combo master. Absolutely worth it. Good abilities. Good abilities and a good summon. Oh, yeah. So Peter Pan is great, especially if you're all alone and uh, it's a tough boss. You can just do that. Oh, uh, where was I going? I know where I'm going. I'm going to Pride Lands. I have a plan and I'm sticking to it. And then after this, we can interrogate the hyenas. Yeah, we'll get a. We'll... Do we know who mm -hmm. Scar is or no? I have not seen it on a tracker. Well, so, the, uh, the good we, news is their anger ha will not be growing, so that's good. Yes. Honestly, there are a lot of. The only boss that I would never want here is uh, Zigbar. <laughs> uh, why did. Uh, hello? Thank you. There we go. Got them. Yeah, certain bosses you don't want in certain arenas. If if normal Zigbar's here and he does his uh like the little first person thing, you will just fall forever. <laughs> oh really? Oh, well, let's hope we, uh, he's not here. Who do we have? Oh, we got this Hostile jerk. Oh, Hostile. I mean, he's a jerk. Freak? Not the worst, but oh no. Okay. Oh my God, that damage. Okay. Oh, well, you know we'll take it. Oh, yeah. Come on. Host hostile program has a little HP gate where we have to hit him with like a finisher or mm -hmm. magic to. Oh yeah. Break his armor off. You know, let's do this. 
And he do have a healing ability, so you let him charge up, he will heal. The nice thing about the healing ability is he stays there still, we go. which lets us hit him a little more. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, nope. Okay. Uh, there we go. That's what I need. Yeah. All right, wait for him to do this thing. He'll throw those out. Oh, wait, oh, you, because yeah. Because we're Spiral the Dragon, we cannot freeze okay. him. <laughs> so I'm going to use up all of my ethers on him. Ouch. Jerk. Okay. Yeah, so very likely this is a proof. Yeah, I'm... Oh, it can't be anywhere else. It has to be here. Yeah. All right, so let's interrogate these hyenas real quick. Um, back oh, in yeah. for there you objective are. two. Yep. Yep. Interrogate the hyenas. All right, Simba is so basically in the story, Simba's a bit mopey, like Simba normally is. So we have to go talk to Rafiki, and then we can interrogate the hyenas and ask why Simba's so mopey. Because Simba does not like to tell us <laughs> why he's mopey. For good reason, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm pretty sure it's a really good reason. Remember to be vulnerable sometimes and talk about your feelings. <laughs> It'd be great if Simba were... Yeah, but Simba doesn't uh, talk about his feelings, so this is a good lesson. If you don't talk about your feelings, you'll have a ghost chase you, and their anger will grow for far too long. <laughs> yeah, we don't but now we're just gonna, you know, interrogate the hyenas. What's going on? Like, why is he yeah. like this? Fortunately, uh, there's another quality of life that was added into this, where we don't actually have to chase all three hyenas. We only have to defeat one of them. Thank you. Okay. All right. Oh, we got so that. that's one objective down. All right. So whenever you see that completion mark, that means we've done one of the seven objectives. Uh, yes. So now I'm, let's go ahead and do the treasure room. Okay, so we got both the proofs. We got that. Um, I'm going to do the treasure room ambush now because why not? Oh. I have magnet, and I no one can stop me now. I'm unstoppable. Oh god. Oh no. Oh lord. That's right, I'm wooed up. <laughs> Again, if you would like any of these mods, you can always reach out to Danimo. He will put you in the right place. I don't know what you're talking about. He's always been there. Oh. <laughs> Apparently. Uh let's see, I'm going to just do this. Yeah. Yeah, I'll last all the way down. There you go. Ooh. Those present boxes? Oh lord. Purple. Keep in mind. Neon. Uh, okay. Uh. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take whatever money I have after this, actually, and just uh, buy some ethers. This is the tame amount of mods. Let's just say that. Oh yeah, I. Uh... It's the new Fortnite skin. Of course. Yeah, this is a new Fortnite skin. Yep, that's exactly what this is. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, is like yeah, in the like battle pass, right? <laughs> yeah. nice. oh, okay, we got so another Twilight Town 3. Okay, let's, let's <laughs> open this up. And I have literally zero ethers left. So all that stuff you guys saw me collecting earlier is for a reason, in case this happens. So I'm going to do what we call poverty strats. Uh, what that means is I'm going to sell the farm. I'm going to sell anything that's more yep. than 10. And I'm going to use that and buy some ethers. We have 6k, oh, no. you're good. Oh, okay, we're good. Oh, you can never yeah. have enough. Let's see, how many... That's, <laughs> that's only 16. Not right, that's not the right mindset, we need more. Yeah. Okay, well, first I need it. So I got... I'm not going to do Fantasia, I don't need Fantasia. Oh. Uh, there we go, that should be enough. Uh, we're really? stocked up. Yeah, that'll last me through the rest of... Let's do the rest of everything. Okay. There we go. Uh, there we go. All right. All right Is this a mod next also? Objective? All right. Uh, okay, it's just Darkroom. Okay, it's vanilla. So here's what we can oh, do. Uh, We're going to go to Master here. Uh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we just got a hint for Blizzard Lord, which is right after this. It's uh, Data Zemnis. And that's only one of the bosses. Ooh. No, actually, the other boss did get uh, hinted. So Vexen is the other one. Oh, Vexen and Data Yeah, Zemnis. I think it's just, right. I think it's the silhouette, okay. though. 
Oh, the good news is I don't have to do okay. Jafar as a as one, so I'm gonna revert because I can go back into it. That's good. Okay. Da -la 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 whoop indeed. Uh, treasure room. Okay, so now we can do. Let's go. Here, get high in Vala form. Okay, so here. Good old. TPS I am going form. to do. I'm going to. Let's see, Val from Turgai, Survivor Treasure Room. Uh, oh, I know what I can do. Real quick. This will be a quick one. I can get Valor as well. So you guys will see what we're talking about now. So I'll get one level from here. And then I'll go back. Each time you do it, it's at least one level. Oh. Denno, you want to lock on to the... Oh, actually, I'm at five now. Never mind, I'm at five here. Oh, never mind. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> never mind. Okay, so <laughs> here's what we're going to do. Uh, Not right now, actually. I'm going to interrogate Lock, Shock, and Barrel. Uh... Which is over here. Oh yeah, Prison Keeper was uh, Tifa, right? Yep. Yeah. Easy, clap. Easy claps. Yep. So, that's good. And um, Oogie Boogie is vanilla. Maybe we'll find all the FF folk. Yep. Maybe. I think it was Yuffie? All right. I think one reflect will do justice. We'll have her hit herself. <laughs> explosion. And explosion. Oh, wow. That's big damage. Oh, we wooed up for sure now. Oh. What was that hint, though? Uh, what do we got? We got oh, Dark Thorn became Barbosa, and Drive Forms has a magnet. Okay. Oh, yeah, we already got that. So, I gotta defeat Oogie, and then I can um, aggressively interrogate some children. Oh, that's oh, rude. Sephiroth is, uh, <laughs> Sephiroth is holding a Reflect Pop. <laughs> He is. Um, luckily we already have a flare, so we don't need to worry about Yeah. That We're good right here. Thankfully, another quality of life oh, no. thing we have here. Oh, okay. the thunder. There we go. <laughs> another quality of life thing. We actually don't have to do the full fight. Once he's knocked down, uh, he stays down for the rest of the fight. Yes. Also, grateful for that. I have to try dodging this now. Ouch. Oh, dodges. Come on, okay. You know what? I'm just going to uh, be smart about this. Quick run past you have there? cure for a reason, sir. Use your cure. All right. Don't be a, don't be a coward. Magic. Don't be a coward. Are we lucky? Are we lucky? Are we lucky? We're yeah! Lucky. Oh. <laughs> I uh, manipulated the RNG for that. In fact, every fight you see me win, it's because I manipulated the RNG. Yeah. Exactly. I oh, forgot man. to manipulate the RNG there. I'm gonna skip past you. One HP in a dream. Here, uh, where's oh. Don? Oh, there we go. There you go. Yeah, that was a little spooky because one, <laughs> one of the enemy bags fell out, so there was a white knight. <laughs> yeah. But we uh, we got Donald back up and we final formed him to death. All right, so we'll inter yeah, we'll interrogate these kids. We should. Uh, and then we'll go to OC because I can do Valor and um, Grim Reaper too. In fact, I think I might actually speaking have five. Yeah. We're just speaking to the kids nicely. Yeah, uh, like, it's okay. I don't have to ruin Christmas for everybody. Yeah, look, it's fine. We're gonna be we're gonna do some very child appropriate interrogation. Uh, dance calls. There you are. See, we're just putting them in the room. Where are they? Where are the presents? What do, we, what do we got now? One, two. I think that's all three. of them. We have and now we're going to play golf with them. I'm not going to lie, I miss this sometimes. <laughs> uh, I miss this. This is another one, completion mark. Two, three, four. four. Okay, perfect. Um, Okay, let's go get the fifth one. Let's just. Yeah, yep. let's go get it. Uh, so that is an oh, we're going to go here because I can do two things at once here. We're yeah, up. so once we get to the last objective on Valor 5, we will have access to final fights through the computer in the GOA. You'll see what we mean by that. I should be able to just dodge roll into it. Good. Good, good, good. Is this one a quality nice life too? Like where you can hit the pirates while they're still in like the moonlight? Yes, you can. Ah, uh, yes. That that's a boss enemy slash one hour specific. Gotcha. Um, 
Yeah, I think it's because they're being randomized. The game mm -hmm. like gets confused and doesn't give them that uh, shadow property. So it's pretty helpful in the minute fight because we could just blizzard or sunder them through the shadows and not have to worry about that. Where do you... Flip fire? Magic. Okay. Fire. Oh, there we go. Fire. Oh, my drive gauge is at a nine now. Love to see it. Alright. Did we get hints at all any of the final fights except for uh final zim? Uh, uh everything is still no, you have to fight up your way up. Here. You have to fight your way up the tower. Purple. Oh, we mean like uh AX1, AX2 yeah. and Final Sim. Yeah. Oh. Again, unfortunately Final Sim is this unchanged. <laughs> It's fine. You know what? I got Reflect and I got my boy with me for Final Zimness, so we're good. I wish I had a uh, limit. Gonna have to, still gonna have to sit through that dome, though. That's true. Alright. Uh, so after this... Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. I don't have to do that. Let's go. Let's he's gonna level up the battle. Yeah, that's another thing, uh, which is helpful for Valor, because usually when you're trying to level Valor here and you're in a shadows, it's pretty easy to just get clipped by them, but uh, as you can see, we can just hit them. So I'm going to be... Or they could just hit you. I'm going to be safe here, revert, and go back into it. <laughs> yeah. They're still very aggressive. Granted, we, we do only have 18 defense, but we're, we're yeah. still living. We're still living. There we go. Come on, you're right there, Sora. Come on. Hey guys, anyone? Any power hey, slips? You gotta <laughs> wait for Will's signal, man. You can't proceed. Come on now. This will okay. I think the next wave will get us Valor Five. If they. There we hey. go. Hey. So we should have access to final fights now. Yeah, we have access to final fights. So I'm gonna see if I can find limits somewhere. Uh, so we'll, where, would it, where would it be? Uh, that's a great question. Oh, you know what? It's BC. Maybe? I'm thinking OC. Yeah, it's either BC or OC. Wait, wait, no, no, yeah, uh, it, 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 yeah. Uh, so, uh, the our three point value reports can only be in first visit, so we can actually knock off OC. So OC has to be a five and a seven at this point because we did Hydra, right? Mm -hmm, we did Hydra, so we're in second visits. Oh, it's so yeah. fast! I almost forgot I did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we already pushed the wardrobe too, right? We pushed a wardrobe. Yep. We, I did not look who it was, but whatever it is, I'm assuming final can take care of it. You feel it. The moon's power. I mean, it can... Eeyore. Which one? Oh, oh, oh okay, good. Thank right, you. It's, we're good. It's normal Eeyore. And step to the side. Okay. Whatever, jerk. The insane. Uh, hello? You want to get down here? It'll make its way down Come on. eventually. <laughs> yeah, some of these boss arenas can be a little sketchy, depending. Like, we, this is one of the worst arenas for Terra. Oh, Lord. You get Terra in this arena, just restart another seed. Just do another seed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, thankfully, the enemies are just... Uh, the, the minor enemies are just set to vanilla here, because sometimes it could be some... First combination. Okay. Like the heel, the heel stomp guys that can oh, no. the full health. Oh nice. Get Got him on the ledge. Oh, How you yeah. do that? Oh. RNG minute. RNG yeah, minute. come on. Okay, well, I got really bad RNG there. Oh. Uh, he can really go everywhere in this. <laughs> yeah. <area. laughs> I'm getting very bad luck. Come on. There we go. Alright, easy clap, easy okay. clap right here. There we go. I appreciate this, uh, the less frequent beeping on low health. No! <laughs> I wonder, does this kill if you hit him? Nope, okay. Um, no! Oh my god, he is moving everywhere. No! Oh, oh he got you from down there. Did not, to that thing. did not know you could do that. Okay. So, uh, here. We'll do that again. Okay. So, I have a better idea here. You guys want to see my better idea? Feel it. The moon's Wait, let's see this. Let's I have a way this. better idea. I want to let you cook so bad. Are we, we going to be <laughs> crying out loud? I think we're going into Neverland. That it, it might it might not be the <laughs> I know which 
Yeah, we're gonna do that. Oh. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay, we removed that one. <laughs> <laughs> and Peter yeah, Pan. So we're gonna be taking. Yeah. Oh no. Go ahead. So, uh, good thing about Peter Pan is we can uh, infinite loop some of these bosses uh, by just doing a string of hits. Every time Sora hits, uh, Pan will viciously stab his opponent, and uh, they will never be able to break out. Unless you use, like, a finisher or something. But, yeah, Pan's a very good summon. Oh, yeah. Especially in boss enemy rando, because uh, the, the bosses that you would want him for, you'll run into more frequently. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Oh, man. Like... <sighs> Well, the good oh, news is all yeah. my magnets from here on out are, are not mad, mad, not magnets, magic will get me um a set point. Ouch! Oh, my fingers hurt. My hand hurts. Okay. I tore some muscle in my hand, so turning the camera is gonna suck for me. Yeah. So uh, I'm thinking that limit form is here. I think so too. Especially since um, we have a good amount of reports on the tracker, we know that the world that never was has to have two reports, and there's there's only thirteen. So I think it's here yeah. too. I'm calling wisdom. I oh, I'm and uh, after wisdom. beating after beating Cyx, we got the hint that threshold there was Cyx. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the hints good tend hints, to work like hints. that. They were good hints. hints Great hints. All right. They don't want us to be prepared. I always yell at that chest because I can't see it in time. All right, Trinity break. Uh, it's a little late for that. Okay, now every single magic I get from now on will give me a set. Oh my goodness, look at that. One off on all of them. Very easy here. Oh, he's got the he's got his uh, other drip on. Oh yeah, yeah. used to always stay with the drip. They call him a beast because he just dresses so nice. Oh, and there's my there limit. Is limit form. All right. We're, Best form. we're good here. So I'm going to level up limit a little bit and then we can do some. Well, what can we do here? We can go get some more points. We can uh, look at the who the ice cream and picture is. Oh, yeah. That's right. We could tackle Sephiroth, too. We could. Mm, we're, yeah. Who is Sephiroth sitting at? He was, oh, wait a minute. He's, uh, he's uh, past feet. You're right. You know what? Let's do it for content. Where are you at, Pest? <laughs> Let's do Sefi for content. Why not? First try, I'm not first try. I'm not ready for this weapon again. <laughs> I don't know. We're talking about I the weapon. I'm still shocked that Wompy was Show looking at me through a shield. Yeah. All right. So, cool thing we can do here. <laughs> we can just dodge roll back. All right. <laughs> Oh, 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 Gotta love the text to speech. You know exactly what's happening. I think we're moving on to the second phase here. What? Right. There we go. A little more scary for the first phase. Are you going to give into the dark animal? Uh, I might. Who knows? Like, I'm it might welcome. be good to join Sephiroth. Oh, <laughs> it might be good to join Sephiroth. Yeah. Yeah. Try pushing the last... Oh, no, he's good. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, I didn't do it in time. Nice. That was a sketchy one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He set everything up. Watch this. Some good RNG minutes. Alright. Ooh. Got a Ragnarok here and then the he wag. should be dead. And that's how you beat up on Sefi. We Easy have clap. Easy clap. Uh, if she's still T posing, but that's okay. But spoiler alert, she T poses at the end of disc one. <laughs> <laughs> it's Alright, are we gonna get this reflect? Come on, maybe. Yes, we are. We, gonna, we got Reflega. There we go. Oh yeah. We're getting the Liddy in this bitty now. All right. <laughs> that was a lot of points. We blew the world. We got the three-piece set and uh, also just the seven points from the Reflect. Yeah. Okay. So next, uh, let's see what... I got some time left here. So let's see what else we could get in um, Halloween Town here. This is Halloween too, oh, yeah, correct? Yeah, because we already did. Yeah. Because yeah. we already, we already uh, captured the... Right. 
we, we talked to him. We didn't capture him. We just, you know, <laughs> talked to him. Right. right Look, right, right, right. how appropriate you know. talking to, okay? It happens. Let's not ruin Christmas for everyone. And I've Magnera. So they should give me these presents. Oh, oh my God! Cool. You guys, cool. I hate those things. You see, <laughs> like two frames later, you see what would happen. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna manipulate the RNG real quick, and hopefully, I'll get all gold presents here. So presents can come one of uh, many different sizes. I'm going to push some buttons here. All right, let's see if I get all gold presents now. You've been doing some good RNG manipulation. Okay, so it looks there this looks promising. Gold. Wow! Look at that. Thick notes. Thick notes. This is such Even great RNG, RNG right? minute. Yeah. <laughs> Can you uh, send me that button comment? <laughs> <laughs> what amazing. Ah, uh, oh, that's good though. We have. What do we got? We have Sandaga. Uh, Who is I this? am Luxer? No! Oh, Luxert. and it's Yami Yugi. Okay, Yami Yugi. okay good Yugi. news. Yami it is not Yugi. Data. <laughs> Come on, dice. What is he summoning? Dark Magician as a... Oh my god. Yeah, we got some Dark Magicians. Uh, we're gonna get some We got a lot of Dark round. Magicians. What is going on? Are these Pokemon it's cards? Or you there go. What's going I on? Love the, I, love, I, I love the Pokemon card packs. <laughs> <laughs> he is tricking us. This is Kingdom Hearts the way it's Queen Nix intended, I think. <laughs> this is like my top five favorite mods, just under the Comic Sans, which you've been looking at this whole time. Yeah. Your party members just don't move? Yeah, what did you do to them? That's a Luxord thing. Oh, okay. They, yeah, the party members <laughs> I think it's here. You want to you wanna avoid actually you using party member you limits. It's time to I forget the exact specifics, but uh, I'm pretty sure you can soft lock if you use like a Donald in it. Uh, so I'm going to try to DM skip. No! Zora! For the love of God, this card. What is he summoning? Oh, the Dark Magician, he man. Summon the Shadow Realm. What did I do wrong there? Okay. Uh, it's okay. Dark Chaos Attack, man. Yeah, it's fine. Dark Chaos Attack. Watch, we're going to do this. We got what? One and a half minutes to this? We good. We gonna do this. Let him do that thing. One eye. We're good here. Eye clops Yugi. All right, we're gonna. <laughs> Just gonna dice away. All right. There's the. Oh. Oh. He got me. He got me. I'm gonna do it one more time. It's good. We good. We're good. Goofy yeah, and Dono got trapped by Swords of the Revealing Light. <laughs> right. Just a heads up, we are, we are 57 50 okay. boldless. Okay. We're good. Just a little thing about Final Fights, uh, a rule for one hour challenge. Uh, you cannot enter the Final Fights after you've reached one hour locus. So, which again, is that little timer at the top left of uh, Denimold's base camp there. So once that hits one hour, we are banned from going into Final Fights. That battle's still far from over, by the way. <laughs> that Pot of Greed? Yep, I'd agree. <laughs> Uh, I think I can I think I can DM skip it. <laughs> I think I got it. This battle is still far from over. Watch this. Watching, we're watching. I summon Or well, maybe. Oh it's the co it's it's the combo plus. It's time to do oh. Light. Okay. All right, gonna go for a DM skip here with uh, probably three R's. Nice. Oh, that was a lot of damage on that sentence again. Ooh. Oh, but we just ran out of drive gauge. We got this. Ride Geki. What is Ride Geki? Wasn't that the lightning thing? Pot of Greed. Uh, if we flip it, it'll blow us up. Uh, Ride Geki, I believe, clears all monsters on the field, I think. With one final attack. Right. Oh, no. Final attack. Oh, this camera view was nice. 
<laughs> and GG's. That's where, that's and we got Flare Force. That's where Flare Force was. So I'm going to go ahead and do final fights now. Normally I'd be locked out, but for this, we we're going to do it. Yeah, it's fine. We're going to do Flare Force. So that was where my wisdom was, by the way. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, hello? Okay. There we go. Ooh, nice <laughs> uh, let's do this. And we'll take one for the road. Oh. Yeah, we, we, we made it. Go. There we go, we made it. <laughs> I we manipulated it. RNG, we're good. Yeah, we went back let's in time, go. 10 seconds. Uh, another quality of life for the one hour challenge, we actually don't have to do the part where you have to blow up the two engines. It brings us straight into the engine core, which is very nice for one hour challenge. Yes. Cool. Oh, purple. I. So we actually don't know who armored one and two is. So <laughs> this is going to be a surprise. Oh, we're good. Oh, loud. Okay, easy. Okay, we're good. Yeah, 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 yep, yep, yep. And uh, oh, easy clap, easy should, clap. We should get all of our drive back because we ended in a form and we'll be all set for yep. X two and Final Sem. It's actually fitting that Final Sem is normal. Yeah. Who, who are we it's thinking? Who are we thinking, Tara? Oh, Scar. Scar. The, anger, <laughs> the anger has grown for far too long. I don't know about you, but I do not like this. I hate Scar. <laughs> and fun fact, you know, Scar uh, reads your inputs. I always thought fighting Scar in like base Sora form instead of lion form would be better. But ever since ever like fighting him in base Sora, no, Worse. his anger! The best thing you could... Oh, he's gonna go up into the sky, run down oh, for like no. a second. He's gonna I can't see him. <laughs> yeah, you're not... You're he's not gonna I can't see him. Oh, go! No. He's gonna mix you up. I can't see him. <laughs> I can't see him. You are not safe, my son. <laughs> I thought... I forgot I was not... <laughs> oh, no, he's going again. Oh, my God. No. Here come the mix-up. Where are you coming? Where are you coming from? I, I just don't oh, think okay. liver of the card sounds. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Should be all safe. There we go. Here. Yep. Noise. Okay. And now we're uh, we're into final Zemnus. His which anger. Is final Zemnus. His anger has grown so much he was able to fly. Anger yep. and hate. Oh my and god. Oh it's Lord. supposed to be Winnie and the Pooh. I forgot to take that off. Yeah. So the background is uh. It's animal. It's me. Yes. <laughs> you got. You're getting final Zen, but you're getting my mixtape. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, he's cooking. So if y'all ever want to play vanilla final Zim and you know want to think about Danimal, go ahead and ask him for his mod. <laughs> okay, uh, that's gonna be a bit tricky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're getting there. <laughs> there we go. Rico is the bro with the hails and potions. I can't remember. Can Rico die? Oh, he's out of bounds. Oh, uh, you jerk. He can die in boss enemy. No, I mean oh, in boss okay. enemy specifically. I think he is. I don't remember. Okay, well. We're almost at we're almost at dome though. We're close. Come on. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you gonna spare a heart? That's the real question. Are you gonna spare a heart? Maybe. They're out of bounds, unfortunately, that last time. Oh, uh, Oh, we okay. still got him. We still got him. Okay. And time for the dome. All right. So, uh, yeah, time will be coming up in like minute, minute 20. Yeah, so while this is going on, uh, so these settings were made by Zedicus, who I believe he got the idea from, I think it was... Was it Mario RPG or Paper Mario? 
Uh, Zed, Zed, yeah, Zed makes really good um, settings here. So thank you, Zed. He also rolled the seed for me. And yeah, and uh, yeah, this mod was done the work, cumulative work of a lot of people. I mean, Sonic made the original Garden of Assemblage mod for um, PS2, and then Numb ported it over to PC once that came out. And it's been done by, and then from there, I, DA did the tracker, Tom, um, been, and um, Zach the Robot has been doing the generator. So yeah, it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of work that went into this. So I just want to thank the entire community for making this a good thing. I really like the one hour settings a lot. Uh, it's really good because, especially for me, I don't have a lot of free time anymore, so having a setting I can finish in just one hour is great. I'm gonna swag. Oh, I can't swag and it out. Never mind. Uh, and time. DGs. Yeah. That is time. DGs. Thank you. Uh, that's 641 plus, I don't know, a bunch of other points. I don't know. Usually we add up our points at the end. Uh, ouch. I only have one good hand, so. Oh, we got file select. <laughs> yeah, we did. GG, animal. Thank you. So, would you? Eighteen defense this whole run. Thank you. You only had six death. That's it. Yeah, no. That's good. Dental plus really twenty well. plus twenty plus twenty. So seven seventy one plus whatever it is, Mulan is. So, I, how much is? Let me see. How much is? We got we got forty we got forty points from Melody because you did drone skip. Oh, that's right. So I passed eight hundred. That's the most I've gotten. Okay. Oh, nice. high record for Danimal on GDQ. Let's go. Wow. EG. Thank you, thank so you. Danimal. Thank you, um, thank you, thank you so much for uh, Jaylon and Sai for commentating for me. I really appreciate it. Um, if you guys haven't already, please check out the KH2 Randomizer Discord. Uh, we have links for everything in there. We also have an encyclopedia uh, um, knowledge base. Uh, his name is Alios. <laughs> no, no, stay Dealt there. to him. <laughs> All right, uh, that's it. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, GDQ. Yeah, before yeah, before, before we go to a break, uh, where can everyone find you? Uh, you can find me in St. Louis, rolling on dubs, blowing up in clubs, blowing up like Cocoa Puffs. You can also find me on Twitch, uh, the Animal for Life. And what about uh, oh, everyone else? You can go ciphers. Uh, yeah, you can find me uh, on all social media platforms. Just silence like, exactly how it's spelled. I don't know how I got it, but every platform, every social media platform, silence with exactly how it's spelled. Yeah, I'm just uh, uh, on Twitch, Jaylon. Just how it's spelled. I do uh, Cage 2 and uh, Sonic Frontier sometimes. We are, we're trying to push world record a little more, but we do. We do that. <laughs> Hold on, I'm stretching my legs. My legs are... I've been sitting cold the whole time. <laughs> no, it was a flex. I thought he was flexing on us for a second. Just, just a world record attempt. No, I am... I am flexing. <laughs> I have <world> record. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, but, uh, one last thing before we go to a break. I just want to mention this run, if you enjoy this, the, the exact same thing will be at UBAF. Uh, and that's going to be running from February 16th through the 19th. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it's going to be uh, PvP. It's going to be two-player. Yep, yeah. yep. Me yeah. versus Salinza here. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, boy. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> and it was probably going to blow me out the, out the race. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Build me up just to tear me down. Real funny, Sai. Real funny. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh... You guys in chat can do exclamation UB, UBAF to see the schedule and some other information about the event. Uh, we're going to be going to a quick break. We're going to be back in a few minutes with the last run of today. Uh, but, you know, just get up, uh, drink some water, stretch, do all of that good stuff, and just come back right here. We have one more run tonight. And, yeah, we're going to be back in a few minutes. All right. Thank you. All right. Have a nice night. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my RPG show, I guess. Uh, we have the last game here uh, run by Protokami, but before we get into that, I do want to just... I want to plug this one more time, just for fun. Uh, exclamation, UBAF in chat, unapologetically, Black and Fast will be live 
uh, from February 16th through February 19th. It's going to be four days of uh, of speedruns and black joy. Uh, use that command. Find out about the schedule. Find out a little bit more information about the event. It's going to be a great time. Protocol is on it, and uh, he's also right here running a game right now. If you want, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, uh, I am Protokami. I'm the guy running Brave Pins and Musashi. <laughs> um, this is probably one of my um, favorite RPGs. This is actually the only RPG that I've ever ran. Um, but it's definitely in like the top five of the list of games that I speedrun. Um, current world record for this is an hour and 52 minutes, a time we never thought was remotely possible. Um, they just, the guy that came on, like he literally came out of nowhere and just blew it out of the water. So we're all kind of like um, at a point where, you know, this is something to, something to, like a good goal to go for. Um, and we're constantly learning stuff more and more about this run um, with like each passing moment. And it's looking like the sub 150 is uh, definitely possible. Um, fun run. Um, if it's something that you guys are interested in, um, I would definitely look into it. Um, if you're looking for something new to run or just to try out and have fun with, um, that alone, Bright Fence and Musashi, the game itself is a very, um, creative and funny story. Um, a lot of, a lot of, a uh, lot of food puns, very heavy on the food puns. Um, <laughs> um, but with that out of the way, um, Whenever you guys are ready, uh, I'll do a three. Count, I'll do a three count, and when we hit start, that's when the uh, timer starts. So, uh, three, two, one. Let's do it. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I mentioned this earlier, um, and I'll say uh, I'll say it again. Um, one of the biggest. Um, hurdles of learning this game for the very first time is the first uh the first 12 to 15 minutes of the game because they have some of the uh hardest tricks um just because they're all bufferless like frame one specific inputs um type deals uh there are there are some tricks you can kind of get around when starting the run for the first time but if you want to hit those um, those competitive times, it's definitely worth learning. Um, when I got into this run, I didn't do the the typical, you know, get a list. This is what you do. Um, just casually play it first, and, and you know that kind of stuff. I just I literally went in. I was like, what's the hardest trick to do in this game? And I just went straight for the hardest trick. Um, I don't advise that. Please do not do that if you're trying this game. Uh, I just, I have this weird thing about wanting to do stuff like that. And it just kind of worked out for me. <laughs> um, so to explain what I'm doing, um, you saw earlier, I picked up an ability. It's called Gunshot. Um, and we're using it specifically to knock these statues off screen so we can walk up and hit the platforms or the pedestals under the, uh, underneath them. Um, this is going to allow us to get inside the tower and uh, kind of keep the game, keep the ball rolling. You're going to see me get on these platforms and attempt to do um, kind of like a frame one jump. Not going so hot, but it's fine. So the reason why I'm doing this is, as you can see, um, the obstacles that were coming down are despawning or, or have despawned. Oh, there it is. Um, and the reason why this happens is because um, if you leave the ground on the very first frame you touch the ground, um, the game doesn't register that you uh, that you're actually moving, so it won't spawn anything because that's based on uh, uh, your position. But it can't track that position, right? We're gonna do a little bit of farming here. Um, one, because this is how we get the money we need um, for the first half of the run. But also, I just wanna make sure I get a little bit extra just in case something comes up. Um, 
primarily the money we get is used for um, the money we're getting right now is primarily used for uh, our sleep cycle. Okay, and the bats were bats were all right. We could have got more, but this is fine. Definitely not the worst amount we get I've ever gotten. <laughs> All right. Yeah, one thing I like about the pace of, like, one thing I like about this game is the pace of it. It's, like, pretty yeah. quick. And that's one thing that, like, most of the runs today have had. Like, they've just been, like, pretty quick despite being a day entirely full of RPGs. Because there's a lot of RPG runs mm -hmm. that are just kind of, like, slogs sometimes. But, mm -hmm. uh, like, this run is, like, such, like, an entertaining watch, I feel like. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's kind of, like, this is one of the runs where, you know, I kind of look at it from a viewer standpoint. Like, there's enough going on where, you know, we're not necessarily, you're not necessarily watching a heavy grind. You're not watching uh, an extremely lengthy um, platforming section. Like, there's, there's always, almost always something going on. So we talk about we talk about this game, but there's also the other game that doesn't get talked about. Um, <laughs> um, and I don't know if anybody knew that this game had a sequel, um, an indirect sequel, uh, Samurai Legend Musashi. Um, I actually speed run that one as well. Uh, it's twice as long, um, more so because there are no skippable cutscenes. Um, it's a gift and a curse because on the one hand, again, it's longer. But on the other hand, I do get to get up and uh, get a little bit of a stretch and a bathroom break between each chapter. Um, that game, uh, I can see what they tried to do with it. Um, they they did they wanted to make it a hack and slash JRPG, and it just it didn't quite make it. Is it just like a bit slower paced? It's a lot slower. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> All right. So we are at the best part of the game. Oh, shucks. Shut up, you dumb gal. Or else y'all gonna get a lick. <laughs> That's Rutrick, and he's like the best character in the game. <laughs> Normally we blow through um, the voice acting, but I had to hear that line, and I wanted you guys to hear it too. What a line. Yeah. <laughs> and first up, we've got Steam Knight. Um, pretty straightforward fight. Just go for the ankles. Throw them through a wall. Go for the ankles again. Um, and so the second phase, when he turns around, the legs have a little bit more HP, so we have to do a, a few extra swings to uh, get him to go down. Throw him through another wall. And you know, you almost, you almost feel bad for the people living here, because as you watch this fight, you kind of realize it's not, it's not really him destroying everything. It's actually us. Um, we can't really do anything to him right now, so it's just kind of waiting for him to put himself in a position till he can, uh, till he exposes his core again. All right. Throw him one more time. And we kind of give him his uh, ball that he dropped because we're so nice. <laughs> what, a, what a kind protagonist. Yeah, you know, just making sure you got all the stuff you need. 
Um, fun fact for those of y'all that didn't know, um, Musashi's VA is also the same, the same, the same VA of uh, Izzy from Digimon. You also have Spike Spiegel in this, who unfortunately we'll never get to hear. You know, if we get an opportunity to hear him talk, I'll let him say a quick line. Um, I always find it funny because it seems like they got some heavy hitters as far as vo uh, voice acting goes for this game. And then you go to the sequel and it's literally like they had a $500 budget and took the first like six people outside the building. Um, the game is definitely a lot better, uh, in the Japanese version. Um, fun fact, uh, what's his name? I can't remember his name, but the guy who plays as, uh, Frieza for, uh, for the Japanese version of, uh, Dragon Ball plays a character in Samurai Legend. All right, so here is where um, first part of our sleep cycle comes in. We're gonna go in, talk to the uh, to the inn uh, owner. We're gonna take a quick nap, and we're doing this because um, we need it to be nighttime when we do this trick we're about to do. Um, this is because during the day, um, Macho, a guy named Macho, big burly guy, kind of blocks our way to Twin Peak Mountain. Um, this is one of the tricks that I mentioned earlier that is uh, a little on the tougher side to do um, and solely for the, solely because there's no way to buffer it um, you're essentially taking a hop ability and you have to cancel it on the frame that you land I'm going to go around this guy okay we're going to cancel that because uh you know what? You're in the way. Um, grab it again. There we go. And so we have to cancel the hop on the same frame that we land. And what this does is it stores the jump and it allows us to get an extended jump to bypass um, going up Twin Peak, getting the four logs, and doing the mini game to come back down and grab the L brace. And so I had to get it again because I knew that. Uh, so at some point, this ability goes away. Um, give me just a sec. I'm going to kind of focus on this part because this is where we have to uh, cancel it. Okay, we got it. Um, and so the confirmation of you getting the trick is if you hear the bounce and Musashi stays on the ground, that's how you know you stored it. Um, and then you just slide yourself along the wall and you make your way there. <clears throat> and how and so what's happening, that, that is you have to do it on the same frame that you land. Um, so it's like frame one. Um, one of two... One of two things uh, will happen. Well, one of three things, right? One is what you saw. Um, the other thing is you can cancel too early. You'll see them on the ground, but you won't hear the bounce. Or you'll hear the, ba you'll hear the bounce and he'll jump up again. Dang, that seems pretty, like, hard. Um, it's, uh... Yeah. <laughs> At least it's, the, it's uh, near the beginning of the run, so you don't have to, like go one and a half hours in and then like so yes and reset yeah so that's the that's the good part and i feel like the bad part about it as well because you know learning this for the first time think about how many times you have reset to watch the first 12 minutes of the game <laughs> um yeah I, I could i can imagine and, how intimately familiar you are with the beginning of the game Oh my, yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> um, can almost quote it word for word. 
<laughs> All right, so the uh, the item that we got was the L belt, and this is what's going to allow us to uh, climb up special surfaces. Um, we're going to go into the shop real quick, and I'm going to grab a mint. I should have grabbed two, but it's fine. Um, that, what we just grabbed is going to be everything we use from now up until the middle of the run, which will be Frost uh, Palace. We're going to utilize our L belt, but we're going to climb a very unique way like that. Um, also, we're just going to completely jump over Macho. Uh, it used to be that we would stand in front of him and sleep until he left. But um, this trick was discovered and allows us to get into um, Twin Peak Mountain a lot earlier and uh, gives us the opportunity to uh, change up our route up a little bit. So we're going to shrink this guy, get a body up on our level. Uh, you're going to see me uh, smacking a lot of guys on the way uh, throughout the game. And what we're doing is we are focusing building up our Lumina and body levels. Uh, we literally never use fusion for damage or yeah fusion for damage um on any part of this run um every strike adds a uh, experience point to lumina and every kill adds a um experience point to body yeah i'm not sure if you're seeing it but in chat there's a lot of love for you coming on really uh thanks <laughs> i appreciate it <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna keep it going. So uh, I'm gonna get quiet on here because this trick, this is the trick that kills runs. It's also the trick seven that uh, people generally leave. And I don't like that. Yeah, that's fine. Close, 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 close. So this trick is called Steam with Skip. Um, and it's as bad as it looks. <laughs> what makes this trick uh, difficult, in my opinion, uh, the inputs and movement is kind of hard, right? Um, but what really makes it hard is that you can do this trick right and the game can still deny you. Um, because there is a barrier with a timer on it. Um, seven that can uh, keep you from going up. Yeah, I'm not saying it's good that you're messing up, but you're making it look super difficult. So if you got a first try, <laughs> may maybe some people in chat would not think it's this difficult. There we go. Yep.
All right, so uh, unfortunately, we took too long to uh, get the trick. So it's going to change the route up just a bit. Um, generally, what we do is um, we go to perform the next trick that gives us access to, that puts us in the middle of chapter three. And we are able to just walk into the basement. But because it took me so long, um, we're going to have to sleep until seven in the morning. And here's the reason behind this. Um, there's a part in the game where you talk to the priest and it asks, and he asks you to meet him at a specific time at night. Um, this sets you up for a little boss game um, in the church where you have to kind of survive until the morning. Well, anytime before midnight, the game thinks that it's still daytime. So if we can make it there before midnight happens, um, we can kind of do it all in one cycle. <clears throat> and throughout the game, we're only going to save three people, and they're all the uh, mercenaries. Um, the mercenaries uh, give us the... Um, tell us how to get to Frost Palace later on. Um, unfortunately, you have to save them. Uh, because the game does have a uh, a flag for that, right? There's like a check to say like, hey, do you have these three mercenaries? If not, then even if you know the route to get to Frost, uh, Frost Palace, the game is still going to treat you like it's wrong. Oh, man. I might have, no, no, I won't. I'm gonna say I might have just enough time to do one attempt to uh, get in before midnight, but I don't think so. How does the like day night system work? Like how does the time progress? Um, so I don't know how the game progresses uh, in terms of like uh, in game time and uh, real time. But in the bottom right, you'll see it progress every 15 minutes in game time. So it'll be 2300, 2315, 2330, and 2345. But I've never really um, taken a look at the clock itself. Oh, what's that gonna, gonna correct? No. Okay. So this is the third trick, the third really hard trick. Um, it's four um, perfect inputs, four frame one jumps onto the roof of the church. Okay, I released too early. Um, and so the four frame one jumps are obviously hard enough, right? But you have to kind of time uh, when you release your jump as you jump towards the roof. Because um, you have to adjust your height to land perfectly on top of it. There it is. And boom. Ooh, okay. Almost made a mistake there. We're going to sleep here until 7 a.m. Um, and to kind of correct what I was saying, you don't really, you're not really getting on the roof of the church itself. There's actually a barrier around the church roof that keeps you from getting access to it because the only way you're supposed to be able to do it is to piggyback off the priest and you're able to jump up. And so we meet, uh, Bubbles for the first time. And this is the, uh, the boss fight that we have to do, that we're not really gonna do. <laughs> we're just gonna cycle through um, the text and then they're dead. All right.
He's going to come out. He's going to tell us thank you. He's going to give us a rope so we can get down into the well. He's also going to ask us to look for the church bell. Now, because we are smack in the middle of chapter three, we can't leave out the front door. So we have to do another trick called church escape. Pause buffering for, there it is, the first frame of the jump. Move over. We're on the barrier and we jump out. We're gonna go in and take a, take a few naps. Uh, we are gunning for midnight or as close to midnight as we can get. But that's actually pretty spot on, I'll take it. <clears throat> um, the door to the restaurant opens every 30 minutes starting at midnight. So 12, 30, 1, 30, uh, I'm sorry, 12, 12, 30, 1, 1, 30, and so on until I wanna say 2, 30. All right, so um, there is a specific path that we take depending on how early or how late we get into um, the restaurant basement. I'm gonna take the route that I would have taken um, if we got in early. Uh, and we take this route specifically because um, the early route allows us to level up our body um, a lot earlier. That was smart. We're just going to run into that guy. <laughs> okay. So like I said, um, you will see me um, going around and hitting a few things. Um, I try not to go too far out of the way to uh, hit any of the enemies just so we're not wasting a whole lot of time um, but I really you know want to get my Lumina levels as high as possible before we hit uh, Ant Queen which is our chapter 6 boss fight I know I mentioned it somewhere earlier, swing. but this this run is just uh, so like dense. There's so much stuff going on. Yes. Ah, I missed it. Uh, you mean in terms of like routing and what I'm doing, or just like the the areas that I'm in? Both. Like, there's so much stuff like in every area, but then like in each area, you're, you're doing just so much different stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I, I'd never played this game before, but I, after this, I might. <laughs> I would look. It's it is it is definitely something that I would suggest playing on a casual level. Um, definitely enjoyable. Um, you'll absolutely love the uh, the voice acting. Uh, the story's uh, pretty funny. Um. Smack him, smack him. There we go. Um, it's kind of crazy because it has such a lighthearted, um, has such a lighthearted aura, right? And then you get to like the last, I want to say, forty-five minutes to an hour of the game, and it just hits like this dark turn. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to, stepped to on and died and <laughs> I said, I'm that? excited to, the, to see the end. Um, I don't know how, uh, how you are like this. So uh, play this game the best way you know how to, yeah. um, 
how you, however you have access to it. Um, but I will say that this game goes for like eighty dollars minimum uh, on the market right now. Um, or if you have a Japanese PS3, um, it is available on the PlayStation Store for I think like ten or fifteen bucks. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, it's just harder to, t- to find some of these like older like retro games and stuff, mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. like some of the cult classic ones because they're just so expensive. Yeah. So what you guys saw me get was the uh, bowl ability. We're going to use that to progress through the game, and we're going to hold on to it a little bit more because uh, we can actually actually utilize it to get some of the body levels we need. Um, we've got a bowling part here. I don't know if that's going to hit. Oh, man. Okay, we were close. So you definitely want to get a strike uh, when you get the opportunity to do it. Um, uh, Not because it's the fastest thing, but also because you get a massive level bonus um, if you do get them. But part of what makes this hard, part of what makes getting a strike hard is the uh, RNG. Um, If you saw... The, uh, the pins or the vambies were kind of moving. Well, that movement is kind of what determines if you're going to get a strike or not. Um, there's absolutely no way to, uh, you know, kind of fix it to make sure you get a strike every time. You just kind of set it up your way and then, you know, pray to the Masashi gods that you get it. We're going to take a little nap here. Um, I know I've got something pushing against me, uh, impending death or whatever, but, you know, we sleep on those. <laughs> um, if you do uh, end up getting getting crushed here, that is a game over. Um, but in that instance, the game, for whatever reason, will clip you up to the next platform. Um, that's kind of a unique strat to do if you are uh, low on... Uh, Again, man, we get right there. <laughs> if you're low on your tiredness. So that's another thing that you have to keep track of as you progress through the game. Um, so HP naturally goes up as you progress over time. Uh, BP naturally goes down over time. Um, and you refill that by uh, rescuing people or you can eat food. Um, your tired level also increases as you uh, progress. So that's something that you have to keep track of as well. Um, And the best way to do that would be to keep an eye on Musashi's face in the bottom right. Um, When you get tired, you'll start to see kind of like a lid close around his face. And the more tired you get, the further down it'll go. Um, If he's poisoned, if he's uh, low on health, if he's low on BP, you'll see color change. You'll also see him kind of look disgruntled as well. <clears throat> yeah, to be fair, if I need to nap, I also look pretty disgruntled, so... Yeah, I think, yeah, most people do, right? <laughs> yeah, I can't, I, can't, I can't even judge. <laughs> All right. Um, arguably the best song in this dungeon. Very upbeat, makes you want to keep going. I definitely like it. <clears throat> We've got a Bambi up here we're going to give a little smack to. Get that Lumina level. And we're going to try and line up here for another uh, bowling shot to get our BP. Or, um, not our BP, sorry, our uh, body level up. Okay, we got it. That's. That one specifically is such a hard thing for me because it's at a weird angle. You have to make that adjustment on the meter. But I think once you knock out the first Vambi in front, so there's three total, but if you knock out the first Vambi in front, I think it ends up knocking the other ones off the cliff. Ooh, okay, just got it. Just 
just going through a uh, little platforming here. And so what you saw me do was uh, I had the time when I needed to go forward to match when I uh, moved with the um, platforms as they rose. Ooh, okay, yeah. That happened because I uh, I rolled my controller instead of doing a direct input. Um, that's not a jump you would ordinarily do. There's actually a way around. It's just, you know, a lot slower. Um, one thing I will note uh, you saw me jump from that rotating platform onto the wooden plank. Um, if you hadn't noticed yet, when you're moving, um, when you go into a full run and you stop, Masashi kind of does a little bit of a slide. If you hold R1 as you're landing, uh, Musashi will stop in place no matter what. So it's a, uh, it's a good strat to use when you're jumping to a, uh, a very narrow platform and you don't want to slide off. All right, we are in the last part of the dungeon. Come on. Nope. There it is. Looking for... Basically what I was looking for was the first frame of Musashi's jump so I can do a, a, a jump storage. We're going to do it again here. Except I got to be a little bit faster with this one um, just because there are... Uh, there are things that can interrupt that jump. So with that st with that jump storage, um, if you take any damage at all, you lose the storage. Um, and it's just a big pain getting all the way to the end, taking the damage, and having to redo it again. Um, because the, uh, the jump is actually very precise. Um, did we get it? Yeah, we got it. Because um, you're actually jumping off of a micro pixel which is, whoa, that is not the right way. <laughs> um, which is why you saw me move in the specific direction that I did um, to set that jump up. Don't get hit with that. Fun fact, uh, you can get hit with that and it can push you back down to that lower platform, uh, making you start that whole process over again. No, I'm absolutely not speaking from experience. Not at all. <laughs> Surely not, right? Like that wouldn't that, that wouldn't happen to any any runner, right? No, no, not at all, not at all. I I, I trust you uh, for now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that room that I just passed, um, it gets dark uh, because everything on the right side is a platform with spikes, and so. Um, the game wants you to uh, kind of use the ghost ability and figure out the best route down. But if you just kind of zigzag onto the middle platform, uh, it's relatively safe. Alrighty. So to uh, kind of get you guys in on the story, right? Uh, the reason why we're down here is because um, the zombies that you saw, the guy that kind of I ran into and started sucking my life out, um, were released onto the town. And come to find out that the store owner was the one that released it, or the restaurant owner, sorry. Um, apparently this restaurant was built on some ancient dungeon of unspeakable evils, and uh, he had to open it because 
uh, there was treasure. Well, we found the treasure. Turns out to be a quote unquote ugly, disgusting belt, which we get as a reward for, uh, I guess saving him. I, I can't really remember why. Um, but we get this belt. And now we're going to uh, make our way back out. We're going to take another little nap and make our way to our uh, appraiser friend. It is 115. That's going to put us at 915. I think I'm going to play it slate. Look, play it safe. And just nap outside of his room or outside of his uh, building. It's funny because I actually have this exact ability. Um, I can lay quite literally anywhere and go to sleep. My wife hates me for it. If I'm tired enough, I can lay anywhere and fall asleep. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if this is just me, but like airplane seats, I don't know. I sit down, I immediately just pass out. It's it's the same. Like that. that's me, but any kind of transportation, a car, a train. Yeah. Like, I'm just, I'm out. If I'm the passenger, I'm gone. Like, I am a horrible travel partner. Horrible. <laughs> like, first 45 minutes of the, of the, tri of the trip, I'm gone. So, uh, we appraised the, uh, the disgusting belt, which turned out to be the legendary belt, um, allowing us to get a double jump. We are abusing the absolute mess out of double jump, um, allowing us to do an infinite jump. Um, and what we're doing is we um, we do a jump, we pause on the first frame of the double jump, or as close to the first frame of the double jump as possible, and we swap scrolls to uh, continue the jump. The reason why we do a scroll swap is because um, every time you do a scroll change, it puts Musashi back in a neutral position. Um, so anything um that you've done that you're in the middle of doing before the scroll swap gets canceled and now we just got the water uh, water crest wow i couldn't say that almost went uh elmer fudd there so um unfortunately we definitely don't have enough money to uh get the sleep we need so we're gonna take two naps take two three hour naps in the end and then we're just gonna sleep off the rest outside the restaurant we're gonna stop here real quick and appraise the old shirt that we just got which is the eldest this is um probably in my opinion the most the piece of the most important piece of equipment that you can get you can definitely do this run without it wouldn't advise it um but what it does is it shortens the length of time needed to uh, charge Lumina or Fusion, whichever one you're going to do. <clears throat> that is 1900. So just right there, um, you can see how quickly um, the bar field. We're just uh, waiting for 2400 to roll around. I'm seeing some uh, familiar names in chat. What's up, guys? <laughs> We're going to go over here. We're going to damage boost our way up, except not really because I didn't double jump. Try it again. Over here. 
we're going to slide ourselves into uh, the door, allowing us to get in. <clears throat> Um, what you're supposed to do is get the bell back, go talk to the priest, and he gives you the angel statue that's used as a key um, to get in. our plus two that's all i needed so we're a little behind on our body level but that's fine um we're still kind of on track with our uh with lumina levels <clears throat> yeah in a game like this just keeping up with your levels i feel like is a difficult skill to like master uh it, it depends on how you're keeping up with it um for me it's when the levels hit right so i knew i was on on track by the fact that i got the level um right there so either that bambi or the ones after it if i got the plus two there i would have known i good I, I was good like i don't keep track of like how many levels it is um i think we have some runners that do um it just it just comes down to preference i don't think i have the capacity to do it that way so we're coming up on our first birth, uh, first boss fight. I'm gonna go quiet here for a second. Oh, okay. I bet it's gonna be like two hits. Okay, a little more. <laughs> Um, so with the water scroll, you can um, you can alternate your presses. There are two buttons that activate the bubbles: uh, square and uh, triangle. If you alternate your presses, you can actually pump out a few more. He's going to do this, which works out what we want. Nice. All right, last phase. Okay, going to the octopus. Now you can, um, jump to get over these but if you uh, charge up the water scroll and activate it just before you're hit um, the bubble shield takes damage got it nice And that's GG's. Nice. There's a there was a <laughs> I forgot that I wanted you guys to hear it because there's a uh, there's a actually a really good line for this boss fight. Like just before you start it, um, Musashi makes fun of uh, the relic keeper. For getting up and having the uh, the ceiling fall on his head and calls him a geek. Like peak 90s insults. <laughs> I, I love like 90s insults. They're so funny. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> we are going to make our way to go fight our rival.
Oh, oh, oh. So, um, gotta be careful about how you, uh, with your pause buffering, because a lot of, I know there was a, um, back in one of the uh, dungeons you guys saw, I was hitting the pause button like a lot. Um, and that's because it's really easy once you get into the rhythm to um, constantly pause on the same frame. All right, and uh, we just utilized that hop ability to skip over that uh, slug. Um, there's a whole thing involved where you have to, you have to, that's an instance where you have to find and save the correct person um, because they give you the rock, they give you a rock salt and that rock salt is used to shrink the slug. Uh, but with the hop ability, um, if you cancel the hop right after you make contact with the ground, you get a boosted jump. And with a double jump added to that, you gain just enough height to kind of slide um, between the slug and the, uh, and the wall. Let me get our next uh, elemental scroll. I want y'all to hear him. I feel like everybody gets a gets a should get an opportunity to be heard once in this run, at least. It's a treat. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's funny because like the the princess has like this super valley girl straight out of California. Um, um, mentality. Yeah, we, we have fun here on GDQ Optics. Just a little bit, though. <laughs> um, so with Kojiro, it's pretty straightforward. Um, we we want the Firebird because it's the fastest attack he has. Um, so you really have to pay attention to how you're positioning yourself. You kind of want to be in front of him, but not too in front of him. Because if you get too close, he will do um, kind of a slash with his sword, um, and you can't attack him after that. All right. This is uh, not my favorite trick. Uh, it's called Slug Escape. And I don't like it because we have to rely on the princess. So it's not really something that we have control over. It's just if she decides to help us, great. If she doesn't, uh, not great. Oh, wow, really fast. So we're using, we're using the frames of her butt to kind of push us through. <laughs> um, and just depending on how she positions herself when she goes for the jump, um, determines how fast or how slow this can go. Every speedrunner's nightmare. Lots of dialogue. And now we talk to those uh, mercenaries that we rescued earlier. So each mercenary uh, has a secret message that tells them how to uh, get to the thieves hideout, which we haven't even talked about the thieves yet, but we'll talk about them here in a, in a little bit. Um, and the notes say to um, basically move like a specific, like specific pieces in shogi or chess. Um, in this instance, we will be making movements like the like a like a knight piece. Um, so one to the left, up twice, or one to the right, and up twice. And then on the final lap, we um, we move like a uh, a pawn, which is just straight forward. So um, I've been kind of in my head uh, about whether or not I want to do this. And I think it's probably prudent that we do it. Um, we're going to go for a safety strat just to 
to make sure the run goes as smoothly as possible. There is a jump that we do in Frost Palace. Um, and if you mess this jump up, um, you soft lock the game. Um, and if you haven't noticed, there aren't any checkpoints, there aren't any uh, save points or anything like that. Um, you know, kind of comes along with the territory of a 90s game, right? Um, you know, if this were if this were a PB pace, if this was like a world record, potential world record run, I would 100% go for it. But uh, I, I don't I don't want to experience a soft lock. I don't want you guys to experience a soft lock. So we're going to uh, grab this item. And what this item does is uh, it auto appraises. Um, uh, anything we find that can be appraised. Um, and we're going to use this to appraise an item that's needed um, for Frost Palace. Uh, and those are the legendary shoes. <clears throat> and all the legendary shoes do is allow us to walk up uh, slick, sl slick surfaces. Um, and that's part of where the soft lock comes in because we're jumping over a um, kind of like a hole that you can fall in um, and there's just a slope that you have to walk up to um, get out of it but without the shoes you can't walk up it here grab our little hop ability to get over the brambles <clears throat> and we're going to start our way through Meandering Forest. And I actually really like the music here. Like, I absolutely love the music for this, stage, for this part of the stage. I always laugh um, <laughs> because I imagine if this, um, if this were actually orchestrated, there's a guy getting paid um, a stupid amount of money to blow that one note on a horn. I mean, they deserve it. I mean, yeah. obviously, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to hear like, an, like a fully orchestrated version of this soundtrack because it's been really good so far. I, I feel like maybe I, it was it's wishful thinking, but I feel like I heard something a few years back about Square Enix having an orchestrated event. Um, but of course, um, I don't know if that would mean, you know, Musashi would have been on the list, even though it has an amazing uh, soundtrack. Um, but this game was made back when they were known as uh, Squaresoft, not Square Enix. But I don't know if there's any kind of like red tape um, keeping them from doing that. Okay. Oh, I kind of already messed up. Okay. All right, so we got poisoned. There's a, uh, there's a strat you can do. He doesn't want to drop it. He doesn't want to drop it. <laughs> Come on. Okay, he's not going to do it. So we're going to 
We're going to try it over here. I love when the game doesn't cooperate. It's my favorite. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and of course, it's when I'm, you know, doing something that I don't normally do. There we go. All right. We're so back. You know what? I'm doing it backwards. Um, so that right there, what I just, what I was just about to do, that's the jump. That's the, uh, that's the jump that we don't need to be doing right now. Um, so we're gonna go this way. And so even though we get these uh, we get these shoes, I will still um, do the uh, oh, okay. Those guys are fun. Um, those are mimics. They will copy everything you do. Um, I still will do the tricks just so you guys can kind of see um, how they get done. Take this guy. Oh, except not really. Come here. Thank you. <clears throat> Don't forget that guy. Him. Get some money. I wish it was just that easy in real life. Just smack people and get right? money. <laughs> so, um, each one of these rooms has a um, stipulation. Okay, he died. Um, the last room was the penguin room, and I can't remember if you have to use the, uh, the fire scroll, but you have to kill them. Um, and I think the fire scroll is just the fastest way to do it. This room you get the blue eye. Um, by uh, defeating those guys without taking any damage. If he hits in on there. Don't get hit with the ice. Go 
and just take him out. Um, typically, what you would do, you would wh what you would have done was the trick that I attempted right um, in the very beginning, is you would use the ice flower to clip yourself in to get the um, the blue eye first. You just make your way up here. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe not. There we go. Oh, you. <laughs> Gotta love you. Um, I think there's a. Yep, there he is. There's our friend. Go around. Don't get hit with him. <clears throat> This is where we find the el the shoes and the L goggles turn them into the legendary shoes. And so now we'll make our way over here. Um, so you have to do this jump twice. The jump going isn't as bad as the jump going back. Um, oh, except if you do something like that. Um, two reasons is because you get a lot more height off the pole. And the other reason is because um, because we jumped off the pole for whatever reason, um, every time we cancel and do another jump, we're actually gaining height. Um, anytime you jump off of a pole or a wall, um, Musashi gains height when he uh, jumps off. Of it. Like that get kicked in the face. That's okay. myself up this ability so this last room that we go into uh the requirement is that this enemy can only be defeated by a clone ability and that didn't work because i hit him uh when he was supposed to be taking damage so we got to go do it again And I can't remember how much BP this uses, but I think it's uh, enough for me to need to get some more, which is fine. Um, there's actually a spot where we can grab more. All right, and so before we head out, um, I'm going to grab the clone ability one more time. Um, we're going to utilize this ability for the next boss fight. Don't touch me. Okay, bring this in here. Oh, there he is. I'll leave him alone. <clears throat> so, with that being said, um, now I cannot touch um, my circle button. So this is the jump that's a lot more dangerous um, coming back. You get a little bit more height um, jumping off the banister, but you know, there's that there's that risk, like one good mess up and that's it. I think getting teleported right, like that would fix me. What's that? What do you mean? Like getting teleported, like getting like stretched out like that. I, oh, yeah, I would feel <laughs> like a brand new boy. <laughs> Okay, so that's the other trick that you do, um, but we have the shoes, so I didn't have to do it. Um, I just wanted to kind of show, show what that would look like. 
Um, uh, there's varying ways that it can be done. Um, most of the runners that do um, that do that trick, they're closer to the wall on the right side, and it's just one uh, one jump. Mine's is a little bit harder. Um, I just get it more consistently that way. Um, but the, the purpose of that jump is to uh, not hit the stairs, which are an icy slope, right? So if you touch them, you end up sliding back down. You have to go back into um, the area with the pole, jump up and redo it again. This room looks incredible, actually. Oh yeah, with the painting and yeah. the uh, ceiling? Absolutely. All right, we're coming up on the best boss fight music in the game. So we've got the uh, Frost Dragon. Gets this amazing, uh, unique introduction. And we are so awe-inspired that the first thing we're gonna do is pick it up. I'm not gonna lie, I thought he was just gonna like completely fall off. Um, and so we take a nap, or I take a nap here, just to kind of get back as much health as I can, um, because we're going to damage boost this next section. Um, and this is where those gels that we picked up at the beginning of the game come into play. here and uh, this is pretty much uh, kind of a boss manipulation um, he has three cycles he has a lunge an ice throw and a huge beam we do not want the beam so um, what we do is we position ourselves for the lunge we block the ice blocking the ice is what for whatever reason, triggers him to lunge again. Um, and if you don't get it all in one cycle, um, you can just wash, rinse, repeat, right? Just as long as you're there to block two or three of the um, pieces of ice that he throws out, you can make him lunge again. Also, he gets increasingly faster between each uh, after each cycle. Um, so it becomes a little bit harder on this last cycle to uh, hit him. So what we have to do, kind of start it early. It's going to be a point where we kind of jump just to kind of get that extra damage on him. And we missed it, but that's fine. We just block twice, get our fire back, he lunges again, goes down. And that's GG's. I don't know how hard that must have been, but that looks super impressive. It's it's hard in a sense of, um, I'll say this, the only things that really make it hard is learning the positioning of where you need to be. Once you once you know where to stand, um, it's, it's really easy. Um, I'd say maybe the other hard part would be um, putting yourself at the specific angle to block because you have to kind of stand at a diagonal, um, kind of like the in the same direction as the uh, ice is coming at you. Um, and even there are some instances where I thought I was standing in the same dire in the direction that was needed and would still get hit.
Okay. Oh, quick question, um, actually. I'm gonna. Uh, yeah. So I was actually. I know. Sure. I know. Sure about yeah. to ask. Um, I'm gonna cancel a cutscene, and then yes, we can. Okay. Perfect. Okay, we can actually do it here. Sorry, sorry, I had problems with my computer and I was fixing them as fast as I can. <laughs> oh no, you're yeah. good, you're good. Um, <laughs> So, in just a few minutes, we will be back with more of this run. This run's been super great, uh, but I just want to shout out real quick that uh, everyone who was on today was is going to be on unapologetically black and fast. Uh, exclamation UBF in chat. Uh, check out the schedule; it's super cool. Um, but yeah, we'll be back in just a few minutes with the rest of this run. Uh, stick around, just you know, stretch, drink some water. Do all that self-care goodness, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. See you then. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my RPG show, I guess. Uh, we're in the middle of this run. Uh, it's super fun if you guys have been watching it so far. But before we start, I do want to just give one more quick shout out to, to UBAF. Uh, do exclamation UBAF to find out more about uh, the event in the chat. Um, also, the schedule's out. It's super good. I recommend looking at it right now, this instant. Um, yeah, it's going to be from February 16th through the 19th. It's going to be four days of speedruns and Black Joy. So, absolutely recommend checking it out. I, it's the biggest vouch I can possibly give on the GDU channel, but yeah, uh, let's get back into the run. All right, um, we will give a count uh, for three. So three, two, one, and go. <clears throat> so we finished uh, Frost Dragon. We come back in town, and the mayor is telling us. Um, the princess is uh, taxing everybody. So we are, we're supposed to go and figure out uh, why this is happening, but we're not gonna do that. Um, we're gonna sell our big straw. We're gonna go over here and uh, we're gonna buy essentially everything we need uh, for in game. Let's sell all that. And then four pieces of cheese. But you know what? Why not? One more W gel. <clears throat> and so, remember those uh, thieves that we uh, mentioned earlier? We're actually about to meet them. We're just gonna go over here and uh, activate the water crest real quick. Oh, and not walk on water with fire, so let's not try it. Seeing the other bugs in this game, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> And I've seen I've seen some crazy stuff. Um, there is a there is a trick you can do actually, um, where if you take poison damage on the same frame that you fall into water, um, you can actually fall in and walk under. Um, that eliminates that's that specifically works for. Uh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on. Had to, had to, had to let you guys hear that one. That's been. <laughs> um, That's such a mood. But, yeah. <laughs> um, so that uh, glitch that I mentioned earlier, 
can be used to get the goggles um, without getting the um, the water crest, without releasing the water crest. Um, but it involves uh, it actually involves dying, and it involves using a uh, S revive. So you take damage on on the uh, you take poison damage on the same frame that you drown. You die, respawn, um, and end up under the water. And I'm just going to do that, because why not? So in the earlier um, parts of this run, instead of having the clone ability, we would have taken the um, dive kick ability from the higher wolves. Um, it served as a much faster um, way of moving. Um, and it had a low BP cost, so you could just literally zoom around the map with it. Um, but the time save you get from utilizing the clone ability on the third phase of Queen at um, is a lot higher than using that ability. Plus, it just looks cool. And so we just got the uh, the wind scroll, which allows us to turn into a tornado. Um, we don't really use it for a whole lot. Well, that's a lot. There's a few things that we do use it for but I don't feel like it gets utilized as much as it, as the, uh, I don't know, the water and the fire scrolls have been. Is he okay? Um, he fell down from that Yeah, height? yeah, he's, he, he's got a uh, pro tag armor. He's fine. Okay, if I most, fell down from that height, I think all of my bones would shatter. And most pro tags can, you know, fall from a 150 foot drop followed by getting shot in the face with a bencho gun that puts you in a green barrier that slowly drains your life. Normal stuff. I don't even think I'd get past one of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? No. I think at least one of those. I'm, I'm built different. <laughs> um, what you just saw me do was bramble skip. Um, if you jump over the brambles and uh, cancel the jump, the, the second jump on the first frame, you have just enough height to uh, do a second double jump um, and make it over in one go. Um, the trick is a lot harder uh, to do than it looks, um, just because those brambles are actually a lot more elevated than they appear. So the timing on when you do your double jump is uh really tight so we make our way back um you notice the music's change um and that's because we're in a uh different chapter and there are giant ants uh, attacking the area and so this ant in particular wants this guy's lunch i guess he left some pea soup on the counter and he's trying to make his way in to uh, get a little snack, but uh, we're not gonna not gonna have any of that, right? First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the inn, and we're gonna sleep for like is it Sunday? We're gonna sleep for like five days, because that's that's what you do. Uh, I do that anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's normally what you do when you know you're attacked by giant ants. But you know, for some of us, that's that's a normal day, right? <laughs> so we're looking for Thursday morning, and I almost want to sleep a little bit later than that, um, just because. You know what? This is fine. This is fine. Gonna make our way back to the castle. Um, and because we've been kind of skipping through chapters, we have the option to 
ride the gondola, which is what we're going to use to uh, kill the giant ant. Um, normally, you get set on a fetch quest to find the uh, item known as the gondola gizmo. Um, and that's what's used to get the gondola back up. Sleeping for five days, the drink. You know, do you know how refreshed I would be if I could just get five straight days of sleep? Five days straight would fix me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know I said this before, but I would feel like a brand new boy. <laughs> With the way things are, a lot of us would be lucky just to get uh, a solid five minutes, right? But we're going to ignore our Minku friend. Um, you find those throughout the game, and that's how you get your health buffs. Um, each one drops uh, a berry, which gives you uh, 25 additional HP. But I feel like I've done enough safety strats. Um, they're also a very big pain to catch. Um, there are some things that you can do to kind of mitigate that. Um, well, there is one thing you can do, I'll say that. Um, and that's, um, getting the water scroll. And the reason why you do it that way is because, um, in order to catch them, you have to press, uh, square. And square is what you use to swing your sword with. So if you're not right on top of it when you're pressing square, um, you're either going to miss it or you're just going to swing and hit it and it's going to run away. <clears throat> right. Got the wind tunnel here. Um, you can see from the smoke that there is uh, kind of there's wind pushing against us, and that's keeping us from uh, going forward. And the wind scroll kind of helps us um, from getting blown away. Yeah, I didn't think that would work. Get out of here. Um. This trick that I am attempting called slope jump. And it is uh, not fun. Not for me, anyway. Yeah, this looks a little painful. Um, just because there are. That's not going to go. That's not going to go. There are specific inputs that you have to put in. Um, in certain positions that you have to hold. There we go. Ooh. Ooh. Man, I cannot. There we go. There we go. So there are specific frames where you have to cancel your jump. And one frame you can't use is the first frame. You can't use that frame either. <laughs> There we go. Got it. Um, and so how that trick works is if you're fa if you're pushing yourself into the back wall, you kind of slide. Um, and you can use that momentum. Hold on a second. Let's see if we get it.
We did not. Okay, that's fine. Um, you can use that momentum to uh, kind of push your way up against the slope. The alternative, so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to utilize those flowers to um, jump up the slope. But we can't do that because we already have an ability kind of locked in place that we're using for um, this upcoming boss fight. Um, what you saw me attempt to do um, a few seconds ago was uh, utilize the wind and uh, gain some height to kind of jump myself out of bounds and go back below the fan because it's um, it's a little bit faster than going the intended route, which is what we're doing right now. back and we are going to intentionally um, poison ourselves so in this game um, status effects um, also increase your crit rate so uh, your tiredness being poisoned um, low BP and I think low health raise your crit rates by 50%. And we're going to abuse that for this upcoming boss fight because we want to um, put as much damage on her as possible. Um, it's a two part fight for each phase. One is uh, striking her face. Um, and once uh, that part of the body gets enough damage, it'll expose the core uh, for us to strike. And this is why we do such a focus on our body levels and our Lumina levels um, to get them to a specific point uh, by this point of the game. Um, there are three boss fights that don't have a, um, a fixed number of hits. Um, that would be the first phase, like the, the first part of the Queen Ant phase. Uh, ben and Ed. Um, every other boss fight you hit, I believe it's three times with the exceptions of Dark Lumina 2 and Dark Lumina 3. Actually, that's a lie. Kojiro. Kojiro is another fight that's um, that doesn't have a, uh, a threshold. One day, I'm going to get good enough to uh, submit this as a blindfold incentive. <laughs> one day. I think we actually had one runner that did it. Um, Relic. Kudos to that man. I'm so bad at playing games blindfolded. I don't think I could ever do like an incentive for like an event like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. I say that, and then uh, at this last GDQ, someone told me to menu menu to a stage and play it blindfolded, and I, I almost I almost did it. Uh, the one stage. <laughs> what was it? Uh, it's called Giant Comb. Okay. It's. There's this big comb that just like sweeps through the entire stage and uh -huh. the strat is to just kind of not get hit by it, but go really fast. Mm -hmm. And I I got over halfway through, <laughs> which is pretty funny. I mean, at that point, you may as well uh, finish it, right? Like if you can make it halfway through, blindfold it. Yeah, I could I could have done it. I just messed up and I I did. I thought I did way worse. So gotcha. I feel like that would be a feat in itself. Oh yeah, definitely. 
So how does it work? Like, do you do you jump over the comb, or is it just like just avoiding it altogether? Or? Oh yeah. So, uh, is this setup where uh, you go to the a uh, certain point of the in the starting bridge and just kind of mm. hold up and then get bounces eventually, and then just kind of fling yourself into the goal. Gotcha. It is not easy with sight, <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, we're going into our boss fight. Um, we are going to be doing a decent amount of sleeping on this fight. Um, a little more than normal, just because of how fast um, this fight goes now with these new strats. OK, no crit, but that's fine. Put ourselves up here. And so we actually don't take damage from these because we're still technically on the other platform. Um, and the game doesn't register that part of the body as having any kind of frames. At least not when you're laying down. I'm going to sleep here again. going to grab us. Color a little shake. Okay. Back again. And so while we're going through this boss fight, we're really trying to um, Hit these larvae because we want to get as much luminal levels as possible. Oh, come on, come on, come on. At least needed to be midnight. And we're You're having a hard time with these crits. I'm going to drop that. Put it again. And that's Queen Ant. Nice. So you guys saw um, the amount of damage needed to uh, get the core exposed. Um, I don't know if there is a set number for clone or if it's just a one hit KO ability. Um, I would assume so since it, everything that I've seen, it just kind of wipes out whatever is near it. Okay, just got confirmation that yes, it is. Thanks, P-Man. Uh, P-Man is another one of our runners. We've actually got a few of them in tonight. Oh! Yeah, so much love in chat. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Um, so I did better than I thought I would. Um, normally, I would have used um, one of my gels. Um to make room for what John just gave us. Um, by the way, John is voiced by uh, Steve Bloom. Um, so he gave us a calendar, which it's kind of weird because uh, you're supposed to. I don't. I don't. I don't know if somebody, another NPC, tells you, but you're supposed to utilize the calendar to uh, navigate the final stage. Um, and like growing up as a kid, I never knew that. I just kind of walked around till I got it. There's a there's a maze uh, in one of these sections. You have to go through the right door. 
Oh. Oh. One, three, four, five. There we go. So what I'm doing here uh, is called Monster Jump. And if you, um, anybody out there, ever thought to themselves, man, I would love to speedrun a game that would uh, get me arthritis at an early age, this would be that. Because this trick is nuts. <laughs> Just having to do multiple um, double jumps like that. Like, there have been a few nights where I've been practicing and I definitely had to uh, ice my hand. Yeah, chat's just calling you old right now, so... Yeah. Hey, you know what? You're not wrong, okay? But also... Please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is just me, but I would never get called old by Twitch chat. Never ever. <laughs> you know, it's it's not I'm gonna let it slide because it's definitely not the worst thing I've been called. All right. So what you're what you're seeing me do, um, we've got to activate these uh, kind of triggers, um, and just dropping in the water is kind of like the fastest. Well, except for that part. <laughs> uh, dropping in the water is the fastest way to go about doing it. Um, it's kind of a double-edged sword because we have hit a point in the game where uh, time has stopped, um, in-game time has stopped, we'll say that. Um, and what that means is Musashi no longer naturally heals. So um, HP goes back up over time. Um, but since that's not happening, um, you, do not, uh, you do not regain any HP. kind of funny because at the same time um, we were looking into something where since you don't lose HP you could abuse the um, the 50% crit weight crit rate with poison but apparently that doesn't work either um, because you're not I guess because you're not losing health either um, the game doesn't register the uh, crit bonus So this is um, probably one of my gripes about the game. If you've noticed uh, throughout the game, um, you get a new scroll and you kind of get an opportunity to kind of figure it out, play around with it, learn it kind of deal. Uh, you don't get that here with the last scroll. It's just kind of like, hey, you got this cool little scroll that lets you levitate. Um, have fun getting through these death traps. You know, uh, those are electric fences on either side. Um, and the water is electrified as well. So if you fall, you take damage, you take electrical damage, and you take drown damage. I'm just gonna take my time here. There we go. And I use that to get myself back at 150 HP so we can grab this uh, W gel here to replace it. Um, gonna do this. Oh, don't touch me.
All right. Um, so this is probably um, the most dangerous part of the run because we are technically under level. Um, and just about, well, there's one thing in particular that can one shot us. Um, but definitely everything out here kind of hits like a truck. Um, this upcoming boss fight included, especially this boss fight. We're not going to really play around here. Um, you're going to see me do some iframe abuse. Clean, nice and clean. Get with the bombs. There it is. Ben's last words. it that's it <laughs> what what some anticlimactic last words i'm sorry but really <laughs> <laughs> that's been i mean he's a man of few words so you know you can't expect too much <laughs> he also seems like a man of little vocabulary <laughs> yeah there's that too <laughs> But let it be known, as you uh, remember Ben, that he was not an imbecile. He made that very clear. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. So this is the part of the stage that I was telling you about earlier, um, where John gives us that calendar um, and you utilize that calendar to uh, figure out which doors to go through. Um, and so when you go to, when you highlight the calendar, you'll notice at the bottom um, of, the, um, of the description, there are icons, and those icons represent the doors that you're supposed to walk through. Yeah, bullet, imbecile with an S. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna grab this, but... Oh, we got it. Uh, we also did not get it. I think I was supposed to jump there. So, um, that's cool. What you... Um, what happens there is you end up wedging yourself between this um, moving platform and the wall. It's water next, yeah. Um, and as you walk, uh, if you do it right, you don't take any damage and you just end up wedged. And as you walk, you actually go above the platform. Um, you can still take damage um, and get wedged in between. It's just, it hits hard. Uh, I think for 80s, hello? Thank you. Uh, hits hard for 86. All right, I'm going to be quiet here because uh, this is actually uh, a trick that I got to concentrate on. Okay. So that's not, it's less of a trick and more of a nuisance. Um, that what you just saw. Hold on a sec. There we go. Oh, we missed it, but that's fine. What you just saw before um, is something that they require people on a casual level to do. That is a frame-perfect jump. Um, and you have to do the maze all over again if you miss it. 
what you saw me do so what you saw me do there um afterwards was wind jump um into the wall uh and it allowed me to bypass the last bit of the maze um and go straight to the boss's room which is uh ed I'm going to try something out here. I haven't been too cool. So we found out recently that you can attack him between, um, ah, missed it. You can attack him between, um, ball bounces. It's a very, very tight window, but it's doable. Yeah, like right there, I missed that. Um, and then also, um, that's kind of bad if you end up messing up like that because he can put himself in a position where you can't put out the most damage on him because you have to dodge those flames. Um, and I know most of you saw that I didn't take damage when those flames hit. It's because the Luminous Wing has um, iframes. Like, a stupid amount of iframes. I missed it again. Um, so you can just do a charge up, a luminous swing, and uh, just avoid the damage altogether. Not bad. It's famous last words. For context, Capricola is his boss. Um, and I didn't give him the chance to say any of his other lines, but he actually has a, um, a speech impediment, like a bit of a stutter. Um, this is one of the most dangerous areas in the game. Um, especially when you have this guy that doesn't want to play right. Really? Okay. Got him. So we utilize this ability. Oh, got shot. That's okay. We utilize that ability. Um, please stop. Ooh, he is out to play. Uh, <laughs> we utilize that ability, um, the grenade to knock down the doors. You know what? I'm not going to take any chances because um, it's the fastest um, way to do it. These guys, I think, hit for, I think, in the 90s at our current level. Oh, wait, almost forgot. There's something you can do. There we go. Um, if you do a full run and then slide into the bushes in a certain direction, a very specific direction, um, you can go through that barrier, uh, skipping the rest of that maze. If you've noticed, I'm just, I'm flat out killing those walkers uh, because they one shot you. Like no questions asked. You get hit with them, you're dead. Um, I think they hit for exactly 152. Oh, wrong way. One fifty two seems just like a specific troll amount. Just to uh, yeah. make runs hard. <laughs> <laughs> Get hit. Get rid of that guy. Definitely grabbing that. I'll take that. That was some good movement. Don't touch me. 
rid of that guy. Awesome. Okay. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye out for a specific enemy. I need him to do something. And he did it. Okay. Well, I hope he did it. Oh. oh, we missed the push. That's okay. So you can utilize that walker um, to push you into the uh, wall to keep you from having to destroy the other side. I just took a look at your inventory and like, yeah, that much cheese, I think, would fix me. <laughs> that much cheese would fix me, too, but not in a good way. <laughs> yeah, I I mentioned this earlier, but I am lactose intolerant. But like, ooh, cheese is it's it's different, okay? Like, I, I can live without drinking milk, but without eating cheese, impossible. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we missed uh, both clips. It's fine. Um, you see me um, kind of picking up these uh, extra BPs uh, just because I want to. Save what I have. Um, for the uh, last few fights, we grab. We actually grab these cheese. Uh, this cheese specifically for the doors, um, because of the amount of BP that we have to use um, to break them. But the walkers drop BP, and the doors drop BP as well. Um, but you can um, get an opportunity to save a little bit. Okay, got to be careful here because there is a uh, situation. Oh, wow. Okay. So that situation right there, the soldier is generally looking in your direction and he's already walking towards you before you have time to press a button. So if you're not on it, you'll get hit by the um, the soldier for 90, for like 90 something, and then you'll get hit immediately by the walker. And uh, yeah, it's game over. Also, there's DDR in this game. <laughs> Canonical DDR is my favorite. <laughs> Last one. Famous last words.
All right. How are we looking? Oh yeah, we're gonna grab something. So both of those hold a uh, sea drink. It's just a high, uh, high health regenerative item. Um, nice little backups, just in case you kind of went through all the other stuff. Coming up is a boss fight that literally nobody likes. Um, Tower of Death, Todd for short. All my homies hate Todd. Um, sorry for anybody out there named Todd. It's nothing personal. Um, but he is, uh, this thing is 100% RNG. Um, and it's just, it's not, it's not fun. So it has, I think, three or four layers, and each layer has uh, specific, four layers, okay, and has a specific number of eyes. All of them stay closed except one. Um, and it's pretty much an obstacle course, navigating an obstacle course to find the one eye that's open. Um, what makes it more of a pain Oh, hey. What makes it more of a pain is that, uh, oh, wow. All right. Todd's being nice. Um, <laughs> really? What is happening? Bro. What, what is, <laughs> what is this RNG? <laughs> All right. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, all right, there's a hit. That was actually pretty amazing. I don't think I've ever had um, that good of RNG on those eye placements. So we've got three phases, right? And you just saw the first two. This is the third one. Um, those eyes that are shooting the beams hit for 98. Uh, you definitely do not want to get caught um, being around or in front of those. All right, so this is the part of the fight where the window for the eyes staying open uh, get a lot tighter. You definitely want to make your way around Try and find it as fast as possible. There you are. I'm gonna heal here. He's gonna do this thing where he's gonna open up a certain number of eyes and throw out a projectile. Um, if you get hit with this, it inverts your uh, inputs. But that location I was uh, I was in. Uh, if all of the eyes around me were open, um, you can dodge it. Oh, hurry, 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 hurry. Got it. All right, last phase. All right, we can actually just go over here. Actually, it's been real kind of, uh, really nice about the uh, eye placement. Okay. There you are. Oh, that was quite literally the smoothest Tower of Death I've ever had. <laughs> Surely every attempt goes like this, right? Me no. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. No, not even in the slightest. <laughs> yeah, that looked rough and I can imagine how it would be with like worse luck all right I'm gonna let you guys hear the main uh antagonist your Flatsky
All right, and then I'll let you guys hear John's voice as well. <laughs> it must be easy to give orders and complain about everything. What a life you have. You know, I hear him in all of his roles, and all I hear is Spike Spiegel. <laughs> And this is where you find out that um, Rutrik has a German dad. Like, I don't know how the how the accents got mixed up there, but uh, yeah, that's he, what they're he's just with. mixed. It's OK. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the this is where the game uh takes that dark twist right like everything was kind of lighthearted. you're going out you're finding all the scrolls you're getting the you know the, the elements you're on this really uh light-hearted adventure and then steve loom gets shot in the back and you turn out turns out that uh lumina is holding this giant uh wizard which i don't think people in the 90s knew what a wizard was because when i think wizard I don't think this. Like even a dark wizard, right? Like this is the dark wizard that was um, beaten by the previous Musashi. Yeah, I don't know. This doesn't look like a wizard. No, I've played RuneScape before. <laughs> that's not. That's not right. You know what's funny? I was gonna make a RuneScape reference. <laughs> You and me are the same. <laughs> yeah. I was legit going to say, like, I've seen Dark Wizards in RuneScape, and they look nothing like this. <laughs> yeah, but I get to make the joke because I'm the host. I think that's how that works. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. By all means, this is your joke, and I'm not going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> this is my joke, and we're all just living in it. <laughs> All right, so we don't fight this phase. Um, pretty much just a uh, a run and make sure you don't die situation. And it's been so long since I've uh, since I've taken a death here that I can't remember. Um, but one of two things happens: either the game starts you back at the beginning of this uh, deal. Um, like right before you start running again, or it brings you all the way back to chapter one. But I know after this point, any death you take starts you before the uh, the fight of that uh, specific version of Dark Lumina. Princess, Also, throughout this entire game, the princess has a bad habit of just getting yeeted um, literally everywhere. <laughs> okay, so P-Man is telling me um, after TOD, after Tower of Death is the safe point. So anything after Tower of Death, any death after Tower of Death um, brings you back to... So like if I died on the chase part, I would have got uh, put back at the beginning of that chase. If I died on Tower of Death, then I'd be going back to Chapter 1. All right, we have one more, uh, one more chase. This one's a little bit tricky. And what we do here uh, to minimize the amount of lag that happens, um, so, like he does that, and then he like drags along the uh, the tower, um, zooming the camera in a little bit, reduces the lag, and uh, allows you to kind of focus more. These platforms are very. Uh, 
the word sticky. So you got to really watch your placement. And so what I do just to make sure I don't do anything crazy is just I put myself into the wall as I'm uh, approaching the next platform. So yeah, uh, in this run, we do not save at all. Um, there are only, what is it? There's only two locations you can save in this game. That's in your uh, personal room and at the end. There are checkpoints, but the checkpoints only work uh, when you die. And the only places where those are useful, um, it's really hard to die, <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay. So, um, smack him in the face four times. Wait for him to do his big attack. Wash, rinse, repeat. Uh, be careful about how fast you're coming back because he does have iframes. And he will uh, snatch you right on up if you're not careful. So that fire attack is the attack that we want because it's the fastest. Yeah. All right. Last hit, and we go into the third phase. Yeah, just, you know, boop the snoop. Um, DL3, Dark Luminous 3, um, he's gonna look like a Frieza transformation, and that's okay. Um, I am gonna kinda be quiet on this, just because there is a specific setup that we can do to end this fight a lot earlier. He has several phases and we're gonna try and dodge all of them. Well, not all of them, but you know. Do it too early. Throw it too early. That's okay. That's all right. That's too close. All right, we can still get the double here. This is game. Call it.
So, um, that's time. Sorry. No, yeah. Um, GG's. Sorry. Um, and I, I, and I was patiently I, waiting to, to, to see when the timer stopped to see, uh, yeah. the, the final time. I was like super, a super invested. I'm not going to play. No, no, no. You're fine. You're absolutely fine. Um, and that's, that's kind of on me because I didn't, uh, I normally let people know ahead of time, like the final hit is the is where the timer stops. And I didn't say that at all because I was fully invested in doing this, <laughs> doing this boss fight. But yeah. That's uh, that is. Ray Fence and Musashi. Yeah, uh, someone in chat saying that your final time was uh, uh, about a 2.11.58. Okay. So my uh, my personal best is a uh, 159. Um, so there's definitely some rust uh, to be had that I need to kind of clean up. But I think we had a target time of what 215. So this is yeah, this is still really good. Still a really good run. Yeah, that, that was great. <laughs> I appreciate it. So we got a nice little cutscene. I like how they're just completely ignoring the giant gaping hole in their throne room. Yeah, no, no nothing happened. Trust. All right, here it comes. The iconic line. Fencer Musashi, how's it going, old man? <laughs> <laughs> That's hype. <laughs> but yeah, um, if you haven't played this game, uh, for anybody out there who's seeing this for the first time, play it. It's an amazing game. Um, like, I I couldn't recommend it any more than what I'm doing right now. Um, it's definitely a fun speed run to learn. Um, the tricks are a little ridiculous, but if you, uh, you know, if you got the patience for it, it's definitely a fun run. Yeah, this looked super, super fun. Uh, where can everyone in chat find you, though? That's the big question. Oh, yeah. So, um, you can find me, um, on YouTube, on Twitch, uh, Instagram, Twitter, just Protocomi. Um, also, I run a uh, retro repair shop um, for uh, consoles. Um, I primarily I primarily do mods for uh, Game Boy Advances, Game Boy Colors, um, both game both types of uh, Game Boy Advances, by the way. Um, and I do RGB mods for um, uh, Super Nintendo's N64 and Sega Genesis. Um, so yeah, if Got anything that you need fixed, or you have a uh, an old console sitting around, an old uh, Game Boy sitting around that you want to make look nice again? Feel free to hit me up. <laughs> yeah, and just a reminder for everyone in chat: exclamation UBAF. Everyone that was on today is going to be running for UBAF. It's going to be February sixteenth through nineteenth. It's going to be four days of Black Speedrunning Talent and Black Joy. I urge everyone in chat to check it out. I uh I want to second that because I've taken a look at that list and the games that are on that are dope. The people that are running are even better. Like you 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 need to tune in. Um and this isn't just me saying it because I'm in it, but it's it's me saying it because the people that are going to be doing this run are some of the I've 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 been in other shows with them and they are absolutely amazing. Um 
But please, yeah, please tune into UBAF and support these runners. Uh, they would really appreciate it. Yeah, I, as a runner and a host and someone who just likes watching it, to be fair, uh, yeah, everyone would appreciate if if you watch it, if this event is super big because everyone is putting countless amount of hours into their speed games, into all the behind the scenes stuff, uh, just to make it run. Uh, literally everything. And we just want everyone to check it out. It's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. But uh, if that's your shout outs done, then I just want to mention real quick that for, ever, for anyone who's watching live, uh, we're going to be doing reruns. Uh, we're going to be rerunning today. So if you had any runs earlier in the morning that you had missed, uh, you can check them out now. Uh, we're going to be doing these reruns, and then tomorrow uh, there's going to be a Pokemon showcase for Fire Red, Fire Red and Leaf Green's 20th, I think, anniversary. So it's going to be a good time tomorrow. But with that, uh, thanks everyone for watching. Today was super fun. Uh, again, check out UB UBAF and follow all the runners. I, I'm begging, please follow all the runners. Uh, the show would have been nothing without them. But yeah, I'll see all of you guys later. I'll see everyone the next time I'm on. <laughs>